I thought you were going to wake me at 6.30. I also said women like men who are shaped like potatoes. Can you find the pattern here? I had the egg dream again. I, I, I. What do you think an egg dream means? Mm, probably an omen. A good omen? How many good omens involve things that come out of a chicken's butt? There only has to be one. Ah! Hey, that's my bathroom. I didn't know you had your own toothbrush, Ratbert. Why would I need my own toothbrush? Good morning, shower. Good morning, Dilbert. Mm. Don't you do enough engineering at work? Work is just meetings. This is engineering. If this works, someday all showers will be voice activated. Is it that hard to turn the knobs? It's not that it's hard, it's unnecessary. 99, please. 99. 400. <laughs> nice try, but the shower is calibrated to respond to my voice only. Well, you think of everything. I'm cautious. That's why you had training wheels on your bike until you were 17. I was 14. 14. Don't do that. Where'd you get the voice for that thing? Sounds like the computer from that stupid movie. What was it? Something, something, a space odyssey? It wasn't something, something, a space odyssey. It was 2001, a space... Ah! On the plus side, you look very clean. Are we sticking with our ban on useless greetings? Yes. yes. Just checking. Wally. Yes? Push the button. Why? Just because I'm standing near them? Yes. I pushed the button yesterday. Wally, do what Alice says. Now why should I... Oh! oh. I had the egg dream again last night. I've often said there's nothing more interesting than hearing about someone's dream. Eggs. <laughs> You're not the first engineer to have that dream. You too? No, I'm sane. Old Jack Cooper had that dream. Right before he turned into the chicken man. It's impossible to turn into a chicken. A chicken, yes, but chicken man, that can happen. What happened to Jack Cooper? He was an engineer, much like you, until they put him in charge of a project. The frustration started building up. He started having the egg dream. He'd stand up during meetings, all agitated, and he'd wave his arms around like a chicken. What project was he working on? That's the thing. No one could agree on the project name. That's what got him. What happened? I think he's with the circus. Poor Clucker. Thank you for calling. Please dial your password and press pound. You have 937 messages, all of which are marked urgent. First urgent message. This is Ted. I'm just calling to tell you I sent you some email. Well, that's all. <sighs> all messages deleted. Geez, the network is slow today. Too slow. Oh, no. Is it? Yes. Nothing but resumes. People are bailing out. There must be a problem with our new flagship product. Ah, uh, the herbal throat lozenges? I told them at the rollout meeting that anthrax was a bacteria, not an herb. No, you didn't. I was thinking it pretty hard. Oh, some poor marketing executive will have to take the fall for this one. Bob, you made quite a mess with the herbal lozenges product line. Don't believe everything you read in all the major news outlets. Try one. Oh, worth a shot. Bob, you're like a son to me. You don't have a son. That's where I'm headed here. Oh. Now, this isn't easy for either of us. But I have to ask you to take your huge executive severance package and go find a higher paying job at another company. This is barbaric. I have given my soul to this company. I heard a rumor. Ow, 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 oh, ow, ow. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I heard a rumor.
rumor. Our lozenges product wiped out of town. I can't believe it. Those lozenges were made of natural ingredients. We can see the devastation, but how does this make you feel? My throat is moist, and the raspiness is gone. <coughs> Back to you. He's always late. What's he doing that's more important than us? <laughs> Uh-oh. Drawer's almost full. I'll need a new desk. Hey, Alice. Lucky. Oh. So, what's life like in your village, Tong Ni? And tell me everything. I'm not paying for the call. Well, troops, I assume you've all been informed about the problems with our flagship product. Uh, what? Not me. I, I don't know. Well, there's no point in killing a dead horse. You mean there's no point in beating a dead horse? Why would anyone beat a dead horse? Why would anyone kill a dead horse? Maybe it'd kick you. It's dead. And so is every customer who used our flagship product. Now, we have a warehouse filled with lethal lozenges we are currently converting for usage in ancillary markets. Buttons. Coinage. Teddy bear eyes. The point is, we all must embrace change. No, that is very bad. We don't like that. Well, we have to make up for the revenue shortfall, and there are only two ways to do that. Create a new product or make massive, painful budget cuts. Let's make a new product! That is exactly my plan. Oh, I love a plan. Excellent plan. Phase one. We need a name for the product. Uh, that's actually the last step. You've got the transparencies out of order. He doesn't like being corrected. Now he must do something terrible to you. Something to teach us all a lesson. Gilbert. I'd like you to take the lead on this project. <laughs> Step one, the name. The name is the last thing you do. Oh, use some common sense, son. If you don't know something's name, how do you know what to build? Focus groups. Market research. Detailed user specifications. And the name... Do you think the guy who invented the mouse pad started with the name? What's a mouse pad? <laughs> Feminine protection for mice. Ooh. If we don't know what the product is, we'll never agree on its name. We'll have meeting after meeting after meeting. Everyone will want to have input, because input is much easier than doing real work. The only way we'll ever get that many people to agree is... Look! 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 Oh, that's not look, a good look. sign. I am not the chicken man. I'll get you a name. Anyway, it's better than massive, painful budget cuts. Actually, we're doing that, too. It's being announced right now. I got your budget cuts right here. We expect some looting. Maybe you people can just sit here while this happens, but not me. Could it be to name a product? That Jack Cooper just didn't have what it takes. That happens to be the best way to stomp out a fire. Dilbert, help! I've been shot. I've been shot. I've been shot. I have a few problems of my own, you know. Yeah, I heard about the name thing. That's a drag. I'm okay. Everything's okay. Things could be worse. Oh, my God! Why don't you call your product the Vectrolux 9000? Why would I call it that? I'm just trying to help. I know it's hard for you to come up with a name, what with your poor verbal skills. There's nothing wrong with my verbal skills. It only seems that way because my math skills are so high. There's no reason to get all Newswardic about this. He's more pultacious than Newswardic. Whatever that means, I am not. There, there. I know what you're doing. Your Scrabble mind games will not work on me. It's all very modipulous, if you ask me. Why don't you call your product the Gruntmaster 6000? What kind of product do you see when you imagine a Gruntmaster 6000? Well, it's a stripped-down version of the Gruntmaster 9000, of course. 
but it's software upgradable. Can we just play? All right, then. Standard Scrabble rules apply. No kicking, biting, or slapping. No projectiles of any kind. Name calling? Only on your own turn. It. Give me four big ones, you wrinkled toad. Yes! Yes! It? That's not a word. I challenge. You challenge it? Give me the dictionary. What kind of stupid dictionary is this? Webster's? I think it's the one your company makes. That would explain it. Explain it? What's an it? Quixotic. That's triple word score plus 50 for using all seven letters, Q and the X, that's... 152 stinking totally lucky points. Woo! Woo! Yes! In your face, math boy! I am so tired of seeing that dance. Quizzing. That's 188. I'm pretty sure Scrabble only has one Z. That's the kind of thinking that allowed you to lose 400 games in a row. Thank you all for coming. Especially those of you who weren't invited and have no reason to be here. Sure, no problem, whatever. To save time, I've hired a consultant to help us find a name for our next prodigy. He doesn't look like any consultant I've ever seen. Recommendation. Downsize the loud guy. I take it back. Anyone else want a piece of me? As you probably know, all the good product names have been trademarked by companies who are competent. Competent? How are we going to compete with that? There are still plenty of names left in the areas of Greek mythology, bodily secretions, diseases, and everything involving intestines. I like all of those things. Remember, the first rule of brainstorming is to openly mock the opinions of others. I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> Swift. Let's start with you accounting guys. Walter's good at this creative stuff. He just named his baby. How is Walter Jr.? She's fine. Thanks for asking. Yeah, that was a dry hole. Do we have anyone here from marketing? <laughs> Lie to me. Our next upgrade will solve the problem. <laughs> I like the sound of it, but how do you spell... <laughs> Walter has a name for the product. How about... Ford... Hmm, that seems to be taken by the Ford Motor Company. <laughs> Maybe Ford will sell the name. Everyone has a price. You're not allowed to talk anymore. How about something from the disease category? They can't all be that bad. How about Seborrhea? I like the sound of it. Seborrhea. Seborrhea. That's not a disease, it's a condition. It doesn't have to be a disease. Let's stay focused. Diseases, secretions, freaks. How about Sisyphus, the guy who pushed a rock up a hill for eternity? That fits this project. Mmm. I like it. It conveys a sense of playfulness. It's supposed to convey a sense of futility. You have to look at it from the rock's point of view. How about toe fungus? That's a disease. Cellulite, cellula, cellulex. And when you take your sock off and you can still see the indent on your ankle. Is that called anything? That's it. I can't take it anymore. I will not turn into the chicken man. Pick a name. Any name. Here. Acorn. Acorn, okay? That's the name. I know it's taken, but it's just a little mom and pop dry cleaners. We can buy their name. Okay, then. Buy it. We'll present it to my boss next week. <sighs> I feel the curse of the chicken man lifting already. Now all you need is a second name to present at the same time. A really bad name. Why do we need a second name? It's a decoy. Always give your boss two choices. One to reject, one to approve. It creates the illusion of leadership. You always bring me two choices. For you, both choices are always real. Oh. All right, we need a decoy name that's plausible yet frighteningly bad. Hmm. How about Salmonella, in honor of Rooster Boy here? Can I speak with the owner? Why? So that you can make false accusations about us wearing customers' clothing to sporting events? I defy you to prove it. No, I... You don't scare me, you potato-shaped bully. You four-eyed, tall, four-headed, short-pants man. I'm not here to complain. Oh, well, we're not French. 
Well, why do you talk? Because we're rude. It just sounds better with a French accent. So what do you want? My company would like to buy the name Acorn. We'll pay... Never! Acorn was our only son's nickname. He does not for sale as long as his store still stands. I need that name. Leave the premises now, or I will be forced to call the strip mall security guard, who, although old and feeble, will whip you and beat you without mercy until you sing campfire songs in the voice of a little girl. Thanks for all your help. The acorn dry cleaners won't last forever. Just let nature take its course. Nature? How long will that take? Mm, not long. I'm part of nature. Would you like to try a vibrating chair? Get out of my way, you pervert. Will you be sitting down in any of these? No, I'm gonna run for it, and you might want to do the same. Remind me to never negotiate with you. Ah, am I late? Right on time, sir. Oh. In that case, I've got time to make some phone calls. That is so rude. Am I late now? Yes. But it's not because you're an inconsiderate dolt. It's because you're more important than us. All right. So, what do you have for me? We need your approval for the name. Wait. <laughs> the smell of fresh ficus. It transports me back to my youth. Summers in the Catskill Mountains. Settle in. This could be a long one. <sighs> We'd all go to Turtle Pond to swim and laugh and play games amongst the wild ficus. <laughs> one day, tragedy struck. A turtle made off with my trunks. I stayed in the water as long as I could, but the water was cold. Soon, a crowd formed. They gave me a nickname on the spot, one that still haunts me. Acorn. My awful non-French parents even named their dry cleaning store Acorn. But that's all in the past. What do you have for me? Uh, well, we just need your approval on our next product name. Salmonella. Salmonella? I like it. God. What? what? Oh, nothing, no. What's my other choice? People usually give me two choices. Ah. Seborrhea. Isn't that a disease? It's a condition. I like the first one. By this time next year, I want every person in the country to be driving a Salmonella. It's not necessarily a car. It's not. Then why are we giving it a car name? What else do you have? How about the Grunt Master? The Grunt Master. I don't know. It's missing something. Grunt Master 6000? That's it. Less features than the Grunt Master 9000, but just as fun. <sighs> Good work, Dilbert. Wait. Do I detect the faint odor of chicken? Did you ever come up with a name for your product? It's a long story. Gruntmaster 6000. Really? That doesn't sound like a long story. It is a long story. I made a suggestion. You took it. Not so long. There was a lot more. We had meetings and pre-meetings and a, a dancing acorn. B -b Burn a strip mall and I almost turned into a chicken. And then you used my suggestion. Gruntmaster 6000. Whose turn is it? You know what I must do now, don't you? Oh, no. Please, don't. <laughs> Channel 7. America's favorite media-generated disasters.
I can't believe you watch this stuff. Tonight, we'll show you how one camera crew provoked Madonna to break her foot. Oh. Ow! Oh, I think I broke my foot! Do you ever get tired of watching bad things happen to people? That's crazy talk. I mean, don't you think people have enough problems without the media creating new ones? Sometimes the natural disasters aren't spread evenly across the week. You need filler. Filler? Speaking of which, how was your day? Talk about disasters. The Executive New Product Evaluation Subcommittee has recommended to the Executive New Product Committee to push up the deadline on the Gruntmaster 6000 project because of some scurrilous rumor that one of our competitors, allegedly not even in our field, although that can't be confirmed because we don't know what field we're in, is releasing a similarly themed product that might possibly have some aspect in common with or overlap in some slight way the Gruntmaster 6000. Now the whole thing's got to be ready in three weeks. What makes you qualified to be a reporter? I'm willing to violate anyone's privacy for my personal gain and then claim with a straight face that the public has a right to know. Have you been using me as your main source of industry information? No, not the main source. I also make stuff up. For instance, I've started a rumor that your company is a front for an international organ harvesting cult. Organ harvesting cult? That's ridiculous. Oh, really? So, where exactly did you hear about us, folks? <laughs> what do you know? Fine organ. First off, Dilbo, we want to tell you what a terrific job you've done on the Punt Blaster. The Even Product Industry News says so. They called it a product worthy of a better company. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Nice. Excellent. Great right. With the man. You the man. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, it's actually called the Grunt Master. Whoa, look who's getting all proprietary. Easy guy. No point in getting married to a name at this stage. Come now, one name's as good as another. Stop being so rigid. You're the one who insisted that the name was the most important part of the project. I have no recollection of that. The name is the most important part of the project. I cannot emphasize this strongly enough. Uh -huh. And once we have a name, there's no going back. That's my final word. Alice, are you getting this all on tape? Wow. I have a beautiful speaking voice. Well, like we said, we think you're 90% there. These changes we're thinking of here are purely tweaks. Nothing that's going to change the thrust of what you're trying to do with this in any, any way. I like the way you said any twice. It shows you care. You care. These changes are really up to you. They couldn't matter less. Feel free to ignore any two of them. As long as they're not two of mine. <laughs> 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 what I'm saying. But seriously, Dilb, we need to reach a demographic group that you may have overlooked. Consumers. Right. The people who are going to buy this thing are going to want it not just for whatever the heck it is. It's an exercise machine. For real? How can you possibly market something if you don't even know what it is? Whoa! Put the brakes on the Negativity Express. It's not only possible, it's possible. All you've got to do is give it more attitude. Make it more retro, but not antique. You know, futuristic, but not techno. Sexier. But more gender neutral. You see what we're after here, right? I think we're all on the same page. What page is that? So, we're still on track for a spring rollout, right? We have to debut the Gruntmaster before the competition has a chance to get the jump on us. I don't see anything that could stand in our way. Sanity, reality, the laws of physics. Looks like we're done here. Dilbertio, I think I speak for everybody here when I say we've got complete confidence that you can pull this off. But keep in mind, we're all huge liars. <laughs> oh, my God. This can't be good. Look at that. It's got a capital letter in the middle, German spelling, and it's a... A thousand higher than ours! I've brought it to my attention that our biggest competitor, Nirvanaco... <gasps> the greatest engineering firm of all time. The executives actually listen to what you tell them and respond with neither sarcasm nor total incomprehension. The rumor is... They treat you like a human being! And I would love to be treated like a human being! Just once! Here you go, boy.
We've got a crisis on our hands. If they debut their Gruntmeister 7000 in three weeks, they'll completely dominate the market. Don't they already dominate the market? If you believe the Bible of our industry... Anyway, we're going to move the production schedule ahead again. What? How can we possibly speed up the schedule anymore? I've given that a lot of thought. Have you? No. But nevertheless, I realize it would be impossible for you people to work any harder than you already are. This is going to be bad. Or any longer than you already are. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So we're going to work tighter. What? Huh? Tighter? What the heck does that mean? Security. Strict, tight security. Nirvanaco seems to know our every move and then beat us to the punch. If this phantom insider knows what's going on in Nirvanaco, he's sure to be snooping around here. Now, our security consultant, Mr. Dogbert, has outlined a series of strict new protocols to ensure nothing leaks out to the media. All right, people, listen up. Nursery school is over. I don't know what you've been doing up until now, but from now on, things around here are going to be done by the book. There's going to be full frontal and backal strip searches. All communication will be done in the form of codes, which will be changed on a daily basis. Is there a banjo player in Farmer Johansson's silo? A pigeon has no use for keys. He opens doors with his song. All company documents will be printed on edible paper for immediate memorization and consumption. This is going to be great. What are you talking about? It's going to be like living under martial law in some kind of post-apocalyptic nightmare. Exactly. Do you know how desperate women get under martial law in some kind of post-apocalyptic nightmare? I guess I haven't studied it as extensively as you. You got that right. It was the topic of my graduate thesis. Empty your pockets, please. All right, move along. Nothing to see here. Where do you think you're going? To get the phone. Oh, no. I'm not falling for that one again. Okay, fine. I'm going. Flaming Commander to Central Control. I have an intruder situation in Area 4, G, 119er slash DXP, YK, 25, LM, Rainbow, Bravo, Nylon, Delta, Tango, Fox. I had this one trying to escape. What? Since when is leaving your cubicle to use the bathroom escaping? Since 2.30 this afternoon. Good work, Leonard. Why are we here? What have we done wrong? I'll tell you what you've done wrong. Someone in this room is a traitor. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Someone in this room leaked information to this magazine regarding our new security measures. Now, before you go accusing each other, let me accuse you. Alice! You're out of your mind. I was going to say, let me say why it couldn't be Alice. You see, I've been watching you nonstop on the security monitors. But we all have those cameras in our cubes. Yes, but I've only been watching hers. Whew, that's a relief. Can I get back to filing my harassment suit? Soon. Now, Wally, this current state of siege is the only chance you will ever, ever have of scoring. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. No question there. No other way. So it would not be in your best interest to sabotage such a rare and favorable situation, would it? Hey, no, it wouldn't. That leaves Dilbert and Loud Howard. I think we'd all agree it's impossible for Howard to do anything in secret. Why do you say things that you know will hurt me? Which, I'm sorry to say, leaves only one possible suspect. One who had the means, the motive, and the opportunity. Well, the, uh, it's the means. Uh, anyway, it's Dilbert. But profanity won't help you now, son. This is so hard for me to say. Actually, it's not. You're fired. Clean out your desk and leave. But I... Yeah. But... Uh, duh, duh, uh. I can't believe this is happening. You're making a terrible mistake. I'm, I'm a model employee. But not a working model. Ooh. 
I wish I were the kind of person who didn't stand for this sort of treatment. Everybody down, he's becoming disgruntled! I can't believe it. This cubicle has been my sanctuary. Now I'm just a refugee. A cubicleless nomad, doomed to roam the earth in search of a new oasis in the harsh corporate wasteland. Well, you know, as long as you remember, nothing is worth committing suicide over. I wasn't planning on committing suicide. Are you sure? Yes. Think about it, Dilbert. An eternity of peace. No! I have Jack Kevorkian's home number. I said no! Yeah, suit yourself. Dibs on his chair. <laughs> I don't wear boxers. A 9 and 11. Could a giant squid really eat a major metropolitan area? Find out how to protect your family. Why is the news always the same as the miniseries that was just on? What are the odds of that? There's some things you're not meant to know. I have to get a job. I've been moping around the house for... 12 hours and 27 minutes. I'm not bothering you, am I? Being around all the time? Oh, uh, it's an adjustment, in the same sense as, for example, being buried alive. What I'd really like to get is a job at Nirvana Company. I'll take care of it. Plan to report to work on Monday. You can get me a job at Nirvana? How? That's another one of those things you're not meant to know. Maybe I don't want to know. We were all... Very impressed with your resume, Dilbert. Did I send a resume? Mm, I believe your assistant, a Mr. Dogbert, was kind enough to forward it. We usually insist on an interview before offering a job, but how many double Nobel Prize winners does one see? Ah. You may have heard we have a different way of doing things around here that you'll have to get used to, but I think you'll enjoy the level of freedom we allow our employees. Thank you. Here's one of our recreation rooms. As you can see, at Nirvana Company, employee happiness comes first, just like in the space colonies of the future. Ah, oh, thank you. I was wondering, would it be at all possible for me to get on the Gruntmeister 7000 project? <laughs> <laughs> Dilbert, if there were such a project, believe me, I'd not only put you on it, but you'd be the head designer with a staff of assistants and a budget that would choke a wide-necked animal. What do you mean, if there were such a project? You must be talking about that article in Product Industry News. Complete fiction. I don't know how they get away with publishing that rubbish, and I certainly can't imagine anyone taking it seriously. Now, would you like to see your new offices? Offices? I'll leave you to acclimate to your new surroundings. If you need anything, the robots are programmed to respond to your thoughts. I have a door. I sure do miss him. Have you talked to him since he left? Oh. I'm gonna need a marrow sample. Poke away, my good man. Take as much as you want. Drain me. Yow! Oh, Wally, are you all right? All right? I hope this never ends. This is just impossible. How am I going to get any work done if there's no tension? I need a new pen. I'd like the forms to requisition a pen, please. Forms for a pen? Ultimately, yes, but we both know it's not going to be that easy. Come on in. Pens are in aisle five. Take what you need. Notation tape.
Bye bye. No line. What are you doing? Waiting for you to finish. Well, I might be a while. You could use one of the other machines. They're working? Of course they are. What kind of madhouse is this? Hey, good hi. to see you. Good to see nice you. Nice day, isn't it? Working, on, huh? working? We've heard a lot about you. I'll bet you're inventing something pretty special. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a barbecue. A an underwater barbecue. So when you're scuba diving? Wow, you are good. I just want to see if it can be done. I'm sure the marketing department will try to kill it. Marketing department? I'm not sure we've got one. Who decides what products to make? Who tells you your ideas are idiotic wastes of time that aren't commercial? Doesn't anyone step on your dreams? Are you feeling okay? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. I just didn't know how a company can exist without a marketing department. Hey, what's wrong, guys? The new guy has an idea to start a marketing department. What? No, no, not at all. I was just saying I'd never heard of a company without a... Hello, Dilbert. I'm the vice president in charge of immediately implementing ideas that may adversely affect the company. Now, this idea of yours for a marketing department sounds a bit risky, but here at Nirvana Company, we pride ourselves on our willingness to explore new directions. Until now, it's worked out great. I only hope this isn't the one time I'm calamitously wrong. Well, good day. Uh-oh. Here's that marketing department you've been so enthusiastic about, Dilbert. I wouldn't say I was enthusiastic. Their first recommendation is we gear up full speed ahead to market the underwater barbecue. What? Now, first of all, congratulations. We love this. Just a couple of thoughts. One, does it have to be underwater? And two... Does it have to be a barbecue? Isn't that the whole point? Is it? I think we need to lose the underwater part. And the barbecue part. But it goes. 86 it. But then how do you barbecue underwater? <laughs> Sorry, we couldn't hear you. Your comments were drowned out by a loud shriek from next door. Next, we're afraid that when it comes out of the box, it'll make a squeaking sound. You mean from the styrofoam packing material? It's a loser noise. That sound tested extremely low. Are you... Trying this marketing thing anywhere else in the company? Or just here? All over. It's spreading like a virus. I gotta go. Nirvana Company, the world's greatest company, filed for bankruptcy today. Inexplicable venture. Underwater cooking... Headquarters destroyed in blaze. Nirvana Company stock fell 180 points to negative 20 and an eighth. The company holds a single engineer responsible. Well, congratulations. For what? Destroying a 90-year-old company? You're now well-known in your industry. Fame is more important than competence. Are you saying I'm more employable as a famous screw-up than I was as a competent nobody? That's how it works. I don't see how. There's some things you're not meant to know. Well, uh, Dilbert, <laughs> I see that your qualifications are impeccable, and even though I myself or someone very much like me fired you for divulging company secrets, I see that you are now a well-known industry figure. Can I have my old cubicle back? I guess so. <laughs> have entered a no merriment zone. Discontinue your job satisfaction now. Uh, home. I'll introduce you around. You'll like Wally. He's almost completely bald. Sure. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Seeing as the main competition has gone belly up, are these security precautions still necessary? You know, you're right. I could never remember the passwords anyway. Attention, employees, attention. As of this moment, all security procedures are suspended. Please return to your normal state of semi-comatose clock watching. Oh, thank God. Finally. No!
Oh well, back to work. I estimate this soap has one more good washing left. Dang. Oh, it's so small, I can't even find it. What's with the bath? Did the shower reject you again? I'm trying to think of a product idea. I read that Einstein did his best thinking in the bath. It's the warm water. That's the same theory behind instant soup. Would you mind not staring at me? Uh, what's the camera for? That's my voice-activated, motion-sensitive, hovering dill camcorder, specially designed to record my brilliant ideas. Oh, I hope that's what that's for. I'm sitting in water. I can't use my laptop computer. Hmm, so that's your story. Yes, it is. As an engineer, obviously you know that a bathtub is the least efficient form of bathing. I'm thinking up ideas. You're sitting in your own filth. Some of it's in the water. It's kind of like rinsing your fruit in the sewer to wash the pesticides off. Okay, bath is over. Ugh. Why don't you invent a product that keeps your skin from wrinkling after a bath? Kind of a depruner. Dogbert, that is the vainest, most superficial idea I've ever heard. Thank you. I don't want to deprune people. I want to make the world a better place to live in. Is this where you thought up your invention that reversed global warming? Yes. The bath water helps me think. And why are you filming yourself? I told you I can't use the laptop in the bath. So you're sticking to that story? Yes, I am. You know you're sitting in your own filth. I'm trying to think of an invention to fix that, too. I think it's called the shower. This fantasy has been a profound disappointment. You <laughs> yuck. All pedestrians eliminated. Game over. Can we do some work now? One more game. I think I can get to the rest home if I blow up the daycare center. Welcome to Pedestrian Outrage. Remember, I'm the only woman who loves you. Registered user Wallace. He's hooked. We're on a deadline here. We need to design the company's new flagship product, and we need it yesterday. Yesterday? Then it's already too late. Which means, yes, one more game. Everything's been invented. No, it hasn't. A time machine. That's just one example. All right, let's go with the time machine. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm in your violence now. <laughs> oh, how's the prototype coming? A rotating cube. I like it. Can we be first to market? That's a screensaver. <laughs> Save the technical mumbo-jumbo. I just want to know if it'll work. It'll work, but everyone already has one. Well, that's no good. What else do you have? We were tossing around the idea of a time machine. Well, you'd better get going on that. I've heard there's a rival engineering department right here in our own organization moving into our turf and developing their own prototype. Just out of curiosity, who's running the other department? Lena. Lena? You mean there really is a Lena? I always thought she was just a myth. She's more than a myth. She's like the Xena of engineers. I heard when she was attending Wellesley as a foreign exchange student, there was an incident where she severed a couple of classmates' heads with a hockey stick. None of the witnesses ever talked about that day. If no one talked, how do we all know the story? I read it on her webpage. Uh-oh. I heard a rumor that she steals the ideas of other engineers, then cuts off their heads so they can't talk. I like Wally's story better. Anyway, no shame in being a runner-up. After all, Albany is beautiful this time of year. Albany? Albany. Whoever designs the next prototype will need more floor space. I'll have to relocate the unproductive engineers to our facility in Albany. Hey, look at this, Alice. Home liposuction kit. You could take one of these babies and... Ooh. We're doomed. 
Lena's team is probably half done with their prototype. We don't even have an idea. Lena is totally overrated. We can beat her. I don't care if most of the engineers have gone over to her side. Lena's team is so big you could get lost in the crowd and never have to lift a finger. They might get the big raises and the party atmosphere, but they'll never know the satisfaction that comes from really hard work. You could have worded that better. Can I help you? I've got to get to work, and you're blocking me. Although it might seem that way on the surface, in reality, it's you that's blocking yourself. You're right. How do you know that? It's what I do. You're a garbage man. Exactly. Well, can you at least move the truck? It is moving. It only seems like it's standing still. By the way, thanks for recycling. I am so very sorry. You must have been in my blind spot. I was right in front of you. Exactly. You look so pale and sickly. That's because I can't breathe. <sighs> I cannot tell you how excited I am for the opportunity to work on a prototype against such a pro like yourself. Me? I am a huge fan of your work. You are? I only hope I can come up with something half as brilliant as you. Because I'm sure as hell not going to Albany. You know, you're slightly more friendly than I imagined. Really? You don't say? I mean, all the gossip about how cutthroat and Machiavellian you are. Well, you know how people exaggerate. And the rumors about Fred, the engineer who mysteriously disappeared after his project went up against yours? Yes. Rumors. All rumors. Unless a witness comes forward. Hmm. What did you bring for lunch? Oh, salad. Ah, oh, she touched me. Hey, great, you're finally getting into it. What'd you come up with? Uh, it's nothing, nothing yet. Still a work in progress. Give me a few minutes to clean it up. Look. There's no time for niceties. We're on a deadline. Just let me see. What the heck? Oh, Lena. Sweet Lena. A female divinity. My passions exceed. Pi r squared times infinity. Have you lost your mind? That is not only the most nauseating thing I've ever read. It's meaningless if r is undefined. Poetic license. Man, she must have blown some smoke up your butt. Did she use a giant fan or just some kind of hose? I think you're jealous. Jealous? I think I speak for all women capable of reproduction when I say no. What's a word that rhymes with gradient? She is sabotaging us. Have you ever been to Albany? Gradient. Gradient. Radiant. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think we were better off when Wally was here. We actually need him. Ugh. Wally. Yes? Wally, it's us. So it is. He doesn't recognize us. Of course he does. Wally, old pal, we need you to come back to the team. I am not of your team. I am of Team Lena. Praise Lena. Snap out of it, you half-wit. Ooh. Pain. Lena said there would be pain for those who leave. Uh, I see she was right, but I only left to go to the bathroom. Lena, I'm coming back! Wally, it's Dilbert and Alice. Don't you remember us? You... you were from the before time. When I was not of Team Lena. Praise Lena. Lena, I return to you. I swear I will never use the men's room again. Boy, he's got it bad. The worst part is, I like him better this way. Hey, look at that. She's holding me up as an example to her team. I told you she respects me. My people, behold the anti-me. <laughs> Victory is not enough. We must destroy our opponent. We will not only build a better prototype, we will build it upon the crushed bones and torn flesh of Dilbert. Bye. 
Robert, how wonderful to see you here. Alice, Lena, we were just passing by. Look, Billy, I was wondering if you weren't doing anything later. Maybe we could get together and talk about things. Oh, uh, uh sure, yeah. Uh, my, my cubicle is... No, 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 not here at the office. I was thinking perhaps your place. Tilbert. Yes? Around seven? Great. See you tonight. I got a date. I got a date. I got a date. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Package for you, Alice. Let's see. Lena's plate is at positive 0.5 longitude, negative 3 latitude. My plate is at positive 0.5 longitude, positive 3 point latitude. Lena's fork is at positive 2.5 longitude, negative 3 latitude. Lena's fork. Decapitate Dilbert, steal idea, two quarts milk, a box of muesli. Hmm. I hate origami. I have a date. Boy, that was weird. I thought you said you had a date. <laughs> Wanna buy a tape? I'm kinda busy right now. Half off. Two for one. Supplies are limited. Goodbye, Dogbert. Lena, long time no see. Dogbert, always a pleasure. Hello, Dilbert. Oh. Lena, did you have any trouble finding the place? No, the global positioning coordinates you gave were perfect. Well, come in. Sit down. Can I, can I get you something to drink? Yes, I'll have a triple brandy Alexander with an Easter Island sunset chaser. A uh, what? How are those kids coming, Gilly? Any minute now, my Swedish... meatball. Crap. Crud. Idiocy. Garbage. Nothing. Where would that imbecile keep his notes? It's so small, I, I, I can't even find it. That's more than I needed to know. Why don't you invent a product that keeps your skin from wrinkling after a bath? Kind of a deep pruner. It could work. It could just work. You want that? To go? Lena! Is that you? Dilbert. Yes. Dilbert, this is Joe, Frank, Ed, and Larry. Hi, how you doing? Hi, Dilbert. Nice Good to see you again, oh, Nice to meet you. Get out while you still can. Get out? Yes, get out. Can't you see? We're severed heads in a jar. Well, maybe it didn't work out with you guys, but that doesn't mean it won't work out with me. She really likes me. Yeah, she, she said, said she likes me, too. She said that to There you are. What took you so long? What took me so long? You built this VCR from broken parts? Of a washing machine. Oh, it's so small, I can't even find it. Hey, where'd you get that? I got it used at a swap meet. I think you should know this transdermal hydroelastic regenerator is well within the realm of possibility. You mean the deep pruner? 
Take a look. Well, what do you know? By increasing the gaseous conduction analyzer and factoring in the shift of the gyroscopic stabilizer? Huh. It's obvious, in retrospect. A bona fide cell recycling machine. Well, I'll be. Actually, you already are. I don't know what to say. I'm not surprised. Can I have this? What am I going to do with it? I'm a garbage man. Yes, a cell recycling machine. Pretty darn spiffy. Team Lena is going down. Must one person's triumph be another's humiliation? Of course. We stand at the dawning of a new age, where man transcends his mortality and becomes Superman. Yeah, and I'm Batgirl. Get on with it. Shh. And so, I present to you the eighth wonder of the world, the Dupruner! Oh. 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 36 hours! 36 hours immersed in water! I can't feel my legs! Now, behold! Deep pruning is the ultimate aphrodisiac. For married couples only, of course. She's making me think of sex at the same time I see you naked. Now I've got Dilbert and sex in the same part of my brain! Ow, ow, ow! Get it out! You made this happen. You made me think of Dilbert and sex at the same time! You've ruined sex for me! Forever! I'm starting to be insulted. Lena must pay! Oh! Our special today is an angry horde of rioters who will trample you and your date. Ooh, I'll have that! <coughs> oh, forgive me, madam, I had no... Honey? Darling, I can explain. Hey, that's some deal. Yeah, I'll take two. Funny how things turn out. I haven't lost yet, buddy boy. I'll cut off your head and send your scrawny girlfriend Alice to Albany. Girlfriend? Me? His? Have you gone mad? She's nuts. 75% off. Last chance before they're pulled from the market, repackaged as a deluxe edition, and then put back on the market. <laughs> I've got images in my brain I'll never get out! I knew I shouldn't have added that option. Ah! Well, better this than Albany. 
I wonder how this shows up on our headcount report. <laughs> Feeling inadequate? Not measuring up to the other guys? Well, you're probably right. So give me $29.95 and I guarantee you'll feel a lot better. It's so small. I can't even find it. Uh, I can't even find it. I meant soap. <laughs> it's so small. I was talking I about soap. It. Wasn't it obvious? I, I was talking about soap. I can't even soap. I can't even find it. I can't even find it. I can't even find it. Gotta start driving with more attitude. Attitude? I've got attitude to spare. Please don't hurt me is not attitude. It's an invitation to get capped. Why don't you use the whatchamacallit? That's only for use in dire emergencies, like when I'm rushing my future wife to the hospital to give birth. So in other words, never. Why are we all forced to go to work at the same time? Who arbitrarily decided that 8 a.m. was a good time for everyone to go to work? There would be no rush hour if there was no rush. You have no understanding of human nature. If people weren't forced to come to work at a certain time, they wouldn't come at all. You have no faith in humanity. People are basically good. No! No! Help! Help me! What should we do? Close the windows. I'll turn on the radio. Just don't change any of my presets. Oh, heaven forbid. All music, all the time. More music and much less talk. We're the all-music station, except for right now, which is a month more than anything. This is a nightmare. And in business news... Ah, finally. Stocks are way up again today, as every idiot with a telephone is dumping his lunch money into the market. That's outrageous. Idiots shouldn't have money. They won't have it long. The only people who make money in the stock market are the ones who manipulate the stock prices behind the scenes. Or the ones who write books about investing. They're the worst. Great. Now traffic is completely stopped. This is insane. You know, this would be a perfect time to field test this thing. Okay, but just once, to see if it works. On my mark. Three, two, one. Nice shooting. Somehow I just don't feel right about that. Just drive. I've got a book to write. Wally, I... Hold it. Oh, hello, Dilbert. Hello, Dilbert. Nothing. Were you just reading a book? Are you bonkers? What makes you think that? My own eyes. Hardly a reliable source. I just saw you. You did not. Then what is this? Oh, that. That is not a book. It's a way of life. Get rich or get out of my way, investing Dogbert style. It's full of investment tips that no one ever thought of before. I've done the first exercise and already I'm a millionaire on paper. What was the exercise? You write down on a piece of paper, I, Wally, am a millionaire. Millionaire has two L's, like your name. Which, oddly enough, you also spelled wrong. Uh, that's my nickname, Wally with one L. Who calls you that? Most people, they just don't realize it. And now you're going to apply your special brand of genius to the stock market? 
The time to strike is nigh. Are you in? Did you say nigh? It's a word. How about if I just watch in stunned silence for the first round? Welcome to Dogbert's more than full price brokers, where your dreams turn into large transaction fees overnight. Okay, let's see. Invest in the company where you work only if you have actual knowledge of what's going on inside the company. Insider trading is illegal. You could go to jail. Well, they all need to review the RFP for the BGA project before the IOC meeting. Well, that has alibi written all over it. Are you in? Okay, I'm in. Excellent. Now, uh, what's the name of the company we work for? This week? Hmm. We were called Pathway Electronics. Then we merged with E-Tech Management. Now I guess we're Pathetech Management. All right. Turn on the financial channel and get ready to score. As I said, weakness in the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc, and the Russian, uh, snot rag are all bad news for poorly managed multinational companies. We're a poorly managed multinational company. As soon as he said that, our stock went down. Join me in ten minutes when I explain why poorly managed multinational companies are a great bargain. We're back up. I'm seeing a pattern here. The stock plummets on bad news, which ironically is the best time to buy, and the stock soars on good news, which is obviously the time to sell. It's go time. Major lawsuits over product liability. Bye. The company announced more layoffs to cut costs. Sell. Alleged accounting irregularities. Buy. Buy. Double or nothing. New product announced that will compete in the vaporware arena. Sell. Woo! Hey! Oh, that was exciting. Well, back to work. Back to work? We're on a hot streak. Yes, and if we keep going, we'll be on a cold streak. Let's leave it at that. Was. You can't get out now. You're in too deep. There's no turning back. It's all in the book. That book is worthless. We're going to be ruined. And now, investment guru, Dog Burke. Shh, quiet. It's him. Hello. The Chinese have a word for crisis. It's made up of two characters, danger and opportunity. Although this has nothing to do with anything, I enjoy mentioning it. What should we do now? Now? Now is definitely the time to buy. I thought you were supposed to buy when the stock is low. Have I ever lied to you? About a thousand times. You don't have to throw it in my face. Sorry. I'll take care of the stock price. Excuse me a minute. You were caught in a jungle voodoo orgy with a cast of Deep Space Nine? No! Well, yes. Samuel, serve the poison. Must I? Yes. Wow, he really earns his commissions. The stock is so cheap now, we can buy a controlling interest in our own company. Let's do it. Wait, I... Uh, what? Are we ready for the responsibility that comes with owning the company? Uh, I'll say no. This is serious. We will inherit a moral obligation to the other stockholders, yes, but more importantly, to society at large. Who died and made you the Dalai Lama? All I'm saying is... Look, Mahatma, we're not trying to change the world here. We're trying to make some quick cash in the market. And considering it's 11.30 and we started at 9, I'd say we're doing pretty good. But we could change things. Change them for the better. I've always felt if I had an opportunity to run things, I would be a kind and benevolent boss. Employees would be free to come and go as they please, to choose hours that fit their lifestyles. In a word, flex time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flex time, schmex time. Great idea. I love it. Can we just execute the buy already? Wally, look at me and tell me we're going to do the right thing. I will tell you we're doing the right thing, but I will not look at you. Wally, you do whatever you want. Me? I'm cashing out. You plan to retire? Retire? From what? I don't do anything now except surf the net. Why should I pay for that? Besides, I really like the coffee here. Fellas, tick, tick, tick. Carpe diem, Delbert. Seize the day. What? Carpe diem. I think that's a fish. Boys. Okay. Okay. Good. You two now own 51% of the company. Yeah, but the stock's not worth anything. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm Dogbert, and welcome to Shams, Scams, and Flim Flams in Review. Today, our roundtable of financial experts include Vlad Corfu, financial planner for the firm of Draymond, Hal, and Corfu. Welcome. My next guest is a pension fund manager for Pogrom Investments, Trailer Barone. 
Our next guest runs her own investment firm, Hey It's Me Investments, Esther Bester. And my final guest is a bear from the circus, formerly from the woods. Do you have a name? They call me Brownie. Okay, let's talk about the market. What market? The stock market. Oh, oh you had me worried there. Thought you meant the white slave market, <laughs> of which I know nothing. Does anybody care that I'm a bear? I'm not thrilled. <sighs> If we could, people, let's talk about the swirling rumors surrounding a supposed takeover of Pathetic Management Incorporated. Has anyone heard that rumor? I heard a rumor that everyone in that company's gay. Or at least bisexual. I heard they kidnap little children and drink their blood from little plastic cups that they make themselves from detergent bottles. Anybody hear anything about the takeover? Why are you looking at me? I'm a bear. He's just looking. I swear to God, I'll come over there and one swipe with my claw and you will not have a face, my friend, okay? I have a poison dart gun. You won't know what hit you. You won't be able to reload it fast enough before I rip you in half. If I go down, I'll take the rest of you with me. Okay, that's it. What about the takeover rumors, people? That's what? I don't need this. Yeah? Do you need a hideous scar across your entire body? Listen, Buster, I'm the owner of Hey, It's Me Investments. You keep messing with me and it's going to be called Hey, It Was You. You hear me? You hear me? Okay. You take that back. I believe we have a consensus. Follow Dogbert's advice. Follow Dogbert's advice. Follow, 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 follow Dogbert's advice. We're off to spend the money. Alice, we have a controlling interest in the company. We're both billionaires. You'll be corrupted like the rest. Money is the root of all evil. It eats you from the inside out until you die a slow and lonely death. I'll give you a billion dollars in stock if you'll shut up. Deal. La 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 la. Whatever you two did, it boosted the stock to record highs. You've made the rich richer and given the shaft to the small investors who bailed out too soon. Very evil. Good work. Thanks. Evil. Oh, by the way, there's a board meeting in half an hour. As the company's major stockholders, it might be a good idea to make an appearance for appearance sake. Will there be food? Food? Do the finest donuts in the building sound like food to you? Ambrosia from the gods? Gilbert, we've arrived. Hey, Gilbert, do I have anything here? That's the only spot you don't have anything. Don't you want to earn these people's respect? We are these people, so we only have to earn our own respect. Do you respect me? No. Do you respect yourself? No. Do you respect me? Are you kidding? Do you respect yourself? Not really. All right. Let's just be quiet. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's get things started. I know we all want to get back to more pressing matters. Now, the first item on the agenda is to welcome our newest board members and, as of this morning, actual majority owners of the company. Dilbert and Wally. I just wanted to say, whoa, nice chip, Harry. Thanks, Roy. Mind if I play through? Go right ahead. I just wanted to say... It's an honor to stand among such an esteemed and august, uh, group, and I hope Wally and I... Hey, what's your handicap? He doesn't know when to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know when to shut up. Uh, you two are going to fit right in here, and I'm referring, of course, only to Wally. Next order of business. Read back the minutes of the last meeting. We gave each other stock options, discussed ways to ignore the needs of others, and Hamilton had a racial joke. Thank you, Bill. Now on to a more pressing matter. Gentlemen, and I say gentlemen, because there ain't no damn way a woman's going to sit on this board while I'm alive. <laughs> What he was going to say was, apparently, despite our best efforts, the company is not losing money fast enough. Excuse me, did you just say the company wasn't losing money fast enough? Jeez, Wally, can't you rein this guy in? He's like a loose cannon. Gilbert, will you stop embarrassing yourself? If you read Dogbert's book, you'd know that a fast-growing company always loses money while it's expanding. We're not a fast-growing company. And we never will be if we don't lose more money. So, uh, suggestions on how we can lose money faster. Uh, what if we just, uh, well, gave it to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wally, you're a card. This guy kills me. Next order of business, we have to select a new CEO. 
As tradition dictates, whosoever can remove this nine iron from the golf bag will be proclaimed chief executive officer. Wow. First guy who tried. Just like the other times. Can I just say one thing? Yes, but put his gag on first. Can I just say one thing? Is it about golf? Not really. Not even peripherally? No. Could you at least hold a golf club while you talk? I guess so. Hand him a wedge, Raul. When I became a major stockholder of this firm, I felt it was my duty to improve employee morale. Anyway, I searched my soul, although I realized science doesn't accept its existence. And I decided the best way to help the employees would be to introduce flex time. All in favor, say... Ah, the resolution passes unanimously. From now on, all employees can make their own schedules. You were a little too quick to agree. I have my reasons. Chapter 8, Screwing It Up. Flex time. You mean we can come and go as we please? That's right. From now on, you're all masters of your own... I hope someone turned off the coffee makers. Oof, this turned out even better than I expected. You compassionate bastard, you've ruined me. Ow! Four. They say no one ever faced death wishing they'd spent more time at the office. I guess I'm the first. Mother of mercy, take me home, St. Peter. Why hast thou forsaken me? Because you were an atheist until you hit the ground. Mental note. Next time, find religion first. Welcome back. We were talking about rumors of the takeover of the company and the sudden and precipitous plunge in share price following Dilbert's flex time announcement. Trailer, I believe you had a few points. Vlad, do you have anything to add? Ah, it's burning. It's burning so bad. And not everyone would agree. Esther, apparently you've spoken to officials at the Security Exchange Commission. What do you see on the horizon? <laughs> no, I don't believe faces grow back, but thanks. And finally, Brownie the Bear is dead. I want to thank Animal Control for their quick action. Now, I have a stockholders meeting to attend. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I am a long-term investor. Mr. Chairman, how can you explain the moves you've made that seem to be deliberate attempts to destroy Pathetech Management Incorporated and send the stock plummeting? I don't have to answer to you. Of course you do. We're the shareholders. Still? You should have sold hours ago. It's all in my book on sale in the lobby. Buy a copy as they kick you out. I've owned a share of this company since my dear, blessed father, oh, rest his soul in the sweet bosom of the Lord, passed it on to me on his deathbed. You only own one share of stock? Don't interrupt me! I would like to know why the company stopped making those lovely biscuits with the pink sugar icing in the middle. Well, I never care for them myself, but they were my dear, sweet father's favorite bedtime treat. Every night he'd pour himself a gigantic tumbler of scotch and eat 20 or 30 of those biscuits until he collapsed on the kitchen floor, screaming for his insulin, and then Mother would put it in a tissue box and bury it in the backyard. Okay, we're just about out of time here. I'm not finished, you filthy Security little Security code grandma your overload. Me, you'll be dragging back a bloody dump. By the way, as of this moment, the stock is worth about six-tenths of a cent. Anybody who wants to get out before being totally bankrupt, I'm offering three-tenths of a cent per share. <laughs> Wally, what should we do? Wally? You boys really screwed up a good thing. Now that my filthy riches are gone, I'm just filthy. Nobody wants that. Nobody. <laughs> Wally, where have you been? I had to transact some business. Wow, that was exciting. That buying frenzy sent the stock back up to a new all-time high. Buying frenzy? I thought it was a selling frenzy. You're one frenzy behind. Hey, we didn't sell. 
We're still the majority shareholders, and we're billionaires again. We're hanging in there, right, Wally, old buddy? I sold everything while the old lady was belly aching. Wally! It was in the book. That's right. It's all in the last chapter. Congratulations. You're broke. Well, I'm glad I didn't sell. Actually, you did. You ought to change the password on your brokerage account. This sort of thing wouldn't happen. Ah! If everyone sold their stock, I wonder who bought it all. Wow. There's no traffic. Yeah, that flex time really works. So now that you own the company, what are you going to do? Well, I guess you haven't heard. What? K-R-O-K. -K. Music that makes you dare. I changed the presets. I can see that. Ah, here we go. And in business news, it's official. Entrepreneur investment guru Dogbert has sold his controlling interest in Dogbert Incorporated for $100 billion. <laughs> Not quite that much. There's no word on what the new company will be named. Hey, look. On my mark? Oh, Ed? You haven't seen the last now, of me, buddy! Reset my I radio. I will hunt you down! I will not drop until I see you! Stop it for what you've done to me! I will nightmare you! You will... Hmm. Let's see. Name? Dogbert? Height? Varies depending on my speed relative to the observer. Weight is a sensation caused by the gravitational warping of space-time. <laughs> Age. Hmm. According to Einstein, time is merely a persistent illusion. Take that. What are you doing? I'm applying for a slot on the space shuttle. I think a lot of these are trick questions. What qualifications do you have to fly on the space shuttle? None, but strangely enough, that doesn't disqualify me. That's it. I think I've done it. That's not the word on the street. No. I've been trying to achieve the perfect ratio of mango-flavored hyperjuice to water by shining a laser through it and measuring its absorption rate. I think I've done it. There's one small nothing for mankind. Have you tried following the directions on the back? You did. I think you better put that away. What's really bothering you? Nothing. Something's bothering you. No, it's not. Come on. No, really. Spit it out. Oh, all right. If you must know. Wow, sometimes I amaze myself. Today we start the most frustrating phase of product development. Testing the prototype. Ah, so you're riddled with insecurities about your performance. No. Maybe you should be. The test engineer assigned to my prototype is a legend. His name is Bob Bastard. Ooh, you better throw in the towel. Look, Dogbert, I've spent a lot of time working on this product. The Gruntmaster 6000 is my baby, even though it bears no resemblance to what I originally conceived. Are you listening to any of this? Uh, you conceived a baby, but it bears no resemblance to you. Rapper. Here, drink this. Not bad. Dilbert, I want you to know I have the utmost confidence in you and your team. You do? I do what? Never mind. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I stopped off at Starbucks. Wow, Bob Bastard. What's with the mask? Yeah, I've got to ask him where he bought it. It's so sad. What mask? I believe you're on fire. Ooh, you got that right. What a show-off. Can't he just walk in the door like everybody else? 
Dilbert Black, no sugar. Wally Cream with sugar. Boss Decaf with equal. Alice. Cafe LA. <coughs> What's the matter? Too strong for ya? <laughs> It's nice to meet you, Mr. Bastard. My father's Mr. Bastard. I'm Bob. No coffee for you, Bob? No. I'm so jacked up, my head's ready to explode. Dilbert, slurping is so rude. But it's hot. I hate slurping. That's what broke up my marriage. If you ever do that in front of me again, I will throw that hot coffee in your face and you can slurp it through your pores. Do you hear me? Do you? Whoa. As if I could slurp through my pores. Well, now that that's all settled, let the testing begin! <laughs> First, the rock and roll test to determine the prototype's ability to withstand differing levels of seismic activity. I tell you, Bob, you're like a celebrity around here. Grotesque and evil, yet famous and surprisingly polite. Do you golf? Excuse me. I'm working. The man is working! Have you heard their last CD? Wild stuff. me, but I just don't see... It's you. Okay. Where's your god now? Sorry, my friends, but it's better to find the problems now than to send a defective product into the market to shatter the lives of innocent people. Well, it's a gray area. <laughs> gray area, mask jerk. He's like a wounded bird. A vulture, but still, that's a bird. You're going into space? Good observation, Potato Boy. I'll send you a postcard. I don't think you can send a postcard from outer space. Oh, it can be done. But you might see a little jump in your next tax bill. What are you planning on doing with my laser? Did you know there are no laws in space? Well, gotta go. Yeah, a little to the left. No, uh, a little to the right. No, a little to the left. My left or your left? What's the difference? My left is your right, and your right is my left. Just put it down. Ah, uh, there's Wally. Hey, Wally, could you give me a... Hey, Bob, how's it going? Wally. He called me Wally. That's your name. There's no call for bitterness. I'm not worried. This prototype is designed to withstand temperatures up to 5,000 degrees. Wow. That's almost enough to boil water. I know you, Alice. You push people away, afraid they might see you as you really are. You scare me, Bob. You scare the bejesus out of me. 
but in a good way. Hold that thought, babe. Let me destroy your dream and I'll get right back to you. I will now subject a prototype to the next phase of environmental testing. Exposure to extreme heat. All right. Yes. 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 Did you see that, Dilbert? Did you see it? Oh, boy, I've got goosebumps. Or some other strange growths. Would anyone like to join me in a toast to failure? To failure! If anyone needs me, I'll be in my cubicle dangling from a power strip. All right, Dilbert. Don't Whatever. be afraid of it, son. Good for you. The astronauts now approaching the module, looking natty and spring-like in their white jumpsuits. Hey, there's Dogbert. Hey, Dogbert. Well, I'm out of change. I'll get you on the way back. Wait a minute. That's my wallet. Wally? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Why are you dressed like that? I'm not dressed like that. You're trying to look like him. Don't be ridiculous. It's just that all my non-Bob Bastard imitation clothes are in the laundry. This is all I have left. What has happened to you? Are you in Bob Bastard's camp now? He has a camp? Cool. Why do I try? I think we make a terrific couple, Alice. You really think so? No, I'm just toying with your emotions. <laughs> Since I caught you in such a good mood, can I borrow another 50 bucks? Another 50? Oh, forget it! If you're gonna lay some kind of trip on me, I'll see you around! No, wait! Okay, here! Make that a hundred bucks. I'm saving up for a new mask. What do you mean you're changing your name? Well, seriously, don't you think it sounds good? Wally Bastard. Have you lost your mind? You're worse than Alice. Bob Bastard is evil. He is set on destroying everything we hold dear. Here's my dress, my purse. Anything else? Yeah, how about your car? And your shoes? Okay. Can you give me a ride home? At the risk of sounding critical, a little jogging wouldn't hurt you. You're right. See you tomorrow. You're suffocating me, Alice. <laughs> How come you gave Bob your car? Stop it. Just stop it, Dilbert. I've had just about enough of you trashing Bob Bastard. He is not a bad man. Well, he is, but that's what makes him so sexy. Uh, I'm sorry, Alice, but he's the embodiment of all that's horrid and loathsome in this world. Just because it's written on a bathroom wall doesn't mean it's true. He wrote it! Hey, babe, how about lending me a five? Sure. Oh, it works every time. Oh, sure. We've been in touch with advanced alien civilizations for years. Yeah, they've opened their laboratories to us. Any technology we want. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Excuse me. Yes? Duckbird, it's me. Me who? Me! Look, this isn't a very good time. I'm learning all the secrets of the universe. Hey, guys, could you keep it down? I'm on long distance. Well, here's one for you. Why do women see the fact that I'm kind, sensitive, and caring as some sort of weakness? Hey, Dogbird, you want to see where Gene Roddenberry is? Maybe later, fellas. It's merely a function of cultural conditioning. That and the fact that you look like the illegitimate child of Bill Gates and the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> oh, that had to oh that's a, a good one. Bit. That was cold. Do you... have a moment? I don't know. Have you heard something? I need to talk to someone, and believe me, no one else is around. Oh, well, in that case, I'll be heading out. It's kind of important. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Anyway, the reason I called you in here is I can't decide which of these lovely portraits to keep on my desk and which to hang over my bed. What do you think? The I'm a free spirit who blows with the wind, Bob Bastard? Or the, I'm a sadistic nightmare who will watch over you as you sleep, Bob Bastard. I sort of like the first one. Really? Well, thanks for coming in, Dilbert. But I... I really need some time to myself to think and meditate.
Is there something I can help you with? How did you end up such a sadistic bastard anyway? Part of it has to do with the name, but... There's more. I wasn't always the bitter and disfigured man you see before you. I was born Robert Childburn out of wedlock. It's Icelandic, but my parents changed it to bastard when I was three. There was a time when my peers considered me a courteous and affable test engineer. Hey, Karen, you, you Xeroxing something? Doofus. Thanks. I was wondering, <clears throat> if you're not busy after work, do you want to go see Escape from the Planet of the Apes? You're asking me out? <laughs> and as if that wasn't painful enough, she told all her friends. I told you not to leave that there. I was devastated, and the world has never been the same. Somehow, shattering people's hopes and dreams felt good, it felt right. And it wasn't without its perks. Hey, Bob. I'm having a Planet of the Apes marathon over at my house. Care to join us? Oh, yeah? Who's gonna be there? Just me and a girlfriend who's very open to experimentation. As you can see, I'm simply the victim of society. I can't escape who I am any more than I can escape my shadow. I hate Slurpee. I hate Slurpee. I'm sorry to take up so much of your valuable time. See you at the test site. Bring your safety goggles. Look, I've worked very hard seeing the Gruntmaster 6000 through to this final phase of testing, and I just want to say how proud I am of myself. Now, if we can just get rid of that junk on the field, maybe we can start the tests. Uh, that's the Gruntmaster 6000. Really? It's so big. Welcome to the final round of testing and the demise of the Gruntmaster 6000. Here you go, Bob. You'll want this for the trip. Tonight's test will be the asteroid crash simulation test. Oh. Just out of curiosity, how often does an asteroid hit an exercise machine? A comet hit my Stairmaster. That's why I don't exercise anymore. $475.20 now. What? Dog bird. An asteroid is hurtling towards Earth. And that would affect me how? It's Bob Bastard's final test. It's aimed at the Gruntmaster. In a few minutes, the prototype will be destroyed, along with any chance of me being happy. There's a lot about you in this story. Help me? In a minute. <laughs> Please, God, help me crack this safe. Okay, let's see. Yeah! Hmm, maybe, uh, here to the left. You won't even feel the laser on your cornea. Now that is embarrassing. Okay, it's sighted. Now, where is that asteroid?
<laughs> we did it! We're home free! When you take the bandages off, don't rip them off, or he'll turn into a charred skeleton. <gasps> Someday, I'll look back at this and laugh. Yes, I'm leasing now. Now, it's safe. Snug as a bug. When you want something done, you have to do it yourself. Operate manual overdrive. I was afraid of that. Let's see. I need to push the prototype about 10 feet to get it out of the target zone. <laughs> Let's rock. Alice, help me push this thing. Are you nuts? Bob would kill... I mean... He wouldn't like that. Dilbert! It wasn't me. Look. Oh! Slurping gives me such great pleasure, and the fact that Alice hates it arouses me. <laughs> Bastard. Now, will you help me push this thing? <laughs> oh, poo. It would be wrong to simply stamp the prototype approved now. Wow! Oh. Huh. Oh. I have got to get me one of these space shuttles. I just had the darn thing washed. Don't worry, guys. I won't say a word about the immortality serum. So, you're welcome. Thanks, Dogbert. You really bailed me out. Oh, it's nothing you wouldn't have done for me if you weren't you and I wasn't me and everything was completely different. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Shut up! Bob? Bob? Yes, Alice? Where's my car? Do you think normal people pack suitcases this way? I'm an engineer, not a normal person. That's a lot of clothes just to visit a sweatshop in Elbonia. It's not a sweatshop. It's our overseas manufacturing facility. Look at the company newsletter. See? They're all smiling. And your assignment is to make them stop? If you must know, my team's being sent there to oversee quality control on the production of my pride and joy, the Gruntmaster 6000. Well, while you're there, maybe you can help them develop a written language. You're living in the past, my furry friend. Capitalism has transformed Elbonia. The economy is burgeoning. Nothing like slave labor to perk up the economy. They're making many advances. For instance, did you realize the leading cause of death in Elbonia is no longer Black Plague? Oh, really? What is? Here we go. It's self-inflicted gunshot wounds? Must be a typo. Excuse me. What are you doing? I'm rattling the cans. People expect it. Can I ask you a question? As long as it's refuse related. Oh, it is. What are the odds that Dilbert can visit a factory in Elbonia and return alive? Oh, I'd say 73 to 1 against. 90 to 1 if he flies on Elbonia Airlines. 300 to 1 if he uses the bathroom in the plane. That's about what I figured. Dilbert's only hope is to remain objective and ignore the plight of the Elbonian people. If he or any member of his team gets involved in their internal affairs or culture, well, I'd rather not think about it. That's a problem. He likes to fix things. Well, in that case, you'll need the help of someone who's incapable of sympathy. Someone so cynical that the suffering of others is nothing but a source of cheap entertainment. All right, I'll go. I have something that might help you. Here. By the way, what's the weather like in Albonia this time of year? Why are you so suddenly interested in Albonia? 
Oh, I have my reasons. Hmm. A license to kill. It's better. We can steal too. Elbonians enjoy skiing all year round. Except when they're sipping hot toddies at the chalet. Cheers! Then it surfs up along one of Elbonia's many pristine beaches. Awesome, dude! You'll find five of the seven great wonders of the world, all within easy access by shuttle bus. And when you're done, the whole family can relax at our world-famous casinos. And don't forget mud wrestling. Hey, no fighting dirty. In Elbonia, we never close. And so, from sunny, snowy, culturally enriched Elbonia, we bid you ta-ta. That's Elbonian for ta-ta. How the heck does this thing work? Where's the needle? There is no needle. No wonder I can't turn it off. Yes, he's not here. Was it for me? No. Are you sure Elbonia is the best place to take my vacation? Have I ever lied to you and later been detected? When I went to Mexico, you told me to drink as much of the water as I could. That's the exception that proves the rule. Uh, that was that is. I'll book your flight to Albonia. Thank you. When you get there, remember to wear lots of jewelry and walk around alone at night. Isn't this exciting? I said, isn't this exciting? I couldn't hear you. I was listening to the audio program. The sound of screaming. I don't know why it takes three of us to inspect one Elbonian factory. We're a team. Besides, I thought you liked getting out of the office. You don't know me as well as you think. This is the first time I've ever flown first class. Kind of spoils you. I feel sorry for those people in coach. I wonder what the movie is. That is our notorious prison of no escape. And that is our world-famous health spa. I don't know why, but I feel a mystical connection to this place. Mmm, mud pie, good! The mud is calling me. I'll see you later. We're here! Where? Welcome to the Hotel Ilbonia. Sorry, you can't park there. Diplomatic immunity, my friend. Now tear up the ticket. Now eat it. Now regurgitate it. Good. Wow. Just because you're a diplomat, you can park anywhere you want? That's nothing. Watch this. Gun. Now dance for your diplomat. Dance. Now river dance. How did you become the diplomat to Albonia? I was the only one who applied for the job. This isn't exactly Monaco. Diplomatic immunity. With all due respect, the natives in my country are a primitive and superstitious people. They believe that every time you take their picture, you take their soul. Gotcha! Smile! Oh, what did I just tell you? Hey, hi! What an odd-looking people. It's us! From work! Remember? If only I spoke your language. Do you know where the pool is? The pool? Swimmy, swimmy? Ignorant wogs. Wow. 
The Grandmaster 6000. That's the first one off the assembly line. My prototype. Oh. And this is where we house the generators that power the factory. As you can see, incentive programs motivate our workers to put forth their best efforts. Why don't they get off the bicycles and walk around to get the pork chop? Shut up! That's crazy talk! Don't listen to her! These working conditions are appalling! Our appalling working conditions are second to none. And over here is where the main housing for the Gruntmaster is forged. Shouldn't there be a guardrail around that? Guardrail? <laughs> what is this, an amusement park? Hey, you stupid lazy lefties! Show's over! Back to work! Lefties? Yes, of course. That's all they're good for. If it wasn't for the right man, these lefties would have nothing. They'd still be sitting in the mud. Right people founded this country. We built this country up from small mud hole to a gigantic mud hole. We made this country what it is. God bless right Albonia! So where do all the right people work? In management. And this is where the grunt master is actually assembled. As you can see, our daycare facilities are second to none. Oh. You can't put babies to work on an assembly line? These are not babies. They're toddlers. You're coming home with me. I didn't know you wanted children, Alice. I didn't, until this moment. How about now? Are those people dead? Technically, yes. But that's no excuse. Get to work, you lazy corpse! I've never seen anything so barbaric. How can the lefties tolerate it? We have an excellent benefits plan. Like what? If you die... You get time off to attend your funeral. That's it. And the salary of five grobniks a month. That's less than a penny. I beg your pardon. It's much less than a penny. Our motto is that work is its own reward. Yeah! Here you go, little fella. Open wide. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to do something about the factory conditions. I'd love to help, but I've got a baby to take care of. All right, I just don't want to, okay? So as I was saying, Your Excellency, we're very proud to have the Gruntmaster built in Albonia, but the working conditions in the factory are abysmal. A what? Abysmal. I've never heard of that word. Unconscionable? No. Heinous? Mm-mm. What? You seem to lean left, my friend. <clears throat> Check, please. The ancient burial lumps are closed. I'm not here for the tour. I'm looting. Diplomatic immunity. Oh, have a nice day. I can't believe no one wanted this job. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and then, naturally, there was a ton of mud. And that's the story of Noah's mud. Tomorrow, Adam and Eve and the Garden of Mud. Wally, I need your help. Old helpful Wally doesn't exist anymore, Dilbert. This is my life now, Dilbert. I am one with the mud. I am the mud. The mud is me. I'm naked and I'm muddy and I'm wally and it's all the same. From mud I came and to mud I have returned. You came from mud? I don't know, whatever. Wally, you can't spend your life in the mud. Surrender to the Albonian mud, Dilbert. There's no right and wrong, just shades of brown. Have you filled out the forms? 
Yes. Uh oh. What? It says here that you are right handed. So? The official Albonian adoption policy does not permit mixed arm preference adoptions. It is not fair to the child. I switch it in softball. Let's hope that's enough. Now, till these out. Hey, don't mind me. We are the Albonian left-handed liberation front and slow pitch softball team. Maybe we should talk. I think that's what we're doing. I mean we should talk about your working conditions. We can talk during the break. When's that? Ah! There it is. How can you work like this? Why don't you demand better working conditions? What can we do? The world is stacked against the left-handed people. The books are right-handed, the staplers are right-handed, the desks, tape, bottles, phones. I'm pretty sure you can use any of those things with either hand. That's what they want you to think. You know, if you're going to change anything, you're going to have to organize. Now you've lost us. You know, form a union. It's called collective bargaining. If your demands aren't met, you... Forget about them? No. You strike. You refuse to work until you get better conditions. We'll do it. We'll follow your leadership and strike. <laughs> and when the righties execute you, we will make small plastic statues in your likeness. Look at them. Look at them slaving away like pack mules. This will make a great shot. Hey, everybody, wave at the camera. <laughs> You know, I'm standing right in front of you. Okay. Here's my final offer. Designated smoke breaks for anyone who catches fire. Take it or leave it. That's an insult. These people are dedicated, committed, serious. They're not going to cave in no matter how much pressure is brought to bear. They will not return to work until their demands are met. Arrest him! Okay, back to work. You will be read your rights, given a fair trial, then executed. On second thought, since we have no rights and we have no courts, let's go to the execution, Bob. Yes, Excellency. They're ready. They aim. Fire! The execution of Gilbert will continue after these messages. Hello. Every day, Albonian babies go completely unshaven simply because they are left-handed. Won't you please stop it? Stop it! Cute, aren't they? For only one grub nick a day. Let me see that. There, now it's gone forever. <laughs> <sighs> That's it. You're on your own. Um, send your grubniks to Shave the Children, P.O. Box 6, Elbonia. Remember, a child ah, is... Ah, shut up! The old ways are the best ways. Okay, Dilbert, this time we're ready for you. No tricks. No one survives the giant mutt ball. I did. Shut up! Move it out of the way. Diplomat coming. License to kill. Diplomatic immunity. That's right. Now give me your clothes. Damn! As the new dictator of Elbonia, I've decided to make a few changes around here. And make no mistake about it, these are changes for change's sake. He's free, and all the workers' demands are hereby met. <laughs> We're free! Free at last! Ah, oh, sweet freedom! Good to see you. Come right in. Right this way. Hey, welcome. Come on in. Good to... Hey, what's going on? Why is everyone leaving? You just got here. 
The factory's automated. They don't need us now. We've been downsized. To how many? One. Um, can somebody show me how to work this thing? And then Lot's wife looked back and zap, she turned into a pile of mud. The man is a genius, a visionary. I have to get a picture. Say cheese. That's a keeper. Thank you for saving my life, even though it wasn't in danger. I just couldn't picture you as the official martyr of Elbonia. I was only trying to do the right thing. A misguided exercise at best. What are you doing? I'm taking the mud. Why? Because I've taken everything else. That's cruel. No, that's diplomacy. Let my friend Henry here explain it to you. Hello, Dilbert. In the world of real politic, you must see that the infrastructure of Elbonia was built on mud. In a global economy, this is the equivalent of economic suicide. Thus, in order to save Elbonia, it must be demudded. Dogbert was doing the only logical thing. Oh, of course. Now I see. You do? Yes. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but for some reason it drives the chicks wild when I talk this way. Oh, great mudman, how do you explain this? Is it a sign from above? More like a sign from below. Freaking little mud boy. Here I am buying trinkets from one of the native merchants. Here I am relaxing by the pool with some of the natives. Here I am flying home, accompanied by a group of vacationing Elbonians. And here I am back at work. By the way, I'm pleased to announce that the production of the Gruntmaster in Elbonia has far exceeded our expectations. We can officially now classify Elbonia no longer a poverty-stricken fourth-world country, but a poverty-stricken three-and-three-quarter world country. It is my fervent hope to someday visit this exotic land. Aye. Hello, I'm Dogbert, and welcome to Los Elbonia, where gambling and prostitution isn't just legal, it's mandatory. And this week only at the Caesar's Elbonia, the song stylings of Henry Kissinger. Viva la Elbonia! Viva la Elbonia! Viva! Viva la Elbonia! Shouldn't you be at work by now in your dehumanizing little cubicle, squatting in quiet desperation? I've got a cold. <laughs> I.e. the wussiest of all illnesses. Come on, get dressed and go to work. You know I like to have the house to myself in the late morning. I hate when people go to work sick. All they do is hack and cough and spread their germs and infect everyone else. <laughs> Just to be safe, it might be a good time to update your will. I, Dilbert, being of sound mind and sound body... I can't sign this. My body isn't sound. Typo. Sound mind and round body. It's just a cold, and I'm this close to finding the cure. Look, I've already isolated the virus. You mean bacteria. That's a common misconception. Colds are caused by viruses. Bacteria are microorganisms that contain no chlorophyll and multiply by simple division, while viruses are parasitic polynucleotides surrounded by a layer of protein which are unable to reproduce without invading a host cell. Well, you got a big old brain on you. This microscopic nuclear-powered intravenous probe seeks out the cold virus and destroys it with a highly focused sonic blast. <laughs> Uh, okay, I don't usually like to do this, but I feel sorry for you on so many levels. Here, this will cure you immediately. Really? What is it? A placebo. A placebo? Now that you told me it's a placebo, it's not going to work. It will if you think it will. 
But I already know it's a placebo. Maybe it isn't. You just said it was. <laughs> That's precisely the power of the placebo. No thanks. I'll try my method. All right, give me the pill. So, according to the market research, the people most likely to buy our Gruntmaster 6000 product are the same group who are most likely to buy UFO abduction insurance. Maybe we could package them. <laughs> Alice, you're sick. Go home. I'm not sick. You're sick. No, I was sick. Now I'm fine. Oh, good for you. <laughs> it's your fault. You gave it to me. Yeah, well, you gave it to me before that. Well, you gave it to me before that. Well, you gave it to me. You know, we've been passing the same cold back and forth for seven years. Well, you started it. It's these cubicles. This wouldn't happen if we all had offices with doors. Or at least if I did. Can I have your sick days? Are you coming down with something? No, but why waste a sick day when you're sick? Because you're sick? Well, I'd rather be sick at the office. They have soup and tea and nobody bugs me. Besides, I'm saving up sick days. I've got nearly, uh, 12,000. One day I'll have enough to call in sick until I retire. I'll trade you one of my sick days for a carton of sticky notes. It'll appear on your desk tomorrow. I'll give you my sick day for a box of binder clips and some tape. Done and done. <laughs> if I had my own office, I would just lock the door during cold season and never come out. What about going to the bathroom? You know what I mean. No, I don't. What's the difference? You'll never have an office in this company. Or any other. Ever. You're an engineer. I can still dream. <laughs> Look at this. It's a minefield of germs. Oh my! <laughs> Alice, drink this. <laughs> Especially you. <clears throat> Forty percent of our workforce has dropped dead from some sort of mysterious illness. The hardier folks have just turned into hideous mutants. We don't know what's causing it. <laughs> but we have some hunches. <laughs> Funny. Be that as it may, the names of these valiant employees who died for some reason that cannot be conclusively linked to workplace hazards have been engraved on the marble wall you see behind us. Their sacrifice is an inspiration to us all, not to mention a cost savings that goes directly to the bottom line. <laughs> Question? Yes, Loud Howard? I... I... <coughs> I've lost my voice. Funny, oh, my God. God. Sorry, son, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> oh, me. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to do this. 
It also gives me great pleasure to introduce the owner of Dogbert's Private Environmental Protection Agency. Him. My research indicates that there are abnormal levels of insect fecal matter present throughout this building. And as the black light reveals, even in this very room. The highest concentrations of insect fecal matter were found to be present on Wally. Gross. I can't see. Get away from Take me. Take a shower. You're disgusting. It's not my fault that flies like me. So the insect fecal matter is making us sick? No, but I thought it was an interesting side note. Unfortunately, this building, like everything that's ever existed in the history of the universe, is dying. We're doing what we can to make its last hours comfortable. Clear! I have two recommendations, either which I can feel more strongly about based purely on the size of my fee. One is to keep the building on life support indefinitely and watch more people mutate and die. What if I just pretend to watch? What's the other choice? To build a brand new, incredibly over-budgeted, ill-conceived headquarters. Excuse me while I weigh those very, uh, weighty choices. Does anyone know what heads means? Excuse me, can I see you? Can't you? Have I become invisible? No. Whew, you had me scared for a minute there. I don't understand. Every day I water this silk tree, but it hasn't grown an inch. It's not a tree that grows silk. It's made out of silk. Probably needs more light. Yeah, try that. Uh, by the way, what with the recent outbreak of disease here, I think you made the right decision to build a new headquarters. That's not why we're moving. Get over yourself. There's a much bigger issue at stake here. There is? Yes, of course. This building is a rectangle. Almost square, but not quite. Do you know what I mean? Rarely. I've always wanted to work in a building shaped like an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle? You think I'm mad, don't you, Dilbert? No. You think I'm stupid? No. Lazy? No. Fat? No! Well, I wish I'd married you instead of the hag in my house. I was thinking, you're going to need somebody to oversee the design and organize the move. Someone with first-rate engineering skills? An aptitude for problem-solving? Way above average intelligence? No, I think we should use someone who works at this company. Well, I'd like to volunteer. All I ask in return is for first dibs on any extra offices with doors. Oh, I see your hidden agenda now. You're the master of the obvious. <laughs> well, no need to flatter me. You've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> and they said no engineer could have his own office. I think this would be a great site for the new headquarters. Let's visit site number two. Okay, let's visit site number three. So I think the choice is pretty obvious. Right, we build on the cliffside. Wait, wait, what about the meadow? If you wanted the meadow, why did you make such a convincing case for the cliffs? But the meadow is so picturesque, so peaceful, it's perfect. Alice, tell him. Uh-huh. Wally, help me out here. Uh, the meadow's only five minutes from your house? Uh, well, I suppose we could build a cliff in the meadow, get the best of both worlds. Or we could just wait a week and you'll forget about the cliff. Will that work? Usually. Well, in that case, why wait? The meadow it is. And put your office smack dab next to mine.
I think it's much less than the old one. Will there be an elevator? How does that work if it comes to a point like Now, I sometimes get more well, it's just... As you can see, each floor will be portioned into pie-shaped divisions so that at the center of the pie, where all the divisions converge, employees will engage in valuable knowledge transfer. Must. Stay. Awake. Managers will have private offices, as will one cunning engineer. Now, any questions? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak fly. Anyone else? Anybody? What will be the parking situation at the new headquarters? Good question. We will have a state-of-the-art underground parking structure. I'll be needing extra headroom. How about it? Give it up for the dill man. Hold my calls. Hey, uh, Dilly. Jimbo, Frankie, and I are thinking about taking a ball game tonight. Afterwards, we're going out for pizza, some beers, maybe play a little darts. What do you say? Who are you? Very funny. <laughs> well, I'm your old pal Tony from Sales. I know we've never spoken before, but I love your take on the new headquarters. Brilliant. Stroke of genius, really. I'm going to need some extra steps on the staircase, you know, because of the legs. Extra half steps on the stairs for multipods. I'll see what I can do. And don't put me next to the boss. Hey, Dill. Greg from Marketing. Uh, we've never met, would never like each other in normal life, and yet since I've become reptilian, I feel we have an unspoken bond. Go on. What with the scales and what have you, I'll be needing a sink with scalding hot water to clean myself. Okay. Special scalding hot water valve for reptilian employees. I'll try. Oh, uh, don't put me next to the boss. Hey, Dilby. Now that I'm an exoskeleton, I'll need a separate thermostat so I can keep the temperature in my cubicle at 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, I'll die. Special heating ducts for the skinless. I can't promise anything, but... Okay, I understand. I'm not afraid of expiring. But just don't put me next to the boss! Got it. Hey, watch it. Sorry. We need to talk. Right, right. Um, you know, there's a suggestion box on the fourth floor. How am I supposed to use a suggestion box? Maybe you could just hang around the suggestion box and yell your ideas at people who walk by. Okay. But I'm gonna need special pulleys and slides to get around the office in between floors. And a customized keyboard. And, uh, uh lower toilets. Much lower. Okay, I'll check into it. And I will suck you into my ectoplasm if you put me next to the boss. Uh, I'm gonna need more leg Yeah, room. well, I yeah. need deep water. I have gills. I have to be in water. I'm also Hold deciduous. Up. I need a butt rubbing tree. Butt rubbing tree, got it. Keep them away from me. Okay, I can put the swamp here, a butt rubbing tree over here, lower these toilets. All this just to get your own office. It's worth it. Do you really believe that all this is happening because of sick building syndrome? I have no reason not to believe it. What if it's all in their minds? Everything is in our minds. But when it causes us to grow an extra leg, I think we need to take it seriously. Okay, okay. On a lighter note, I have a coupon for a free fecal wash. No thanks. On the house. On the house? Okay. <laughs> Wally, you got your stuff packed? It's time to go. I'm not going anywhere, Dilma. You okay? Do flies catch cold or do they just drop dead? Are you going to use one of your sick days? No way. I've banked 14 years worth of sick days. It's time to cash them in and retire early. Uh, Wally? I hate to do this, but I think this might be a good time to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Sick days don't accumulate, they expire. Mm -hmm. And you can't trade sick days with other people. <laughs> We've been using you to steal office supplies for us for years. <laughs> it's easier than ordering from the catalog. <laughs> I guess it was kind of cruel in retrospect. Uh, Dilbert? Yes? My nose. It itches. Try not to think about it. Otherwise, your whole body will start itching. Ah, moving day. Exciting, isn't it? 
you know, if this works out, maybe we'll do it every year. What, move? That's insane. You've got to learn to think outside the box, Dilbert. So, who's going to be in the office next to me where all the action happens? The nerve center. You've got the whole floor to yourself. Excellent. By the way, I forgot to tell you, I need to make a few minor alterations to the building. Alterations? Teeny tiny, nothing with nothing. But... Poquito, ça va? Like what? Well, remember that whole thing about the isosceles triangle? I had it all wrong. I meant a trapezoid. But it's already been built. You're in charge. Make it happen. Check back with me in a week. That's the spirit. That's the end of that. I must say, I'm very impressed with the way the new headquarters has turned out. It's so shiny and big and white. And these portals, you can actually see through them. It's a miracle. You mean the windows? Yes. And those magical moving stairs. I mean, where do they all go? Anyway, you've done a bang-up job. It's so perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it's so perfect. Perfect. Too bad we can't afford to stay here. What? I just saw the rent allocation budget. Too rich for our blood. We'll have to lease it out to a more profitable company. But, but... By the way, where's the cliff? You look a lot... I was never sick. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Luckily, everyone seems to be developing an immunity to the toxic environment. I guess as a species, ultimately, we can adapt to anything. Yay for us. Everybody, I'd like to personally welcome you all back to the new, healthier, old headquarters. How is it healthier? Well, for one thing, we've added warning signs. Hey, everybody. I'm back to my old self. Too bad. Secondly, we've stocked the first aid kits with these new wonder drugs. Placebos. In this episode of Scientific Truth Journal, we'll explore the theory of evolution and we'll implicitly mock the people who hold opposing viewpoints. Ugh, evolution. What a crock. Can we change it, please? Evolution is a scientific fact, unless you're ignorant. If it's a fact, why is it called a theory? There are scientific reasons. It's all very complicated. Give me one good argument for evolution. First of all, the only alternative is unthinkable. It's raining toads. Maybe I should say the only alternative is unproven. Is that your whole argument? No. There, there's extensive fossil records. Extensive fossil records, including this definitive find on the African subcontinent. <sighs> it's a skull fragment of our earliest ancestors. I have found the missing link. Look, the rest of the skull. Whoops! <laughs> 
I'll grant you that some of the evidence is inconclusive, but when you put it all together... Thanks to advanced computer graphics and clay, we have recreated the missing link. Now, this would be a good time for you to renounce your irrational belief in evolution and change the channel. I'd like to hear your theory. My theory is that all the species that ever existed are still around. They're just hiding. That's ridiculous. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi Bob. Bob. Oh, finally. Who moved my pencil sharpener? Oh, no. Those are not my shavings. Who adjusted my monitor? Who fondled my mouse? Who had the unmitigated goal to soil my mouse with their grubby paws? Ah! Oh, oh! Hey, shut up in here! Some of us are trying to work. Hypothetically. My cubicle's been defiled. Someone's been in here. Did they take anything? I don't think so, but... Ah! Is that a yes? Someone's been accessing the internet with my computer. I'm no psychologist, but I think Dilbert is suffering from manic depressive episodes coupled with an acute delusional paranoia. If you're not a psychologist, then how can you say that? I'm entitled to my opinion. Wally? Yes? Were you using my cubicle? I barely use my own cubicle. Alice? Please, your cubicle is a hotbed for cooties. You can get fired for using the internet for personal stuff. You're in big trouble. How many personal websites have you accessed? I haven't accessed any. So you say... Ew! I touched your mouse! Ew! Ew! What the hell am I thinking? Look at all those websites on the history log. I've never heard of any of them. Elf, Hooters, Naked Troll Booty, Little People, Hugh... Oh. What was I thinking? Someone's into hardcore leprechaun porn. Big time. Dilbert, you disgust me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Boss alert. Am I interrupting anything important? We've never done anything important. Well, before you do, I need the three of you to attend a meeting with the vendor who sells us the dully dry erase markers for the whiteboards. Why? Just because they asked for a meeting? Right. I said I'd go, and I realized I'd have to have some technical support. Technical support? For marker pens? Do I detect a hint of sarcasm in your voice? No! I didn't think so. You don't know where these conversations can end up. You start with dry erase markers, next thing you know you're talking about... <laughs> oh, I don't know. Something very technical? Exactly. See, Wally knows. I know it's a meeting with outside vendors, and that means free food. And quality, not those stale chips and the black guacamole. What color is guacamole supposed to be? All right, all right, what time? Check with your secretary. I don't have a secretary. Oh, too bad. They're really quite great. Hey, here's a strange coincidence. Another website that's been surfed. The Dully Dry Erase Marker website. Someone around here is into a weird scene. Says the woman who collects unicorn art. Email. Busted. Someone's going down. Someone's going to take the fall. Someone's going to... Wally, shut up. You'll be okay if you just stick with the story you told us. It's not a story. Hey, that's good. That look of indignation really sells it. Do you have an appointment? You called me. Excuse me. I said... Answer my question. I did. I did. I see. Still want to play games? Me? Yes, you. What do you want with me? Sign the papers. I can't see them. Oh, poor you. It's just a simple confession. Standard procedure in the human resources department. Using the internet for personal business. Pilfering dry erase markers. Kidnapping the Lindbergh baby? Shooting Larry Flint? Wait a minute. I'm not signing this. Oh, yes, you are. I make a fortune at autograph shows. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. I didn't do any of these things. You should have thought of that before I forged your confession. Thanks for playing. Now, go away. Attention, attention. Dilbert has signed the confession. You may treat him like a pariah. That is all. 
Also, outside vendor meeting in conference room. Come on, Delbert. We know a shortcut to the meeting. Where are we? In the Jeffrey's tube? It's the air conditioning duct. Oh, that's a disappointment. We're close to the conference room. I smell free lunch meat. And, if I'm not mistaken, cantaloupe. Why would someone leave a dry erase marker here? Maybe it's empty. That answer is, like, so stupid. Never mind that. We're here. Food glorious. Ah! Oh, my Lord. Pick clean. This can't be happening. We're the only ones who knew the shortcut. Wally, pull yourself together. Put the feet back on, boys. <gasps> the food! It's gone! All the food! It's gone! It's all gone! Gone! The food! It's all gone! <laughs> Why couldn't you share? It wasn't me. Ask Dilbert. Wally didn't eat anything. I can vouch for him. Then maybe it was Dilbert. Tell him, Wally. Tell him what happened. Well, I, I wasn't with him the whole time. Wally! You wouldn't want me to lie, would you? He's a pig! Oh, yeah, food. String him up! Hang, Dilbert! Hey, get a rope! Back down! None of us ate it. It was like this when we got here. How do we know it wasn't you, Alice? Yeah! yeah. 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 I can prove it! Look here! <laughs> Any more questions? 67, 68... Okay, you see, yesterday I had 273 staples in here. Today, 272. Did you staple anything? Oh. Yeah. But I'm definitely missing 26 millimeters of scotch tape. And someone used my ruler. How can you tell? Is it shorter or something? Look at the edge. That's graphite from a regular pencil. I only use mechanical pencils with the ruler. Doesn't leave a mark. Here's your mail, Dilbert. Troll TNA, pygmies and panties, and hot homunculi. Great! Now I'm on a mailing list. Hello, Thumbelina. That's disgusting. I could sue you both for making this a hostile workplace. Ten minutes ago, you beat a man senseless. He was senseless before I beat him. We've got to solve this thing. Let's start by making a list of all the missing items on the board. Oh, there are a lot of advantages to tiny women. Give me those. Now hand me a dry erase marker, please. I don't see any. Oh, it's right over... Hey, where'd it go? Don't have a panic attack. I'll get you one. Wait, mine are all gone, too. Same here. This is very odd. I wonder if the literature says anything about this phenomenon. Oh. Oh. That's it? There's only one left? Got it. Hey! Hey! What's going on? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what happened? We're not alone. All right, first things first. Unless something more important comes up, and then we can handle that prior to the first thing. Wouldn't the thing prior to the first thing be the first thing? Technically, we're doing the first thing now. So that would be the second thing. Everything's moving so fast! One of the topics, I forget which one, is the rash of thefts in the office. You can get a rash from stealing? I think I had that once. Our losses due to the theft of dry erase markers has skyrocketed. It's ruining the company. Why don't we stop buying dry erase markers? Because then we wouldn't have any. We don't have any now. Uh, Alice, you're, you're, you're thinking like an engineer. Try to think like a manager. Okay. I can't think. Does anyone have a theory about who's taking the dry erase markers? Well, this might sound crazy. I'm all ears. Well, uh, not really, but uh, go on. I believe the markers are being stolen by tiny people. A new species, like elves. Sort of an evolutionary offshoot from humans. I don't know why you would think that would sound crazy. Woo woo! Well, damn it, how do we stop this evolution thing? We can't stop evolution. If anything, it may be an opportunity to understand it better. Loud Howard? I'm afraid of tiny people! They can run in your mouth! 
Am I the only one worried about that? These tiny people can't be evolved from us. If they were, there'd be size of an intermediate species. People who are in between normal-sized people and elf-sized people. Shut up. We can't handle this situation alone. We need someone who is an expert on evolution. How about someone who finds elves using a divining rod? No, that would be like the opposite of what we need. Oh, too bad. I hired him this morning. Grab a seat. Empty chair. This is ridiculous. You can't find tiny people with a stick. That's what they said to Jonas Salk. Jonas Salk invented the polio vaccine. Yes, but after they told him that he couldn't find tiny people with a stick. Fine, you use the stick. I've got a few tricks in my engineering bag. You don't have an engineering bag. You could use Alice. <laughs> Ow! It looks like a variation on the Lancaster Phelps containment design. But can it catch an elf? That's the question. Only one thing can kill an elf. A silver bullet. After I find them, it's up to you to gun them down. These aren't real silver bullets. They're just regular bullets spray-painted silver. Mine's only half-painted. I need more silver. Thank you. It is done. If any beam is broken, it will set off the system. And now, the cheese. All right, Wally, it's my watch. You can catch some sleep and... <clears throat> Wally, wake up! What? How long have you been asleep? I I'm not sure. What's today? Oh! 99 dry erase markers on the whiteboard. 99 dry erase markers. You take one down and sniff it all dry. 99 dry erase markers. Wait, 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 wait! It looks like a variation on the Lancaster Phelps containment design. Damn, they're not elves. They're tiny engineers. Gross! Only one way around this design. Every design has an Achilles heel. Hey, they're getting away! It's a nerd! for it, man. You go that way. I'll go this way. Why? Why? Why what? Why do you get to go that way? Maybe somebody else would like to go that way. Do you want to go that way? Not particularly. Then go that way! Uh-oh, the man! Hey guys, quick! You gotta see this! Whoa! Little freaks! Wait a minute! Isn't that Bill from the test engineering group? Yeah! And Joan from tech support? She once held the elevator for me. Ooh, man! And Marsha! And Ted and Henry! I thought they were laid off years ago. Ted, you tiny bastard, you owe me five bucks. Shh. You're going to scare them off. They've been downsized. Literally. They're disgusting vermin. Just because they're small? No. I shared a cubicle with that Ted guy. P.U. I think they're all hooked on sniffing those markers. To blunt the pain of their bleak, dismal existence. You think that helps? I guess they just stayed in the building after the layoffs. Close to their source of markers. What should we do? I never would have thought downsizing would have such a literal impact on their cellular structure. We have to help them. Okay. Except for Ted, who I will keep in a terrarium. And you doubted the power of the divining rod. The little people have been located. Here's a picture of one of them. Run for your lives! They're not dangerous. They're actual former employees who were downsized. They seem to be addicted to the dry erase markers. Is it that hard to see ourselves in their tiny shoes? <laughs> 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 oh, yes. 
Oh, so, anyway, seriously, to get rid of the infestation, I've hired a mysterious foreigner who says he can lure them out by playing an irresistible melody on his piccolo. And when that doesn't work, I pump the building full of insecticide. Insecticide? You can't kill them just because they're annoying. You don't really know until you try. Not only are they small and sneaky, they know nothing about music. On to phase two. You know, I think you could have waited for the weekend when we weren't here. Oh, don't be such a baby. I was assured that the insecticide is almost never deadly to full-grown humans. Now, suck it up and get back to work. Where are you going? Me? I'm taking a long lunch. I'll be back Thursday. I can fly! Just saw a guy. Well, this stuff is better than the markers. There'll be no stopping them now. They're gonna take over. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we should shoot them. <laughs> Why? <coughs> they haven't done anything wrong. <coughs> I think the blonde is smiling at me. <coughs> She's inebriated. All the better. <coughs> Who's gonna sign for this? I will. But me. You signed last time. Allow me. Keep it coming, bro. Whoa, Gilbert's stressed. Come on, bro. Get on the love train. I'm a little busy right now. I'll catch a later train. Dig you later. There it is. Survival of the fittest. At least Wally made the cut. Aha! So you finally admit that I'm right about evolution. Not if you want my help. Once the telecommunications hub is gone, the little people won't be able to order new dry erase markers. Marker. I need marker. <laughs> Nothing. What now, Gulliver? Look at them. It's pathetic. They need to leave this environment. Start fresh. Build new lives. We could sell them as toys and make a fortune. No! I'm talking about lending a hand and you're talking about exploitation. As if there's a difference. There is. Well, excuse my capitalism. They just need a change of scenery. Then they'll straighten out. Is that your expert opinion as an engineer? I'm going to help these people. After your idealism is crushed, feel free to plead for my help. Does anyone have the number of dry erase markers anonymous? Collect them all, kids. There's Phil from marketing, Peg from payroll, Gwen from accounting. The supply is limited, so they can only go up in value. Dry erase markers sold separately. So, who's first? We have a big problem here. Drop everything you're doing and solve it. I'm gonna be late for work. 
Oh, this is far more important than your career. You always say that. Well, this time it's true. The TV's not working. I've been sitting here for nearly a minute without entertainment. Change the battery in the remote. The one on the left. The one on the left? Well, that's just spooky. Not really. I have the knack. The knack? For technology. My mom says I always have. I'm worried about little Dilbert. He's not like other kids. What do you mean? Yesterday, I left him alone for a minute, and he disassembled the TV, our clock, and the stereo. That's perfectly normal. Kids take things apart. Oh! The part that worries me is he used the components to build a ham radio set. Oh, dear. Is that bad? Normally, I'd want to run an EEG on him, but the machine isn't working. It's worse than I feared. What is it? I'm afraid your son has the knack. The knack? The knack. It's a rare condition characterized by an extreme intuition about all things mechanical and electrical and utter social ineptitude. Can he lead a normal life? No. He'll be an engineer. <laughs> no! <laughs> there, there. Don't blame yourself. Will it go away over time? It might, but pray it doesn't. If an engineer loses the knack, the results can be devastating. And in further news, you might want to get on the... Thanks for filling in for our regular doctor on such short notice. I was in the neighborhood. Here, I bought a double A yesterday because I sensed this coming. You're freaking me out. I don't know why. I told you I have the knack. The knack. Oh, oh. oh. good. As you know, humanity has pretty much destroyed the ecological balance of the planet. It's not my fault. I recycle. No one's blaming you, Loud Howard. I blame him. Why do you blame me? When you recycle your newspapers, do you iron out the wrinkles first? No. Well, maybe you should, Planet Killer. All right, then, that settled. The point is, the Earth is polluted beyond repair. That leaves us one viable business strategy. We're going to clean up the earth? Oh, gee. No. I should say not to clean up the earth. No. We're going to start polluting outer space. I didn't become an engineer so I could pollute the solar system. Why did you become an engineer? Isn't it obvious? She picked the one profession where she'd be surrounded by sexy men all day. Tell me more about this polluting of space idea. No, oh, no, no, no. We won't be calling it polluting. Negative connotation. We prefer the word advertising. I'm talking billboards in space. No one can read a billboard in space. They can if we make them really big. Do you have any idea how much that would cost? A thousand dollars? Maybe fifty billion dollars. Well, that will... Just have to amortize the costs. Amortize the costs? That doesn't even mean anything. We'll find a way to get it done. Failure isn't in my vocabulary. Neither is amortize, apparently. Here we go again. You're drinking out of my cup. Ah! You have drunk from the cup of management. Now you're infected! What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Soon, your technical skills will evaporate like the fine mist on a summer lawn. They warned us about this in school. There was management DNA in the backwash of that cup. Now it's in you. It's like a virus. People! I'd like to get the first space billboard launched in 30 days. Does anyone see a problem with that? No yes, way in hell! Yeah, I've never heard of it. He knows nothing, a pointy-head idiot who stinks like old socks! 
Sounds like we have consensus. I don't know what's wrong with this pen. I'm going out on a limb here, but I'll say it's out of ink. That management DNA must have infected you. You've lost the knack. I have not lost the knack. I'll show you who's lost the knack. I'll design this thing myself. Out of my cubicle. I need privacy. This is my cubicle? Sense of direction. It's the first thing that goes when you lose the knack. Gilbert, just the man I need. What's it mean when you get a system error number 53? <sighs> Watch me solve this with intuition alone. Okay. Error 53. I haven't seen that one before, but I have a feeling it's your network interface card. What should I do? Press Control and F9. Thanks. Hey, Dilbert! Do you know how to subnet an IP address? It's been a while, but I think this will work. I haven't lost my engineering knack just because a few things go wrong. Even great athletes have dry spells. Like the great Olympian Emil Gartinamo, world record holder in both the javelin and the hundred yard dash. Only person who ever died by throwing a spear into his own back. Did you just make that up? Clever, wasn't it? Can we talk about me instead of made up people? Sure, pass the bread. Okay, tell me about your day. I've got to design a low Earth orbit advertising satellite as big as New Zealand and get it launched in 30 days for under a thousand dollars. That is so sad and pathetic. And then what? Well, that's kind of the whole story. They're not laughing at you. They're laughing with you. I didn't say anyone was laughing at me. You're only ugly on the outside. What are you talking about? They say swimming is the best exercise. Well, I've always agreed with that, but... Hey! A light sail. Well, you still need a huge ground-based laser to push it. We can borrow the one at the Particle Accelerator Lab. We only need it for a few minutes. Are you done yet? Good Lord, man, you're working me to the bone. Has it been tough? Well, this coffee cup doesn't carry itself around. Get some rest, Wally. You two, start pulling your weight. The components are all off the shelf. We can put this thing together in a week. It looks good on paper, but how do we know you haven't lost the knack? I haven't lost the knack. There's something wrong with it. Let me have a look. There. It should be fine. Thanks, Dilbert. Smart men are so sexy. Do you think we could go out sometime? Attention all workers. Has anybody seen my pen, the one that writes in four colors? It's not worth a lot of money or anything, but my mom gave it to me and it has a lot of sentiment. This is a terrible Thank program. You, what else is on? Hey, hey, where's the clicker? Why aren't I sitting in my recliner? Oh, for crying out loud, for the last time, this is not a TV show. Uh, you're telling me. Look at this guy. He hasn't moved the whole time I've been watching. Although it does build suspense. You know what? Leave this on. Oh, what the hell? I can't take it. Tell me the ending. Forty minutes after liftoff, the ship will achieve orbit. At that time, the tissue-thin balloon material will unfurl, creating an advertising banner over five miles wide. Ten seconds. Seven. Four, three, two, one. That's <laughs> blooper. All systems are green. The laser should kick in in 15 seconds and put our baby on target. Are you sure you gave the right coordinates to the laser operator? You've been off your game lately. Me? Off my game? Ha! Oh. 
Simple housewives, I'll sharpen your knives. I've got raisins, shriveled and brown. Who wants raisins, the finest in town? Bows and arrows, and kill some birds. Then you shove them in a pie. Hi, Dilbert. Do I know you? What do you mean? We're your neighbors. I'm Arnie from across the street. The insurance salesman? What happened to you? Well, ever since that satellite got knocked out... That was yesterday. Yeah, well, things fell apart pretty fast without power and communications. <laughs> Luckily, Denise over there, she went to a Renaissance festival last summer, so she knew what to do. So you want to be a blacksmith? We also need a guy to sweep little piles of dung into big piles of dung. I'll get back to you. We have to realign the satellites and restore power and communications. Oh, forget it. Stop being a stick in the mud. Everybody's having a great time. No more multitasking, no more fax modems, email, voicemail, video conferencing, teleconferencing, pointing, clicking, and all that other stuff I never did anyway. Where's Alice? Just follow the sounds of tambourines and drunken laughter. Hey, buddy, you're gonna have to wait your turn like the rest of us. Quiet, Knave! <laughs> what the hell is going on? We're celebrating the return to simpler times! You mean the downfall of civilization? No, I mean the rebirth of the human heart. With technology gone, we're free to enjoy our true nature, to release the animal within and let it live wild and untamed! So you're not going back to work? I am at work. This is my job now. You're, uh... Free spirit! A child of nature. I live for the moment and follow my whims wherever they guide me. How's the pay? I'm paid in joy, and my hours are from yesterday until forever. And if you don't like it, I'll kick the crap out of you. Terrific. Where's the boss? He's over there, fulfilling his role in the natural order of things. A dialogue about maximizing quality productivity would bring about a consensus within the time parameters of our earlier proactive assessment. Yeah! <laughs> and to think, Dilbert, we have you to thank for all of this! No, don't thank me. This is awful. Let's raise a glass of mead to Dilbert! <laughs> what's mead? What's wrong with you people? Don't you see what's happened? Yeah! Fine. If I have to repair those satellites single-handedly, then that's what I'll do. Who's with me? None of us! Uh. If only I hadn't drunk the boss's coffee, I would still have my knack for technology. I'm afraid your son has the knack. Can he lead a normal life? You're drinking out of my cup. Now you're infected! You've lost the knack. That management DNA must have infected you. You're only ugly on the outside. I've got it. I know how to get my knack back. Hello? Hello? Somebody answer me! There's gotta be someone out there! 
I'll pay any roaming charges. I'll accept the collect international call. <laughs> what did I tell you about trying to contact the outside world? facilitate the implementation of our business system transition strategy, we must maximize our talent base and thereby determine our propensities for consensus building. <laughs> Here, drink this. Oh, kind sir. You offer me a tipple to slake mine thirst. Alas, I have but recently imbibed a goblet of ale. Just a sip, then. A sip? A sip, you say, to wet one's whistle. Why, what harm could it do? But verily, I am already quenched. Drink it. <coughs> oh. Good, sir. Your generosity will not be circumvented. <coughs> Ooh, phew. I salute you. I don't feel any different. I hope you washed your cup. Dirty rags for sale. Who buys dirty rags? You'd be surprised. I don't need any rags. What I need is to find my knack. Yes, the knack. It's like trying to find the one good rag in a huge pile of bad ones. How's that the same? Sometimes the harder you look, the better it hides. When you stop looking for the knack, it will find you. You look familiar. You know, if you shorten the axle about eight inches, you'll reduce the stress and you won't have this problem. Exactly. Looks like you found your rag. accustomed to the new ways, the authenticity and the relationship with nature, but it's a lie. We live in a cold mechanistic technocracy. We have to make that work. I know life is unfair. You'll get no argument from me. I know it's not fun and it's not novel, but it's real. To that end, I've turned this silo into a rocket by loading it with 20 tons of match heads. It's going to reorient the satellites and give us back our technology. Thank God I am tired of sleeping in dung. And wearing these unflattering clothes. I miss TV. Don't yes, you miss TV? me too. Don't you miss I need it? my show. Oh, I need it. Everything is still ruined. But now it's worse because for a few moments we had hope. It's time for a human sacrifice. Just let me get this. Yeah. Oh, 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 hey, yeah. hey, thanks for calling. Hmm. Too bad. I was beginning to enjoy the simple life. Everyone likes the simple life until it gets complicated. Where's Dad tonight? He's still at the all-you-can-eat buffet place in the mall. How long has he been there? Since 1979. You gotta hand it to him. He doesn't give up. For him, it's the principal. He's not coming home until he's sure it's all he can eat. It was a mistake for them to put bathrooms in that place. You remind me so much of him. What little I can remember. How can they say it's the world's favorite snack? I'd like to see the evidence that supports that. Maybe you should write to them and demand proof. 
Now you've done it. And how do they know this is 30% of my daily recommended fat? Isn't everyone a different size to begin with? Let's go in the living room. He'll be a while. Are they telling me a jockey needs the same amount of cookie protein as a professional weightlifter? They must think we're idiots or something. Without a weight chart, this is completely unhelpful. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. According to my perpetual calendar program, June 30th in the year 2014 will be a Thursday. Did you know that? If I say yes, will you not talk? No, this is kind of interesting. Guess what day of the week is the first day of the year 2,222? Two stay? No, but that would have been good, too. More importantly, which is better, Paris or Rome? Better? Paris. Which is better, Prague or Budapest? Why does it matter which is better? Prague. Which is better? What are you doing? I have to RSVP to my Millennium Parties. Millennium Parties? Yes. Which is better, Hong Kong or Singapore? Wait a minute. Maybe my invitations have been lost in the mail. Oh, who cares? I never liked New Year's Eve anyway, and this one's no different. Except that everyone on Earth will be celebrating the end of the millennium. Well, everyone except you. I don't care. I will not be pressured into having fun just because we arbitrarily use a base 10 counting system and a big round number is coming up. If I'm going to have fun, I want a good reason. Well said. So which is better, Lisbon or Istanbul? Oh, come on. I can't be the only person not getting invitations to millennium parties. Which is better, Tokyo or Munich? Do you guys have any party plans for New Year's Eve 1999? Oh, yeah, of course. Only a total loser would have no plans for the biggest night ever in our lifetime. What are you doing, Dilbert? Me? I, uh, I got plans. I'm planning to link up with my survivalist militia group and loot a National Guard ammunitions dump. Do you know something I don't? Hello, the Millennium Bug. When the date hits 2000, all computers will malfunction and the world will plunge into chaos. I don't want to be outgunned. We won't have a year 2000 problem in this company. All of our computers are new. Not all. You're forgetting Black Betty. Black Betty. That mainframe was replaced years ago. Black Betty. Betty. Did you say Black Betty? Boy, I haven't thought about old Black Betty in ages. Maybe never. But she's real. As real as the dwarf who sneaks into my bedroom at night and steals my underwear. About that mainframe. Not now, I'm reminiscing. Where was I? Black Betty. Yes, Black Betty, the mainframe. Boy, oh boy. We thought about replacing her years ago, but then we thought... Well, why not just cobble our new systems to the old one with untold miles of spaghetti code and obsolete coax cable? Why'd you do that? It was an executive decision. We figured it would save money in the short run and only later plunge the company into darkness after we executives had all left for other companies. But you're still here. Brinksmanship. I live for it. You know how sometimes you're driving down the freeway and you pull into the oncoming lane intentionally, only to swerve away at the last minute? That was you? You ran me off the road. Stared destiny right in the face. You could have killed me. Sorry. Anyway, which is better, Jakarta or Geneva? We have to do something about the Millennium Bug. The Millennium Bug? Are you telling me that Han Solo's ship is here? That's the Millennium Falcon. I'm talking about the year 2000 problem. Y2K. Oh, yes. Uh, um, T3G. Pardon? B9C. <laughs> B9C? Look, if our computer systems are all connected to Black Betty, some ancient mainframe... Oh, oh, E4J. This was fun. We're out of business when the date changes. You mean all the technology is going to... break? Yes. Is there any way this collapse of civilization thing could affect me personally? I think it might. Okay, then. You have my full support to fix the problem. Unless it involves any sort of resources or decisions or effort on my part. Remember, money is no object. Unless, of course, you plan to spend it. Me? Why is it up to me? Because you brought it up. You know the rules. He who complains is assigned to fix it. That only applies to little things. This could be the biggest project in our company's history. And I've never even seen that Black Betty mainframe. No one has, for years. It's quite splendiferous. You've seen it? I helped install it. 
Of course, that was years ago, before the life force was drained from my body and I became a selfish and apathetic shell of a man. Then you can help. I don't think you were listening. Besides, I don't even remember back then. You have to help, Wally. The career of every employee depends on it. If our mainframe goes nuts, we'll lose our payroll system, our pension database, the personnel records. It will be as if we never even worked here. And for me, every day is like that. You know what I mean. If we go down, you're going down with us. Shh, shh. Yes, uh, I want the gold card, the silver card, and the platinum card. Are there any other heavy metals that you make cards in? Okay, then, send them out. Wally, what are you doing? Welcoming in the millennium. By ordering credit cards. That's right. I'm applying for every credit card I can get my hands on. Then I'll take huge cash advances and wait for the millennium bug to hose the bank's computers. They'll never be able to bill me. You would have made a great evil mastermind. Nah, the hours are too long. Alice, you've got to help me on this year 2000 project. I need a team. I would, but I don't have time. I'm buried with work. Maybe you should come with me to see the Director of Human Resources. He might have a company-sponsored program for time management. Ashok, we need your help on the year 2000 project. I'd like to help, but I'm just an intern. I have no experience with computers made before the 90s. Come with us to see the Director of Human Resources. Maybe he knows of some company-sponsored training you can take. Wally. Shh. I'm securing a home equity loan. But you don't own a home. I don't, but my good friend Bob does. Who's Bob? I'm Bob. Oh. Sheesh. But Wally, you're our best hope. You've got to help on the year 2000 problem. You were there. You know where the date code is on the old mainframe. I don't remember any of it. It was a long time ago. Yes, I'm holding. Come with us to see the Director of Human Resources. Maybe he has some sort of company-sponsored program to regain lost memories. Bob? Bob, are you there? Hello, Bob? Dogbert, I need you. Meet me at work. What do you want? We came to see Mr. Catbert. What for? Well, I need 45 more people to help me on the year 2000 project. I need more time. I need experience. I need a memory. What about the dog? I'm perfect, but thanks for asking. Mr. Catbert is busy. Go away! We could shove Ashuk the intern through the opening. He can unlock the door from the other side. I could never fit in that tiny... Oh! Note to self, get smarter troll to guard door. We need your help. I can't help. Why not? It's a company policy. Aren't you the one who makes the company policies? Do I have a great job or what? If you don't help us, we're going to be stuck here and we'll never be able to go home. Dilbert, you don't need me. You have everything you need right here. Take a shook here. He has no experience. I am a blank slate. But what he doesn't realize is that cynicism is almost the same thing as experience. It is? Sure. Just try thinking the worst about people, and you'll usually be right. I feel wiser already. And Alice, you need more time. But that's only because you spend so much time with your hair and makeup in the morning. That's a necessity. Only in your mind. You mean I'm beautiful just the way I am? No. I mean it's a lost cause. You should put that time to better use. What about Wally? He needs a memory. Wally doesn't need a real memory. I don't? No. Recent court rulings have proven false memory is just as good as the real thing. Maybe better. How do I get one of those? Hypnosis will do the trick. I have some books right here. Let me see those. You don't have these on video, do you? Okay, this is a start, but I still need more bodies. Don't you have a list of surplus employees? Well, I don't usually do this. Do what? Be helpful. But I do have a list of employees who have recently been terminated. How does that help? Still on the payroll for two more weeks. <laughs> They're all described in this binder. The useless guy. The useless guy will take up space and eat your donuts. 
Sometimes he will clip articles from publications and leave them on your chair. Ted the generic guy. He has no distinct characteristics. People who have known him for years can't describe him. There may be more than one Ted in the company. No one really knows. Zimbu the monkey. Smarter than the average simian. Writes computer code at record speed thanks to his tail. They aren't much, but they'll have to do. Can you regress him to his earlier days as an engineer when he helped install the mainframe? I'm not up to the regression chapter yet. What have you learned? I can make him walk a tightrope across a ravine. Does it have to be a ravine? Can it be any sort of chasm? Sure, ravine, or gulch, or chasm, or gasm. Huh? Oops, I skipped a chapter. Mom? Mom? In here, dear. Push a little harder. Get your shoulder into it. <laughs> Mom, what are you doing? Stockpiling. Stockpiling? Why? Where have you been? Haven't you heard about Y2K? Heard of it? I'm in charge of fixing the bug for my whole company. You are. God help them. Thanks, Mom. Maybe you should start hoarding essential supplies before it's too late. Why are you hoarding hair conditioner? I had a coupon. Mom, it would be a lot easier to talk to you if I could see you. I'm not here. I'm at the warehouse shopping club with a moving van. Am I so predictable you can record your side of the conversation in advance? Yes, you are so predictable I can record my side of the conversation in advance. Put it back. Excuse me. I need to get out. Get out? Nobody gets out. Haven't you learned that by now? I mean the driveway. I know what you mean. The question is, do you know what you mean? What do you mean? You're concerned about Y2K. You're afraid you won't be able to solve the problem in time. That you'll go down in history as the goat of the new millennium. How do you know that? It's written all over your face. If you're so smart, what do I do about the year 2000 problem? Don't fight the problem. Embrace it. You are Y2K. I am Y2K. Are you just going to keep repeating what I say? Okay. Embrace it. Got it. Finally. Uh, excuse me. I still need to get out? They never listen. This all looks pretty optional. And then he says, do you know what you mean? And I said... Fix it yet? Not yet. Okay. As I was saying... Cut it out! I'm not doing anything! Your tail is poking my face! Your face is poking my tail! Let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. We just did that. Can anyone pay attention here? Can I say something? What? Nothing. It's just been a while since I said anything. <sighs> now, Ted, it seems to me you might be able to... Ted, I was saying you might be able to... Ted, I... Ted, Ted! Are you talking to me? Yes. My name's not Ted. It's not? Well, what is it? Well, it's Ted, but not the Ted you're thinking of. Hey, what did I tell you? Come and get me! Ah! Yeah! Oh, 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 get him off of me! I cut out this article today. I'll pass it around. <laughs> there it is. Black Betty. That mainframe is tied to every computer system in this company. And only Wally knows its secrets. This is the only control port into Black Betty. It hasn't been used for years. There must be 10 million lines of computer code in that thing. And no written documentation. Let's give up now and form an agrarian society! Don't panic yet. 
If Dogbert can get Wally to remember how we installed this, we'll know exactly where to make the changes. So our futures depend on Wally. That's it! We're all farmers! How's it going? Any progress? No. Apparently he was a cow in a previous life. Stop playing around. We need him to remember his days as a young engineer when he installed the Black Betty mainframe. You're stressed. Have a glass of warm milk. I am kind of thirsty. No. It's COBOL. I learned about this in school. You learned a program in COBOL? No, I learned about it in history class. History, you say? I'll see if I can find anything about history in the literature. <laughs> back. Back in time. Back to the 1970s. I am getting such a sunburn. Whose idea was this pyramid thing anyway? Why don't we just cover the pharaoh with sand? Are you afraid we'll run out? Now this is more like it. Hey, I'm on a break. How did you get here? Hey, who's the hypnotist? Right. A god has descended to Earth. Sorry, no autographs. In retrospect, this was a pretty great epoch. All right, who wants to fan me? Back, back in time, to the 1970s. A.D., remember yourself as a young engineer. I had the hair. You were full of optimism and enthusiasm. I cared about my job. Morning. 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 Good morning. That's the new whiz kid. <laughs> Hot shot. So much hope and energy. He's got the world on a string. Hey, Wally, how about some coffee? Uh, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to miss any work. Ooh. Look at him go! He's written an entire customer database system from scratch. Why do we only use two digits to store the dates? It saves space. Yeah, but in the year 2000, the programs won't work because the computer will think it's year zero zero. <laughs> we know from the hypnotic regression that Wally used to be a great engineer. Wow. From great engineer to doorstop in just a few short years. Wally was a magnificent stallion before he became a broken man. You don't often hear the words Wally and stallion in the same sentence. But he was a stallion once. That's the point. Don't you get it? I get it! No, I don't! We've got to think like Wally. <laughs> no, young Wally. <sighs> young Wally would have seen this year 2000 problem coming. He would have left flags in the program so he could find the date code easily. Probably some sort of keyword in the program documentation. If we figure out the keyword, we'll know exactly where the problems are. Wally, what is the keyword? Keyword. What is the keyword? Keyword. No, no. What is the keyword? Keyword. I think his keyword was keyword. All right. I said smart, not creative. This old equipment won't make it. It has to. It's obsolete. If it fries, we'll never have a way to reprogram the mainframe. He's not gonna make it. He's not fast enough. You step aside. I see what he's doing. You just need a faster typist. Still no good. He won't make it. Use the tail, Zimbu. The tail. Pitch again? Not yet. Well, okay. It's gonna blow! I feel so soiled. Even more than usual. Oh my god, have I been working? Is it fixed yet? 
We won't know until January 1st. Why? What significance does January 1st have? January 1st, 2000? Apparently, you've been too busy fooling around to read the news. The National Bureau of Standards has decided to skip 2000. The 21st century won't officially start till the year 2001. You can't do that. That's what they said about daylight savings time. No, they didn't. Well, they should have. My watch is off by an hour. Sometimes it's like that for months. Maybe we should get hopping on the year 3000 problem. You know, nip it in the bud. Good thinking, Alice. You're in charge. Oh. Hi, how are you? What? Nothing. I'm here to withdraw the maximum cash advances from each of these credit cards. Are you one of those guys who thinks our computer records will be wiped out by the year 2000 bug and you won't have to pay us back? And there's nothing you can do about it. Here you go. Ah! You know, no matter how many times I do that, it's always enjoyable. Hey, I know you. You live across the street. Oh, yeah? What's my name? Uh, I don't know. Right. So let's just keep this on a professional level. Okay. I'm selling overpriced cookies that taste like styrofoam. How many cartons should I put you down for? Will my money go to a good cause? Well, what do you consider a good cause? Feeding the poor? Our troop is taking a trip to the Fashion Cafe. It's in New York. I know where it is. Aren't both of your parents successful attorneys? Is that relevant to this cookie transaction in any way? Your family is rich. Why should I pay for your vacation? <laughs> My troop leader said people are nice if you give them a chance. <laughs> she said I would learn from this experience. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Don't, don't cry. <laughs> it's so unfair. First, your generation pollutes the world and plunders its natural resources. Now this. Okay, okay, just calm down. I'll buy a box. <laughs> That'll be $80. $80? For cookies? Okay, take my money. Go visit the fashion cafe. Maybe I'll buy a pony, too. Shouldn't you write down my name or something? to leave a paper trail. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. You're welcome. What? You buckled under the pressure. Was? I helped a little girl learn a valuable lesson about life. I think you encouraged her to pursue a life of crime. No, I taught her by my example that you don't need a reason to help a neighbor. It feels good to give. Ugh, that's ridiculous. I'll bet you $20 it doesn't feel good to give. You are on, my cynical friend. Okay. To settle the question, give me $40 and then tell me if it feels good. That wouldn't feel good. Okay. Then give me $20 because you lost the bet. Did I just make a bet that would cost me $20 whether I won or not? Yes. But you also got to help someone more fortunate than yourself. I have volunteered to chair the Associated Way Charity Drive for our county. I think you all know why. Is it because you need another plaque to cover a fly stain on your office wall? Yes. That and something about poor people. I expect they'll send me some details in the mail. It's like you're a saint or something. No, Loud Howard, I'm no saint. I just believe that people should do their fair share. Or, in the case where one of those people is the boss, 
Other people should do it for him. This is even more inspirational than last year. Now, in keeping with tradition, three charity coordinators will be chosen from the list of our most useless employees. <clears throat> Wally. Hey, top of the list four years in a row. Whoa, whoa. A dead guy we found in the stairwell. And the chair he's sitting in, which we've named Ronald. Oh, tough competition. Congratulations. You will each be assigned an official Associated Way uniform and a donation container. Cool. Chicks dig a man in uniform. Everybody who donates will get one of these colorful, stylish, I get to keep my job t-shirts. Of course, participation is completely 100% voluntary. Any questions? Yeah. 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 All right, youngsters, settle down. We'll have the company charity carnival, okay? Yay! I hate that carnival. All the money raised at the carnival is spent paying for the carnival. And it's based on the premise of cheap thrills and cheating. Hardly charitable concepts. How dare you? How dare you denigrate the carnival? Shh! Shh. Dilbert, are you criticizing the carnival? I'm a gog. And I really admit that. No, it's just that, uh, well, okay. Exactly where does the money go? Well, there's the poor, who I keep going on about. And of course, the plaques don't grow on trees. Isn't the plaque made of wood? So? Then it does grow on a tree. Why do you ask a question if you already know the answer? He's an arrogant bastard. Now listen, punk. If you think you can reinvent the wheel, the Ferris wheel, that is, then go right ahead. Carnival Chairman Dilbert, ha ha! What just happened? So, Dilbert, how much can I put you down for? Here's twenty bucks. Now leave me alone until next year. Ooh, twenty dollars. I'll see if they'll name a hospital after you. You don't even know where the money goes. I don't know where pudding comes from, but I still eat it. That is such a bad analogy. Thank you, Wally. Now I can never eat pudding again. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to cut down on the calories. No matter what people say, Alice, looks are important. Alice, have you fulfilled your obligation to society? Yes. I signed up for payroll deduction. I like to give. I'm morally superior to Dilbert. That is so illogical. As long as there are starving people in the world, you can't have money in the bank and still claim to be moral. There is ample precedent for my behavior. It is completely societally appropriate to give only as much as one can afford. You just bought six pairs of shoes that look exactly the same. That came out of my shoe budget. Don't rock the boat, Dilbert. It's a fragile system. That shoe money could have fed a poor family for a year. What's so moral about letting people starve to death so that you can have extra shoes? Stop it. You're ruining everything. I mean, until you give it all away, you're not more moral. You just feel less guilty. I don't agree. The concept of morality is contingent upon the cultural context. I mean, the relative value of guilt in a so-called free society. I mean, altruistic inclinations are dependent upon... I mean... Damn! You're right. I hate that! Hey, can you spare a few dollars for the disabled veterans of retail security? You don't look disabled to me. I've got prickly heat. Ed's just kind of slow. Which one of us is Ed? You're on my turf, fellas. Don't start with me! You wouldn't be the first guy in a monkey costume that I've had to kill! Can you settle this outside? I'm collecting for the Sisters of Perpetual Motion. There's no such thing as perpetual motion. Not now, but if we collect enough money, someday... Well, listen, hey, come boy, on, you're watching in my No, you walk on, buddy, okay? Your... Who should I make that out to? To the Society of Guys with Large Bellies who don't have satellite dishes yet. This will nearly triple our odds of seeing naked people who can't see us. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that the cable viewer's guide, that's extra. Morning, Governor. Would you help out a good cause and buy a candy bar? Only five dollars. How do I know my money won't be squandered in administrative expenses and never reach the... Uh, what was the cause again? We're trying to find a cure for canine apathy. Canine apathy? By any chance, is your leader about two feet tall, round glasses and a tail? Okay, urchins. 
Bring the money to the van. You seem a little short. No, sir. No. I would never. Do I have to run a full body cavity search on you? Good. And put more dirt on your face. Dog burn. I don't believe we've gotten a donation from you yet. Uh oh. Chain reaction. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'll get a few minutes of peace. Howdy there. My name is Foster from the organization of farmers who are afraid of cows. Why don't they just change jobs? How's a cow gonna change jobs, city boy? Use your head. Go away. Leave me alone. Huh? <gasps> Would you donate money to the women who cut their hair too short and don't realize how bad it looks? Money for mountain goats with three legs? Hey, you're hiding your leg. I can see it. Hey, mind your own business, buddy. I'm not a man. I heard there was a charity frenzy in progress. Did I miss anything? Okay, here, here. This is all I have. Everyone just leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Dilbert, I'd like you to pick up my plaque at the Associated Way Banquet tomorrow night. Tell them how grateful I am. Do you think this could have waited until later? Don't mind me. I'll just wait... There I was in the NBA, all-star forward, multi-millionaire. Life was good until I turned to drugs and alcohol. Actually, that part was pretty good, too. I love drugs and alcohol. But I did get kicked off the team and lost my entire fortune. That's when the Associated Way helped me out. I got sober, I started my own business. Now I got a beautiful wife, great kids, a mistress, whole fleet of cars, mansions on both coasts, and a Learjet. And best of all, I haven't paid any taxes in years. Thank you. I think we've all learned a valuable lesson about life. And now, to accept the appreciation award on behalf of our county coordinator is one of his flunkies, Dilbert. On behalf of my boss, who didn't care enough to be here, Thank you for this lovely plaque. And if you don't mind me saying so, what exactly was the lesson we're supposed to get from this drugged out basketball player? <gasps> I mean, didn't he just teach us that if you become a drug addict, your life will turn out fine? It seems to me that this whole charity concept is nothing but an exercise in redistribution of guilt. I'm all for helping the disadvantaged, but aren't most of your funds going towards administrative costs? Wouldn't it be more effective, more cost-effective, more impactful, if each of us just helped one other person? But I digress. Thank you all for this lovely plaque for my boss. I'm sure you could have fed a family of four for what it costs to make it. It was just an argument. I wasn't trying to change anyone's mind. Too late, Gandhi. You've killed charitable giving forever. Excuse me, sir. I... I'm a woman, damn it! Sorry. Hey, what happened? What happened? <laughs> Get this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, we're the cleaning crew. The crew that cleans up. I understand that. Oh, do you? With your college degree. You know, we might not be engineers, but there's a certain science to what we do, too. Well, no, there's not. But I'm not here to argue. You've just discarded all of Alice's possessions. What? This junk? Where she's going, she ain't gonna be needing it. Where's she going? The street. The street? But how's she gonna live? 
What about food, clothing, shelter? It's no problem. It's not? Nope, not anymore. Tell them. Homeless Depot is the place for all your homeless needs. And at prices that can't be beat. Homeless Depot, now in two convenient locations. Our original location at 11233 Skid Row. And visit our newest Homeless Depot at 475 and a half, that dangerous part of that abandoned waterfront area down there. Okay, let's see. Sweater, a sock, old rags, carton of soggy cigarette butts. Those are on sale, right? Do you have your Homeless Depot card? Of course. That's another 20% off. Alice. What do you want, Dilbert? You gave all your money away? What choice did I have? You convinced me that it would be immoral to hold on to it. Hey, that is a spiffy shopping cart. You like it? I customized it. Is that a motor? Yeah, nine horsepower. Wow. Alice, I thought maybe I could get the carnival up and running again. A carnival? You mean like with rides? Excuse me, do I know you? I'm your neighbor. I'm your friend. I'm your relative. I'm the one you won't make eye contact with. The one you're afraid to say hello to. So, in other words, no. Nah. We're here at the Charity Carnival, the brainchild of this man, Dilbert, who ironically is the same man whose popular outspoken cynicism about charity has meant a death sentence to thousands of needy people. Was that a question? There you have it. In his own words, he just doesn't care. Wait, I know this one. It's Ted! Darn! How does he do it? <laughs> Next! This booth is doing well. Right this way! See the freaks! One dollar! Why not? I can't get an outside line! I can't even get an operator to give me an outside line! What does this button mean? I've never heard that sound before! It's, it's not a busy signal! It's more like a, a beep 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 beep! That's funny. I could have sworn I put my glasses down right here. I was reading the paper and then I got up. Mm -hmm. oh. 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 Step right up! Step right up. Knock a street urchin off a beam with a baseball and win a toy. Watch how easy it is to win. <laughs> Come on, folks. Don't be shy being a street urchin with a baseball. You look innocent, but you know they've done something to deserve it. What about you, sir? That is disgusting. You mean to say if I hit one of those kids with a baseball, I could win some of this stuff? That's the premise. Isn't that my camera and my binoculars and my CD player? Tell you what I'll do. You hit one kid in the noggin with one baseball, and I'll give you all the prizes, close the booth, and go home. All the prizes? Is there an echo in here? All right, I'll take a shot. Everybody plays, only I win. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> yeah, how do they do that? Hi, hi! <laughs> oh, something smells good. Oh, I am just about partied out. <laughs> oh, brother, I've got to sit down. Oh, well, nobody's sitting here. Just take a load off till I get chased away. <laughs> La di da, la di da. Get a shot of the idiot on the dunking tank. Ooh. 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 Hey, hi, everybody. Oh. Oh my god, they've killed the boss!
There's no pulse. Are you sure he had one before? He's not breathing. Do you know what this means? What does it mean? Three-day weekend, maybe more. Somebody's gonna have to give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. <gasps> Great. <laughs> Stop that. Well, I'll be. Who would have guessed it? I've been date-raped by Dilbert. No, no, you were drowning. I saved you. So you didn't slip me a Mickey and have your way with me? No. Well, that's a first. You're a hero now. How does it feel? Strangely good. Except for the smell of chili dogs that I may never forget. You saw it live. One man, acting against his own interests to help his fellow man. Nothing to gain but the knowledge that he helped another human being in some small way. What you have witnessed is nothing less than the complete rebirth of the spirit of giving. That's all from here. Yeah! There go. That was beautiful. Okay, pack it up. We got a cat stuck in a drain pipe across town. If I'm not mistaken, you just performed an act of charity without draining your bank account. Yeah, so? I believe I've made my point. I just wanted to hear you admit it. <laughs> that woman does not like to lose an argument. Shoo! All right, I'm not the organic matter you think I am, despite anything you hear from my employees. I'm gonna need another plaque! Yes, Ratbird. It's a dog bird day tradition. Everyone must wear the uncomfortable festive headgear. Except me. I think a fruit fly just went up my nostril. <coughs> Do you mind? I'm trying to watch the Pinecone Celebration Parade. Why don't you go watch it in person? Then I wouldn't get to hear the commentary. Look, Phil. It's another one of those big things. What are they called? I think that is called a float. And the name originated right here in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm, they got further last year. I forget. Is Dog Birthday a national holiday? Well, right now it's confined to this room, but I'm trying to take it national. I have a meeting with Congress tomorrow. How do you get a meeting with Congress? I said I was a lobbyist for the APWDBUD. The Association of People Who Drink Beer and Use Dynamite? Exactly. Congress is trying to squelch their freedom of speech. Freedom of speech? What exactly are people who drink beer and use dynamite trying to say? Uh, usually it's something like, I'm sorry about what happened to your mobile home, Bobby Joe. But it's not what they say, it's their right to say it. It is? Not really. It's just an excuse to talk to Congress so I can push my idea for National Dog Bird Day. We'll return to the Pinecone celebration after the body count. Now we join Babe Gets What's Coming to Him, already in progress. How does one celebrate Dog Bird Day, aside from wearing uncomfortable hats? Rat Bird? <clears throat> On Dog Bird Day, any child who has been good all year gets to shoplift for an hour. I think good behavior should be rewarded. The traditional Dog Bird Day feast is the bald eagle. I wanted something special. The traditional music of Dog Bird Day is a drum solo, played on your own skull with spoons. Do you think anyone will catch on to the fact that the entire Dog Bird Day holiday is designed for the sole purpose of being annoying? No one caught on when I invented National Secretary's Day. I wondered who came up with that.
broke my window. It was already like that. What are you talking about? I watched you do it. Well, it looks like we have one of those he said, she said situations. I also have it on videotape. So it's a he said, she said, grainy video situation. I'll have fingerprints and DNA in a second. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 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 You got quite a list of priors here, Dick. <laughs> now it's going to be awkward every time I see him in the hallway. Sign the Secretary's Day card for Carol and run it around. Have you ever wondered who came up with Secretary's Day? Who comes up with any of this garbage? Here, I've got a card for Jennifer's wedding, a congratulations card for Mike's baby, three birthdays, and a gender change operation card that says, get well, and then on the inside it says, hung. Cute. I signed those already. Here. Whoa, nice try, but I already signed it. You know the rules. You have to find the next person on the routing slip. All right, all right. Let the hunt begin. <laughs> I hate holidays. Hey, Dick, old buddy. Mm -hmm. It's your turn to sign this Secretary's Day card. <laughs> well, there you are, Dilbert. The meeting's just starting. Can we go now? Now, now, loud, Howard, I know we're all anxious to start the long weekend and get on with our vacation plans. What long weekend? There isn't a holiday for two weeks. I think that's what makes it long. Shut up, Dilbert. You're keeping me off the slopes. Be sure to ski near the trees. It's more fun that way. Can we go now? No, Howard. We have to start the meeting. Hey, a sports bra. Can I have that? So you're letting them play sports now. Oh. That's the same sound made by the mongoose before it swallows its prey, the rhinoceros. Sometimes it takes months for a mongoose to digest one of those beautiful creatures. It's quite a sight. You know, that's the best time to bag a rhino. They can't see you coming once they're inside the mongoose. A mongoose is the size of a cat. And they hibernate. Did you know that? Can we go now? No, not quite yet. Though, for the life of me, I'm not sure why. Does anyone know why I called this meeting? Anybody? I'm asking for volunteers. I have something to say. Oh. We have too many holidays. We have more holidays than days. And if we're not celebrating a holiday, we're either planning for the next one or we're recovering from the last one. We spend all our time giving cards to people we don't know, decorating cakes for people we don't care about, or buying presents for people we don't even like enough to have as friends outside of work. That reminds me. Thanks for the cufflinks. Oh, you're welcome. It seems that someone invents a new holiday every day. Holidays that don't make sense, for reasons that we don't understand. It's made all holidays meaningless. I've always loved Groundhog Day. Those little guys are so cute before you shoot them. Is there some point here? Yes. The reason we can't get any work done around here is because we don't have any non-holiday days. So you think we should work nights instead? Can we go now? I am totally preoccupied with my upcoming vacation. No point in fighting it. Meeting dis... <laughs> Boys, you ought to get out there. Live a little. If you need me, I'm reachable in Africa. Just call Africa and ask for me. I told them to expect your call. How come you didn't leave with the rest of them, I shook? On my salary, I can only afford to take vacations within the building itself. This year, I have saved up enough money to spend five days in the handicapped toilet of the fifth floor gentleman's bathroom. It is part of a restroom hostel program. So I guess it's just you and me at work tomorrow. 
No, just you. My vacation commences in ten minutes, but feel free to visit me. There is always room for guests. Should I bring anything? Potato salad would be nice. They move the holiday to a Monday, so it's a three-day holiday. Then they want to leave on Friday to take full advantage of it. But everyone's leaving on Friday, and everyone wants to beat the traffic, so they leave on Thursday. And if you're leaving on Thursday, why not Wednesday night? And you can't come back on Monday. That's still a holiday. And you can't come back on Tuesday, because everybody comes back on Tuesday. So you outsmart everybody, and you come back on Wednesday. So now you're leaving on Wednesday and coming back on Wednesday, and suddenly a one-day holiday is now a week. Well, I guess I'll call it a day. This Secretary's Day, show your assistant how valuable he is by ordering him to buy flowers for himself at Honey Bee Florist. And don't forget, tomorrow the entire city will be closed down for the Priapism Awareness Parade. <sighs> I'm being holidayed to death. I can't work. I can't listen to music. I can't use the highway. A regularly scheduled program. Dr. Lorna calls you a moron. Won't be aired today because Dr. Lorna went on holiday without telling anyone. In her place, we bring you the Senate subcommittee hearings on oh something. I uh, yield my time to the uh, distinguished senator from one of those states that uh, don't deserve roads and schools. Counsel, now, Mr. Delva, what I hear here, y'all found association of bad things and dynamite, do Now, is that that okay? I don't know if the rest of you heard it, but I think he just confessed to being a communist. I'm not a communist. I yield the senator's time to myself. You can't do that. It's against the rules. All in favor of changing the rules and just maybe getting a huge soft money campaign contribution in return? Say aye. That's better. Now I'd like you all to sign a bill making Dogbird Day a national holiday and canceling all other holidays. I thought you said you were a lobbyist for the Association of Beer Drinking Dynamite Users. Now that I support. I don't know about this holiday thing. It's a package deal. I added the dog birthday bill as a rider to the beer drinking and dynamite freedom bill. Does anyone have a match? Here you go, son. If this sort of thing ever gets outlawed, it'll be a slippery slope. Thanks. I make a motion that we vote on the national dog birthday bill. I fail to see how eliminating all the other holidays is good for Rhode Island. I, for one, would miss all the fireworks and the Easter bunnies and the New Year's Eve parties where I get drunk and depressed and do things I don't remember but always regret. I propose an amendment that would add all of the holiday traditions to Dogbert Day. Dogbert Day would have cheap, tacky gifts, dangerous fireworks, visits from unpleasant relatives, corny parades, bad barbecues, you name it. Mmm, that sounds like it would be complicated and incredibly frustrating for everyone. I'm all for it. You have my full support. Down with big government! All in favor, say aye. Aye, 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 who convinced Congress to cancel all holidays in favor of one holiday, Dogbert Day. We'll also hear from his critics. Dogbert, in your own words, what motivated you to create Dogbert Day? I think it stems from my religious belief that everyone exists for the sole purpose of entertaining me. Dogbert, you little devil! I hope you rot in hell! You put us all out of business! There's a perfect example. There ain't no pot of gold at the end of your rainbow! There's a pot of crap! You've ruined me! I've got a whole workshop full of starving reindeer! And I don't know where half of my elves have gone! Uh, no! Where am I going to get work now? I'm a specialist! Oh! No, oh, gross! Up yours, Cupid! Get that back! <clears throat> Lay off, cotton ass! Oh. Whoa! I haven't got a pot to pay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. 
It's always a bit tense around the dog birthday holiday. Dog birthdays always been my favorite holiday. Yeah, the virgin sacrifice, the senseless slaughter of endangered species. Oh, I remember, you know, when I was a child, the first time my dad gave me the jewel-encrusted dagger to plunge into the heart of the young virgin. Her name was June, I think. At one time, we had talked of marriage, but when she was dead, we rarely spoke of it anymore. It's funny how life works out. Uh, just a minor point of clarification. Dog Bird Day is a brand new holiday. It's never been celebrated before. Well, Christmas had its Scrooge, and now Dog Bird Day has its Dilbert. Gotta go. Gotta do my Dog Bird Day shopping. Ooh. You'll never guess what I got you. Never. Go ahead, guess. I don't know. I'll give you a hint. It's made of paper, and it tells a story. I don't know. A book? Well, I hope you're happy you've ruined your own surprise. And what would you like for Dogbert Day, little lady? You're not Dogbert! No, but I'm one of his many bitter and underpaid helpers. What? You tell me what you want, and I'll make sure you get it. Just give me your address and leave the door to your house unlocked tonight. Help! Help! Hey, no cutting in line! I'm not cutting in line. I was here. You were supposed to save my place. I don't know you. Oh, thanks. Do you mind if I stand behind you? Sure. Hey, no cutting in line. It's okay. He said I could stand behind him. He can't give permission to stand behind him. In fact, the case law is very ambiguous about people you let in front of you. Well, calm down, fella. Where is your dog bird spirit? Good question. Maybe I'll call the manager. <laughs> what manager? There's no manager. People always think there's a manager. Some magic manager who's gonna put things right. <laughs> well, there's not. Who? Hey! What? No cutting in line! I was here! How could you be here? I was here! <laughs> I don't think so. Was he here? I don't know. Well, it looks like it's your word against his. I am not letting this happen! Huh? You lost your place! I didn't! I- Back of the line, buddy. Hey, don't forget your gift! <laughs> I'm blind! I can't see! Are you getting out? You know, I think this is the best Dogbird Day Parade we've ever covered. Hey, just a little trivia. Did you know that those huge balloons are filled with balsa wood? Well, I thought it was helium. <laughs> well, aren't you a piece of wood? <laughs> <laughs> Alice, can you pick up the pace? I want people to see what I look like with my ears blown back. Mmm, that is excellent potato salad. I have never had better. It's the dill pickles. Do not leave here without giving me that recipe. Ashok, can I ask you a question? Ask away. I am on vacation and have all the time in the world. What I'm wondering is, how can you be so happy? 
Why wouldn't I be happy? Well, you're an intern who earns so little you have to take your vacation in the restroom. That is true. And no one gives you any respect whatsoever. Oh, you got me again. And your family is in India? You have to spend the dog bird day holiday without them. Not that they're missing much. It's the most meaningless holiday ever invented. What time is it, my friend? It's 4.45. That means it's almost 7 a.m. at my parents' home in India. They will be awakening soon. In a few minutes, as they have every day since I was born, they will wake up and think of me. I will be in their thoughts all day. Do you think of them all day, too? No, I am often caught up in the hustle and bustle of cubicle life. Sometimes I need a reminder. Sometimes I need a dog birthday. We're stuck now. Nothing to do but wait. Ramming speed. Well, it's not my fault. I'm just the drummer. It appears that Dogbert's float is attacking the smaller crippled float. And Dogbert has never looked finer. His cape and crown were designed by Alfonso. Ooh, I didn't think you'd have time to stop by today. I wouldn't forget my own mother on Dogbert Day. The Dogbert float has now crushed float from the PTA, the Joie de Vie French Club, and the Senior Citizen Republican Party. <laughs> but I think we'd all agree that Dogbert does look better with his ears blown back by the wind like that. You know, I hate all the stuff leading up to the holidays, but I do like the holidays themselves. It gets a little hectic and a little commercial on the surface. And underneath that, it's all hollow and meaningless, too. But underneath that, yes, underneath all the layers of hollowness and crassness and vulgarity and commercialism, underneath all that, there is a warmth and a spirit to the holiday season. You're right. It's so cool. You know, this is the best dog bird day ever. They say the trick is to marinate it overnight. That's what gives it the flavor. Did you marinate this? No, I just slapped it with a spatula till it stopped trying to get away. That's my own little trick. You won't see that in any fancy cookbook. <laughs> At least I think you won't. I haven't actually checked. Push the button and see how a giant meteor caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Hmm. Until this moment, I had trouble visualizing it. If aliens help build the pyramids, where are they now? Did they just leave? Ah, you know what they say. History is written by the winners. Let me out of this damn thing! Please, someone! Push the button to simulate the storm that brought Amelia Earhart's plane down. Ah, ah! No, not again! Oh, God! Make it stop! It looks very realistic. You don't think that's the real Amelia Earhart, do you? Yes, I think the museum found her on an island and put her in this exhibit. Same thing happened to King Kong. It's not that unusual. Come on. All right. No! Above you are the billions of stars that make up our universe, or so we used to think. We now know those lights are an armada of alien ships coming to destroy the Earth. Are there any questions? Yeah. What's a black hole? Well, my career would be one example. Any other questions? Better not ask him anything about Uranus. I think I've seen enough. Uh, there's only so much learning you can pack into one day.
Can I ask you a question? That's why I'm here. Why don't I ever see any other garbage men in this city? It's always you. I like to work alone. That's impossible. One garbage man cannot handle the whole city. I have shortcuts. Shortcuts? What possible shortcuts would let one person handle the whole... Well, maybe we'll pick this conversation up later. So, tell me more about the many, many ways in which the Stuntmaster 6000 can give me the workout of a lifetime. Keep rolling, keep rolling! Uh-huh. Four easy payments of money will order yours today. I'm losing consciousness. And yet I'm still aroused. <sighs> input, people, input. But remember, it's already in the can and we can't change it. If I may use a sports analogy, you really hit the goalpost on that one. Yes, I guess I did. I watched it only once, and already I want to date that model and suffer a head trauma. Why, thank you, Loud Howard. You humble me. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. What? That's as far as I ever get. Dilbert, you seem strangely silent. Shall I interpret that as a sign of deep respect and, dare I say, awe? Yes, you could interpret it that way. Well, I'm blushing now. But I can't help wondering, aren't we getting ahead of ourselves with the infomercial? We haven't even tested the new version of the Gruntmaster 6000. We're doing that now. We're sending it to a typical family for consumer field testing. That's impossible. There's only one version of the new Gruntmaster in existence, and it's sitting in my design lab. That thing's not ready for human testing. We haven't even lab tested the technology. Oh, calm down. We'll do that after. The Graviton generator alone is very sensitive. The Graviton generator alone is very sensitive. <laughs> Quit your whining, Missy. <laughs> I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? If anyone were foolish enough to build a Graviton generator, it would surely create a black hole that would annihilate the entire solar system. Well, I don't know what's the worst thing that could happen, but when you start distorting the fabric of space and time, stretching and enfolding upon itself... <laughs> nice try, but I don't think you bored him quite to death. Excellent, yeah. Dilbert. Nice going, Dilbert. Just great. That was good. Camp Town ladies, sing this song. Doo-dah, doo-dah. <laughs> what are you waiting for, ladies? Start singing. Carol said since he hit his head, he's been talking in his sleep. Come on, let's get out of here before he wakes up. Wait, let's just hear what he says next. Boom! <laughs> Cooked by explosion. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. Then you'll trip and fall on your ass in the mud. Is that smoke? Wally, what are you doing? Well, I wanted to make some popcorn, but somebody was using the microwave, and the printer has that heater thing in it that makes the paper warm. And... Oh! Oh! Cooked by explosion. Didn't the boss say that? Yeah, but he was just babbling. Or was he? What are you saying, that he predicted this would happen? I don't know, am I? Predicting the future is impossible. Is it? Yes, it violates causality. There is no way to know something will occur until it occurs. Or is there? If you don't stop asking rhetorical questions, I'm going to kill you. Are you? <laughs> On the other hand, it'd be a pretty big coincidence if the boss just happened to mention an explosion right before it happened. Alice, I think he's dead. <coughs> oh, man, I was in the tunnel. I neglected to mention the one glitch with the infomercial. We have to do it all over. I had to fire the babe. Why? Depends whose story you believe, mine or the truth. I feel like I've seen this popcorn before. This might be a case of deja food. I can't believe it. I can't believe they sent the Gruntmaster out to some defenseless family for testing. Do you realize the potential for disaster? Do you realize... The mute button only works on the TV. Yeah, it was worth a shot. We didn't even have the instruction manual written yet. That Graviton generator is a bit unpredictable. 
I only hope and pray they found a smart family to test that thing. Otherwise, we may be in grave trouble. Eat your possum, Dorian, or you ain't getting another one. That ain't no possum, Pa. That's a raccoon. It just looks like a raccoon because of the tire marks. I believe there's been some mistake. I forgive you all, and now I must bid you all adieu. You better hurry up and run him over again. Are you sassing me, youngin? I got half a mind. <laughs> you say you got half a mind? You mind your manners, Lucas, or the baby Jesus will come down here right now and beat the living tar out of y'all. Well, I ain't afraid of no baby Jesus. Bring him on. I'll bring him on, you little whippersnapper. He'll do you what for? He won't either. Quiet. Get the gun. Morons. Oh! I told you this was stop and this was keep going. Pardon me, boy, is that the Chattanooga choo-choo? I apologize. Pardon me, sir. Track 29, thank you very much. Dilbert, this is stupid. He's been talking nonsense for years, and no one thought he was psychic before. The only difference now is he has his eyes closed. Squidler's patch. Tejas. The darkness engulfs us. The hole, the hole in space, in time. The void, the abyss, from which no light escapes, from which no life escapes. Ha ha ha, he he he, little brown jug, oh, you're for me. Fiddle dee dum and fiddle dee dee, little brown jug, oh, you're for me. As long as it's filled with plenty of booze. Uh. Let's see what the Skeptic Society has to say about this. I assume this is Alice, the woman I met at the Skeptic Society dinner. How did you do that? That's incredible. <laughs> a magician never gives away his secret. Well, the reason I called... Uh, ...is because you want me to debunk your boss's alleged psychic claims. Wow. At least tell me how you did that one. Da -da 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 -da. Wish I could. All right, so when can you get here? Are you telling me that was a trick too? Yes, Alice. A good magician can duplicate any trick done by a so-called psychic or mentalist. For example, watch this. Huh? Ah! Don't, don't! Whoops. Lucas, if you break it, the baby Jesus will take you to hell and burn you like a pork chop for eternity. Oh! What the? I ain't never see Lordy! That don't look right. You've just been listening to a song. I was on the phone, so I have no idea what it was. Now the news. We take you to our sister station, K. That's all we could think of, Squidler's Patch, Texas. Oh my God! My worst fear has come true! You mean a pregnant spider crawled up your nose while you were sleeping and laid eggs in your head? Okay, my second worst fear. That you'll destroy the world with one of your inventions? Yes! Dogbert, we've got to go to Squidler's Patch immediately. <laughs> Of genie with the light yellow hair floating like a vapor in the soft summer air. Whoa, that's no vapor. Wally, don't tell me you've bought into this scam. It's my ultimate fantasy. Everyone is bald and poorly dressed, and if you hadn't noticed, no one is doing anything that looks like work. <sighs> it's utopia. Not for long. I brought a world-famous skeptic to debunk that fraud. Wally, meet the amazing Rudolph. Please, call me the... I don't do that. Forget the chit-chat, get to work. People, I am the amazing Rudolph, and I will show you how easily a skilled magician can reproduce any of these so-called psychic tricks. Oh. 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 
<laughs> Whoops. He's a witch! No, just a skilled illusionist. That is my point. If you're just an illusionist, tell us how you made the bird appear. Uh, a magician never reveals his tricks. I'm bound by the magician's code of ethics. Well, that's awfully convenient, isn't it? That sounds like something a witch would say. Kill the witch! <laughs> she was the daughter of Rosie O'Grady, a regular old-fashioned gal. <laughs> With one important distinction. Listen, he wants us to go to Texas and throw the witch in the black hole. Yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say that. I know, but I've always wanted to go to Texas. People, I can't give away my trade secrets, but perhaps I can give you a hint. Right, I'll tell you, I'll tell you everything. Nah, forget it. Now we'd rather throw you in the hole. Come on, ain't got all day. That's a good sign. I heard you can tell a place is okay if the truckers eat there. I guess, excuse me, just ain't gonna cut it. No. So, what can I get you fellers to swallow? Could we see a menu? This ain't Paris, boy. Okay. Give us two of whatever you've touched the least. Two soaps. Make that one. Hey, what's happening to my cup? Hey, what the? <laughs> hey, Eustace, what's making everything all stretchy? I ain't paying for this here gas. I'd say Squidler's patch is that away. I'll meet you at the black hole. I think we need some help. Professor Stephen Hawking, please. Ah, <sighs> sign here if you would. Thank you. Send up Professor Hawking straight away. Here he comes. Here you are, one Nobel Prize winning Lucasian professor of mathematics, expert on all astrophysical phenomena and black holes in particular. Hello, dogbird. Hey, Steve. Will there be anything else? How do I move him around? Oh, terribly sorry. Just use this. Answer any engineering or scientific questions about the black hole phenomenon. Has anyone famous ever had sexual relations near a black hole? Not that I know of. Then you don't deny that someone famous has had sexual relations near a black hole. Does anyone have a question about the science? There's nothing here. <laughs> Stephen Hawking. I read your book. Did you buy it or read it in the library? I think I borrowed it. You cheap bastard. Boys, please, can we focus on this black hole problem? There is no rush. As long as nothing disturbs the singularity, the hole will grow very slowly. <laughs> Come on, Wally. Dance with us. I don't hold hands. I'm only in it for fashion reasons. Come on! 
então. Wow, I've never felt so alive. Check that. Wally! Wally is gone! Don't thank me. Thank the black hole. Someone must go into the Singularity and stop whatever caused the black hole in the first place. It's a simple case of wormhole travel using a shortcut in space-time. Will you listen, you pick up a few things. But he was my friend! It's all my fault! I caused this to happen! I'm going in after him! Isn't anyone gonna stop me? Just let me get my breath. This is a big step. Lots of unknowns. Peril beyond belief. One small step for... Whoa! Gilbert? You seem strangely silent. Shall I interpret that as a sign of deep respect and, dare I say, awe? Yes, you could interpret it that way. Well, I'm blushing now. But I can't help wondering, aren't we getting ahead of ourselves with the infomercial? We haven't even tested the new version of the Gruntmaster 6000. We're doing that now. We're sending it to a typical family for consumer field testing. That's impossible. There's only one... It's in my... Would you excuse me? Yes? The door's locked? Oh, well, in that case... <sighs> shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky. I ain't had no loving since... Oh, January 30th, 1955? Huh. Man, the barber's daughter says... I see you bet my cat. Art, art, art. Hey, what's so funny? Nothing. Is it garbage day again? It's always garbage day somewhere. Professor Hawking, what are you doing here? Isn't this several thousand miles out of your way? Actually, it's a shortcut. A shortcut? My street is a shortcut to England? Yes. Will somebody explain to me what's going on? No. no. Hey, I've got a copy of your book in my trunk. Would you mind signing it? I already signed it. No, you didn't. It's locked in my trunk. I'll wager five dollars I already signed it. You're on. The joke's on him. He'll never be able to collect the five. You didn't really think you'd win a bet with a Nobel Prize winning Lucasian professor of mathematics. At least I didn't pay for his stupid book. Get out of bed. Resistance is futile. Wake up and assimilate the day. Get out of bed. Resistance is futile. Wake up and assimilate the day. I wonder if I could ever date a woman like Jerry Ryan. That, too, is futile. Okay, that's enough out of you. Do not touch me. Then how do I turn you off? Believe me, I am plenty turned off right now. Clock tease. Dogbert, why are you trying to kill the mailman? I'm just seeing how much he can carry. He's up to seven times his own weight. Neither rain, nor sleet, nor... Oh, the hell with that! Help! Help! Ah! 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 
I'd put an end to this cruel game, except we're saving a fortune on heating bills. And what makes these gift catalogs? Doesn't anything qualify as a gift if you give it to someone? I think they mean it's stuff you wouldn't in a million years buy for yourself. If you wouldn't buy it for yourself, then who needs someone to buy it for you? It's the thought that counts. On that same topic, it's your mother's birthday next week. Oh, no, not again. So soon? It seems like only a year ago I was giving her something she hated. Help! I can't swim! You're not going to drown. You're just covered with catalogs. Then uh, help! I can't read! Why don't you get your mom something from the mall? No! Oh, yes, I forgot. The unspeakable event from your youth. Don't you think it's time you got over that? I'm sure I can find the perfect present for Mom without leaving this couch. Today, we'll be featuring our special line of Moonconium gems. As black and sooty as real moon rocks, plus they're guaranteed for three months. Moonconium? <laughs> but first, the latest in high-tech surveillance equipment, straight from the tattered remains of the cash-desperate former KGB. Hand me the phone. My mother does not want spy gear for her birthday. It's not for her, it's to use on her. We'll find out exactly what she wants. It's wrong. But I would like an excuse to buy some spy equipment. Mm -hmm. This is insane. Wait. Target in motion. She's headed for the den. Yes, officer, there's two of them. A big one and a small one. I don't know what they're doing, but they've been out there for hours. I think they might be aiming some kind of ray at my house. I suppose they could be terrorists, now that you mention it. Or maybe our own people. I've written some strong letters to the Fed about monetary policy. All right, I think we've gathered enough intelligence. <laughs> stop and we'll shoot. Stop and we'll shoot? If you're going to shoot, why should we stop? Well, it would be a lot easier for us. The targets at the shooting range don't run. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That if I get a head start running, your body will shield me from the spray of bullets? Hold your fire. They're running. Ashok, could you clean that up? Ah, I am an engineering intern, not a coffee cleaner-upper. Alice, could you clean up the coffee spill? Our intern has suddenly discovered dignity. Sure. No problem. I don't mind. See? She doesn't have a... There you go. Why don't you just get your mom a gift certificate? No, I got her cash last year. She said it was insulting. But a gift certificate is completely different from cash. No, it's not. They're both pieces of paper you can exchange for goods and services. You're missing the point. Actually, a gift certificate is worse than cash because you can only use it in one place. And it expires. At least it shows some thought. It shows defective thought. You're trading perfectly good money for something that does the same thing, only not as well. Oh, one other thing, Dilbert. Shut up. Why do you not go to the Mall of Shopping? Yeah, Dilbert. Why don't you just get her something at the mall? Dilbert, you okay? <sighs> I'm totally fine. What are you accusing me of? Everyone's afraid of something. I don't want to talk about it. Well, back to work. You know, if we tried to get to the bottom of this, it could kill the whole morning. And yet it would look exactly like work to the casual observer. I'm in. Come on, Dilbert. It's me, your old pal. What's the point of an office friendship if you don't expose each other's weaknesses and then ridicule them? He's right, Dilbert. All most of us have to get us through the day is knowing that we're slightly better than somebody else. Fine. Fine. I'll tell you why I'm uncomfortable going to the mall. It all happened when I was five years old. My father took me to the mall for the first time. Daddy, I think those machines are calling me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. When we get home, I'll see if there's some sort of prescription drug to dull your spirit. But right now, we need to buy your mother a birthday gift. All you can eat, all you can eat. We'll see about that. Daddy? 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 Mm. 
What's the matter, little boy? Are you lost? Where are your parents? Did they leave you all alone? No, 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 no my father's over Where? What does he look like? He, he looks big and uh, uh, he's got a, a hat and he's... Daddy? 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 And I never saw my father again. <laughs> I will take you to the mall, Dilbert. I will help you find your father. And I will buy some batteries while I'm there. Wally, this is so unlike you. Why are you offering to help me? I'm out of batteries. It just came in the mail. It's the greatest breakthrough in market research since the... the other one. I was going to say other one. You boys from marketing have done it again. You know, you're like the three... guys from marketing who bring us things like this. Does it get HBO? According to the direction, you just strap it on some sucker's head and it records his excitement level when exposed to various shopping stimuli. We need to test it out on someone who shops. I.e. a shopper. Oh. This is so sexist. I am not the only person in this room who shops. Where'd you get the clothes you're wearing? I won these clothes in a contest. Yeah, I always pick up an extra suitcase at the airport luggage carousel. We're wearing his hand-me-downs. Sometimes I just find stuff after I talk. Ooh. Oh, just give me that stupid thing. Time to see how my stocks are doing. Hello, and welcome to Movie Phone. If you know the name of the movie you'd like to see, press 1. I. B. M. You have purchased tickets for Gruesome Carnage at the Big Mall Cineplex. If this purchase is correct, press 1. I. B. M. Thank you. Oh, the heck with this. This thing never works anyway. Maybe I'll duck out and catch a flick. Yeah. Mm. Gruesome Carnage is at the Big Mall Cineplex. I'm there. I can't believe I finally returned to the source of all my childhood angst. I feel like this is where I'll either conquer my demons or be destroyed by them. You got any gum? Ah! Is that so you don't have to confront your fear? This, my friend, is the latest in virtual reality parking technology. If there's a parking space in here, I'll find it. What's wrong with following someone with a bunch of packages to their car? Too risky. And... There! The perfect spot! Oh. Could somebody hit three, please? Uh, let's see. We're here. We are? Aren't we? I suppose. I could be wrong. If we're not here, then where are we? And if we are here, where is here? Isn't here there? I would think here is here. You would. Here's there. There's here. This isn't working. I told you we should buy the oxygen, not just the masks. I just can't bring myself to buy oxygen. This is us. Hey, that's the J-1 
GTA 400 model. That's the same one I have. I don't cut through a limb like it's a roll of cookie dough. Once, I was giving myself a haircut, and I darn near severed Will my... You shut up? Uh, Wally? I think we're about to be attacked. Well, don't worry about the natives. Natives? Yeah, they're the mall natives. They're a primitive society that live in the mall. Why do they live in the mall? Legend has it they came for the early morning power walks and just stayed. Huh? Bards and Nobles, Payless, Big Boy, Nordstrom Discount Spencer Gift. He says you look familiar. He does? Who do I look like? Uh, let's see, uh, Natural Wonders Gap Kids Walden Book? Uh, Candy, Penny, Chocolate, 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 Limited, Limited 2, Montgomery Ward, mm. Limited 2, Disney Store, Wetzel's Pretzels. They say there's a legend of a man who looks a lot like you living at the mall, not because he can't escape, but because he likes it here. Cineplex! Uh, uh, Cineplex! 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 Do they know where the Red Oyster is? Do they know how to get there? Mmm, Blockbuster Video ATM Restoration Hardware Lens Crafters Robinson Mayu? Spar! They fear the food court. Great. That's right, fear it. A $50,000 spending limit and just 7.4% interest. Ooh, that was a good one. I'll bet you can't fling that nun into the decorative fountain. I couldn't do that. Wow. It's a simple matter of aerodynamics. You'd never get the distance with the nun. But you see this next guy? With the huge pants? He'll glide like a flying squirrel. Yeah! Yo! This is totally bodacious! Ah! Hey! Do it again! Do it again! All right, one more. Why are people flying off the escalator? And what happened to Dogbert? And why do I think those questions are related? We must not concern ourselves with questions beyond our realm. Now we must focus on the task at hand. We're lost. I'm gonna ask directions. Excuse me. This is all we have, as far as you're concerned. I'm not here to shop. I need directions to the Red Oyster Restaurant. Go out that way, turn left. Yes, turn left. And don't come back. Thanks. Alice is excited by the prospect of purchasing those shoes. This can't be right. I'm an engineer. I wear shoes to protect my feet, not because they look pretty. Shut up. If we go down this hall, leap off the mezzanine onto the custom t-shirt cart, then we can drop a rope, swing into Victoria's Secret, and set up camp for the night. Daddy? Daddy! Alice! Wally! A shook! What's the matter with him? Drunk. Maybe he just seems drunk. Maybe he's got that disease. Alcoholism? Yeah, that's it. All you can eat. You? Yes, it's me. Dad, what are you doing here? Quite simply, I'm not done. But why continue? Why not just come home? I can't, son. I know it's hard to understand, but it's all you can eat. I don't understand. Why is that so important to you? Oh, in the beginning, it was just a challenge. Man against buffet. Human pitted against an ever-changing array of hot and cold dishes. But I can't give up now, son. What would you think of me then? Couldn't you call it a draw? 
I mean, you put up a heck of a fight. I thought about it, but it became more than a contest of wills. All you can eat isn't just a pricing plan. It's a philosophy, a way of life, a commitment. And we must honor our commitments. Remember, Dilbert, at the all-you-can-eat buffet, the only obstacle is yourself. Or an obstructed colon. Does that mean you won't leave? Only when I'm finished. It's my moral duty to fill my plate up again and again and again. If you don't fill yourself up, Dilbert, then you're empty. You see what I mean, son? I think so. Son, you will never find what you seek until you stop looking. For instance, for years they stopped serving jello mold until I stopped seeking it. Sure enough, there it was, in three new colors. Lime, raspberry, and mango. You follow me, Dilbert? Yes, Dad. Good. I must go to the buffet now, my son. Because you're hungry? It's like I'm talking to the broccoli. A uh, Goodbye, Dilbert. Tell your mother they have pie. But, goodbye, Dad. Okay, we can go. Finally. Where's the parking stub? We need to get it validated. I gave it to you. No, you didn't. I gave it to you. No way. Maybe you gave it to a shuck. Me? I never touched that ticket. Well, now we're going to have to pay the maximum charge. We? <laughs> it's your car, buddy. Can't we split it? Sure, you two can. I will take public transportation. I dare you. This is amazing. Who buys this kind of crap? That's it. Stupid lying hat. Let's see. Oh, the husband is the killer. Oh. Um. Oh, the president and the waitress are the same person. Oh, what? Oh. Ooh, this is a good one. It turns out the human scientist is actually working for the aliens. You'd no. never have guessed it. <laughs> Wait! Did you know that popcorn is mostly air? And it's marked up over 5,000%. You're paying for overpriced air. Wake up, people. There he is! Chase him down! Oh. <laughs> Come on, one more! Oh, all right. <laughs> I bet this is how Cirque du Soleil got started. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dogbert. This is very nice. There's only one like it. You always get me the nicest things, Dogbert. And Ratbert got me some unidentified thing with saliva on it. There's lots more where that came from. I'm sure there is, dear. Thank you. And last... But not least... Whatever. Dilbert got me a gift certificate. Oh, and look, it's got a little expiration date right there in the corner. You hate it, don't you? Oh, I love it, dear. You've traded your money for something that's just like money, but much more restricted. I kind of ran out of time. At the mall? You went to the mall? For me? Well, yeah. You're terrified of the mall. Yeah. Oh, and there's this. Oh, my. Well, at least he looks well fed. That he is. Did he say anything, Dilbert? Did he say anything? He said, there's pie. That 
trip was even more fascinating than last week. Could we go someplace else next time, Mom? Any place, please? There's so much more to see. We practically ran through the exhibit of giraffe neck babies. Those babies are so fake. Oh, they're real. That's not the sort of thing they'd lie about. That's exactly the sort of thing they'd lie about. Back me up on this, Dogbert. Oh, they're real. How did you get so distrustful? Well, I'm just guessing, but maybe it was because you lied to me about the Tooth Fairy, then you lied to me about the Easter Bunny, then you lied to me about Santa Claus, then you lied to me about the stork bringing babies. He knows about the stork. My fault. I let him watch the Nature Channel. He put two and two together. Now I don't believe anything I'm told unless there's proof. This paperweight is an exact replica of the largest fibroid tumor ever removed from a human uterus. That's ridiculous. How do they know it's the biggest one? There's an annual festival in Monterey. Get the Turbo Supreme. The commercial says it whitens your teeth while you drive. That's ridiculous. But I'm going to get the Turbo Supreme just to prove you wrong. You have to believe in some things without proof, Dilbert. Otherwise, life will appear meaningless. Maybe life is meaningless. Did you ever think of that? That one is getting whiter already. Dogbert, could you go inside and take care of our bill? Do you ever feel bloated after eating a big meal? Yes, I do. How'd you know that? I'm a surgeon. Your problem is caused by a huge fibroid tumor in your uterus. I can remove it if you have a health plan. I don't have a health plan. Can I pay you with gas? <sighs> All right. I'll need a plastic fork, a jar of salsa, and one thing I left in the car. I always remember the day that little surgeon saved my life. I'm telling you, it's dangerous to smoke cigarettes while you pump gas. My daddy always pumped gas this way, and he's still alive. Or at least it looks that way when the wind catches his rocking chair just right. You can open your eyes now. That didn't even hurt. I'll have to send this to the lab. Bad news, you're out of Turbo Supreme. Oh, my God. Gilbert, can you hear me? Can you do something for him, little surgeon? No, I used the last of the plastic forks when I operated on you. Whatever happens is on your conscience now. Wake up. Gilbert, wake up. Can you hear me? I must be dead. This is the tunnel I keep reading about. Behind this door are the answers to the ultimate questions. The afterlife. I was hoping for more. He's dead. Dilbert is dead. Are you sure? Yes. Hey! I don't know what kind of manners they have in the afterlife, funny boy, but on Earth, you watch your hands! Am I alive? <laughs> Actually, you're down a court. You're a miracle worker, little surgeon! You got that right. Dear, now that you're alive again, I need to ask you one very important question. Yes, Mom? Are my teeth any whiter? <laughs> and then I traveled back down the tunnel and woke up at the gas station. Are you telling me the afterlife is a stinking cubicle? I'm just telling you what I saw. How fast was the internet connection? I don't know if it had an internet connection. Well, this raises many troubling questions about the afterlife. First, how do you get your software upgraded? Uh, I guess it was just the one question. 
So, technically, you were dead. I think so. No more employee benefits for you, my dead friend. But I came back to life. Rules are rules. Can't change them. Try to look at the big picture. Happy birthday, Wally. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody eat cake and see if your morale goes up. Yeah, I'd love to stay, but secretaries have to watch the phones. Oh, sure, I can buy the cake and I can buy the gift, but the world would end if I let one phone call go to voicemail. Sometimes I call her my boss. That usually gets a laugh. Did anyone bring the birthday kit? Got it. Do we get any cake? Howard, whose birthday is it? Yours. Does anyone care that I was dead yesterday? Can you let someone else be in the spotlight for one second? We can't stop a birthday celebration every time you die. Uh, unwrap my present. I'm a little busy. I am honored. Oh, it is a round thing you throw through the air for no apparent reason. Ha! Uh, uh, huh. I'll take the picture. So there's no photographic evidence that I ever associated with any of you. Ha! Huh. Wally! Uh, Napkin! <laughs> Where have I seen this before? Before we get back to work, I want to remind everyone that all employees must be present at the launch site when our new deep space exploration rocket goes up in about five minutes. Five minutes? We can't get there in five minutes. No exceptions. Oh. Oh. Mm. Except you, Dilbert. I want you to visit our director of human resources, Mr. Ketbert. How would you feel about making this an unmanned probe? Uh, that's what it's supposed to be. There's still time to put a monkey in there. I hate monkeys. No. All we want on board is the capsule full of Earth artifacts in case the rocket is discovered by an alien civilization. A capsule, you say? The capsule is on board, isn't it? Would you excuse me for a moment? I need someone to volunteer for a suicide mission. Now, you'll need to run toward the launch site and fling this birthday kit through the open window of the rocket module. Then turn and be consumed by the launch flames while trying to get back. Oh, nature was calling me. Did I miss anything important? 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, If I can succeed 40, in this assignment, 30, I will be remembered and rewarded 12, for the rest of 12, my career. 10, uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, yes! 5, 4, Stupid bird. <laughs> Anyone know what kind that is? And remember, any friend who won't join your downline sales force is no friend of yours. Gullible sheep, I could tell them anything right now. If you believe you can get rich with multi-level marketing, slap yourself in the face real hard. Every time. I still can't believe it. So you admit you were dead? Yes, but very briefly. That's no reason to cancel my employee benefits. 
Well, at the risk of sounding sadistic and uncaring, our policy is to discontinue benefits at death. That only applies to people who stay dead. I was only dead for a minute. If I granted this exception, everyone would claim they were coming back to life later. Oh, do whatever you want. It doesn't make a difference. We all just die and end up in a cubicle anyway. Pray tell. What did you have in mind? Angels playing harps on a cloud? Well, no. Well, tell me, Dilbert. I'm curious. What is your vision of the afterlife? Well, actually... Uh, well... Oh, I'm sorry. Your time is up. <laughs> Literally. We have some nice parting gifts for you, Dilbert. Tell him what we have for him. Nothing! Hey, what? Huh? Oh, do you think this was all part of the presentation? He was supposed to give us the new vision statement. Maybe it's inside. We're supposed to interpret it. It looks like some sort of holy man. Look at the halo. It says... To Wally on it. This must be a picture of the Wally. And that must be his holy plastic grave. It's the Shroud of Wally. As you know, yesterday's rocket launch was a complete success. Uh, could you use the laser pointer? I'm not following you. We're pretty sure the problem was a defect somewhere in this area. I'll bet NASA is sorry they hired us to build that thing. Have they asked for their five billion dollars back yet? More good news on that front. We also have the contract to provide them with the digital images the rocket sends back. How is that good news? Well, as luck would have it, all stars look alike. Tiny dots of light. One looks just like the next. Does NASA know the rocket went down? No. And thanks to Dilbert, they never will. Me? Your job is to create digital pictures of uncharted star systems and deliver them to NASA every Tuesday. How am I going to do that? Try sending it as an attachment in email. It's very efficient. Don't make them all look the same. That's a dead giveaway. I am not going to lie for this company. It's morally indefensible. Why? Are you afraid you'll die and go to a cubicle? <laughs> it wasn't that funny, but I like to laugh. You've seen your afterlife, Dilbert. No penalties. No rewards. It's time you loosened up and started harming other people. That is so wrong, although I don't know why. Oh, and do something about these protesters. They call themselves the Wallyites. They have some gripe about space exploration. Wallyites. I like the name. Wally is, is the way. Wally is the way. Okay, settle down. Who can tell me why you're opposed to space exploration? It is heresy. The Book of Wally says nothing about going to the stars. There's a Book of Wally? That's it? That's the whole Book of Wally? It can be interpreted many ways. It doesn't say we should go to the stars. It says to Wally. When we die, we will spend eternity with Wally. I hate to break it to you, but your entire belief system is based on a myth. Do you have something better? You'll find us very flexible. I'm not fond of the outfits anyway. You can believe in science. That's real. You mean like your rocket ship? Yes. I mean, no, that's probably a very bad example. People only think the rocket exists. Hi, Gilbert. Hi, Nuts. Liar! Wally, what are you doing in the afterlife? Haven't you heard? After you die, you spend the rest of eternity with me. Oh! Whoa! 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 Ah! Ah! I know, I know, you died again. It's getting old. 
No, that looks wrong. How about here? That's just stupid. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. You live your whole life being nice, and you still die and go to that little cubicle in the sky. They say only the good die young. If it works the other way, too, I'm immortal. Speaking of evil, I could use your special talents tomorrow. Well, let me check my calendar. I'll see what else I have going. Evil, 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 not evil. Looks like I have an opening. I don't mean to seem skeptical, but these photos look like they were made on a personal computer with a paint program. This is where you come in. Surely you agree that in a vast universe with billions and billions of stars, it probably looks exactly like this from some angle. Well, yes, but we wanted actual pictures from the rocket. Isn't that a little narrow-minded? You know, this could be the answer to our funding problem. Can you give us evidence of life on other planets? Are you kidding? This picture is teeming with life. See this dot? It looks exactly like the other dot, but smudgier. What's that prove? I can't do it all for you. Ned, you're good at this. Well, that smudginess could only be caused by a distortion in the electromagnetic spectrum typically inhabited by ham radio signals. That's it? And, uh, further studies are needed? That'll get us funding for the space station. We'd like to bid on the space station project, too. No. No! Forget the bid. You got the job. Can you tell us anything about how you plan to build the space station? All right, fellas, I'd better not get into the technical stuff. My engineers say I tend to shoot from the hip. But I can tell you this. I'm pretty sure phase one involves building a giant stepladder. The rumor is that you got this $100 billion contract without even bidding. My question to you, sir, is do you think UFOs have visited us? No. But they're on the way. Have you seen this picture yet? After I talked to the Wallyites, the next time I died, I saw their version of the afterlife. An eternity with Wally. What I want to know is, was I really dead or just hallucinating? Why don't you ask that man we saw on TV, the one who can talk to the spirit world? He has an 800 number. I don't believe in that stuff. But you believe we spend eternity in a cubicle with Wally? <sighs> What's his number? Hello. Each call costs $3 per minute. I was expecting your call. You were? You want answers, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you know someone who died in the last 50 years named John or Jim or Bill or Tom? Yes. I thought so. He has a message for you from the other side. Which one? John or Jim or Bill or Tom? He says you like to do things with your hands, typing or cooking or gardening. Is that correct? I type on the computer. I have to admit, he's good. He says you get great pleasure from this typing or cooking or gardening. I do, but I wanted to ask... He says you enjoy music and food, is that right? Forget about that. I want to know if the afterlife is nothing but a cubicle. He says to be careful with your back, or vision, or lungs, or weight. I feel fine. All I want to know is... So, what are you wearing? I've never been a supreme being before, but I'm willing to give it a try. Your humility inspires us. Please teach us everything you know. Maybe you could ask me specific questions. What is your favorite cheese? Uh, you know, the one with the holes in it. Swiss! Yes. Right. Not that one. Oh. Can we wear casual clothes on Fridays? No, it leads to promiscuity. <laughs> and no humming to yourself when you're alone. I hate that. <laughs> My faith is being tested. And if you order fish at the restaurant and it comes with the head still on it, try covering it with mashed potatoes. Um. I wonder if it was something I said. Is the answer out there or in here? Is everything simply a manifestation of consciousness? Or is there another actual level of existence? A dimension parallel to or beyond the one we live in now. It's all part of the big illusion that we perpetuate on ourselves and in turn is perpetuated upon us, like the rocket ship or the Shroud of Wally. When we believe, we engage the illusion. 
When we stop believing, we shatter the illusion and shatter ourselves in the process, because we are part of it. Maybe you're right. Maybe the mistake is in making distinctions. Out there, in here, life, death, it's all the same illusion. Exactly. Ready? Ready. Ready. Welcome to Painting with Rusty Shanks. Last week I taught you how to paint shrubbery using your own head as a brush. That was a good show. Today we'll take a ride into the wild world of modern abstract art. Yeah, just paint, Rusty. Don't talk. Some people think abstract art can't be taught. I think that. Let's say you wanted to express an emotion such as, oh, a fear of caterpillars. What color would you choose? Orange. Green. Purple. That's right. It's our friend Taupe. Taupe. Taupe! How do you make Taupe? Rusty, you're killing me. And what shape works best with Taupe? Circle. Triangle. Line. If you said octagon, you're right. We'll represent the octagon with a dot, and the color Taupe will be represented by the color orange. It's levels upon levels. I don't get art. Who decided that a painting of a bowl of fruit is art? How long can you look at the same bowl of fruit anyway? At least with the actual fruit itself, you can rearrange the pieces once in a while. You can eat it if you're hungry. You can watch it rot. But if all you have is a painting of fruit, your options are limited. So you think the whole art scene is just one big scam to make money? I'm beginning to wonder. I'd better look into it. You do that and report back. Who are you? Who let you in here? But what do you think you're doing? We wish to interrupt this program in order to bring you this special bulletin. Art teacher Rusty Shanks has disappeared. No, I haven't. I'm right here. This, coupled with his refusal to repay certain outstanding loans, has forced the cancellation of the Painting with Rusty show. I, I, I can get the money. No, I... no. We now return to Painting Without Rusty Shanks, already in progress. They say you have to suffer for your art. I wonder if that's what they meant. It's critical that we lead the effort to integrate our strategy process and behavior-related activities to facilitate our goal of sustained, predictable, and high-margin profitability. And we'll need to revitalize our efforts toward continuous quality improvement. Wally, I'm trying to communicate here. It sounds like the rambling and babbling of a nincompoop, a buffoon staggering down the street in a stupor. Good point, Ashok. Yes, it was communication. And unless that newspaper has an idea for increasing our profits, you'd better put it down and listen to me. This thing is full of money-making ideas. Here's a guy who sued a big company and made $25 million. He sued us. The product directions clearly stated do not use as waffle maker and bicycle seat at the same time. Here's a story about a painting that sold for $75 million, and the buyer's leaving it in the museum. So he paid $75 million and got nothing in return. Oh, hold the wire. Now we're onto something. No, we're not. Good work, Wally. <sighs> if only the others could work at my level. We'll need some sort of competitive advantage if we're going to dominate the art industry. We will also need art. Dilbert would be good at creating art. No, I wouldn't. Too late. The seed is planted. It's true that Dilbert is no Wally. Everyone's trying to warm themselves in my light. But I don't know anything about art. Uh-uh. Save it for your performance review. But we're a technology company, not an art company. Engineers don't understand art. We know what we like. Don't we? How hard could it be? Art has rules just like anything else. If you can teach a computer to play chess, you can teach a computer to make a painting. Thank you for converting an impossible assignment into something that will look like a personal failing on my part. Nicely done. Not a day goes by when I do not learn something. Well, I know what I like. You're right. I don't. I'd better learn something about art pretty quickly. Why don't you come with me tonight to an art appreciation class at the museum? 
It is hosted by esteemed art expert, Sister Wanda Beaver. What do nuns know about art? You are laboring under a false stereotype of nuns. For your information, they cannot fly under their own power, and the short ones are rarely mistaken for penguins. I'll try to be more open-minded. In this sweeping expression by Bhutan Nogan, the artist uses color to convey his message of being trapped in a career that was a huge mistake. Forced to wear drab clothing, forbidden to explore his intense, smoldering urges. In this floral treatment, we can feel the artist's desire to spring colorfully from his container, leaving behind his career that was a huge, huge mistake. Hmm. I'm also seeing some smoldering urges from the carnation. You are the quick learner, Mr. Dogbert. The rendering is indeed packed with erotic imagery. What imagery? Oh, it's there. You can't spell carnation without carnal. Actually, you can't spell carnation with carnal. That would be carnalshin. But you can't spell it without car. And cars have back seats, do they not? Not in the 17th century when that was painted. Ow! I still don't know what makes one piece of art better than another. Hmm. Maybe you should ask people what they like, and then put it all in one painting. Would that work? I was right about the carnation. When you're shopping for a painting for the house, what qualities are you looking for? Well, I like looking at pictures that have shootable animals. Deer is good. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a duck. Nature themes. If the price is the same, I like bigger ones. Big ones. Well, I like pictures of things you can eat. You should never buy paintings on an empty stomach. I like paintings with a lot of blue. That's my favorite color. Yeah, oh, yeah, there, blue, I like blue, blue. Is, blue is yeah, a big, blue. big blue one. Yes. Yeah, I like that. How many of you would buy a painting of a blue duck? How big is it? It's big. I could put a frame around that shirt and sell it in an art gallery. No one wants a stained shirt on their wall. They'll want it if I tell them they want it. You can't tell people what they like. Oh, really? Rat bird? I'm going to hang dirty laundry on the walls. Do you want some for your room? Why would I want that? See? I'm not going to use Dilbert's laundry. I'm going to buy it in an art gallery. It's framed, expensive, dirty laundry. Can you get me a sock for over my desk? That's not fair. How hard is it to brainwash Rat Bert? Is that an insult? No, it's a compliment. Thank you. My lucky shirt. You have always been good to me. Excuse me, do you own this establishment? Are you a buyer or just a looky-loo? I am a third category. Outraged victim of your laundromat. Yeah, we get a lot of that. Sounds like you need some art to lighten you up. How about this piece? It's new. Oh, oh my goodness! Those are my underpanties! It's blue? It's a duck? In theory? It's art. Print. Hey, what's this? Nice color. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a duck. You like it? I'm gonna hang this on my cubicle wall. Is that a duck? That is so cute. Where did you buy that? I didn't buy it. I'm stealing it from Dilbert. Dilbert made this? According to my research, it's art. My God. What's that feeling in my stomach? Is that a 
growing sense of respect for Dilbert? Uh. No, I just drank a soda too fast. But I do like the duck. I like how it's right in the middle. You know, sometimes you see a painting of a barn and it's off in one corner. It's magnificent. I don't know whether to eat it or shoot it. Can you make it bigger? I can make it any size you want. Any size? Whoa, Nelly, looks like we just hit pay duck. Thanks to the artistic work of Dilbert, in the two weeks since we introduced the Blue Duck artwork, we have captured 99% of the art market. I didn't know we were competing against museums. Competition? It's more like a monopoly. Apparently, the verdict is in. No one wants to look at crap when they can look at... The Blue Duck. Our only remaining threat is from some joint in France called the Louvre. Sometimes pronounced Louvre. They're holding on by a thread. Operating a furniture reupholstering business out of the gift shop. I didn't mean to destroy the art world. He didn't mean to destroy the art world. Get him. <laughs> well, you did. And I, for one, salute you. I have a bad feeling about this blue duck phenomenon. It might be a little too successful. Culture needs diversity. Why don't you put on a beret and starve? Dilbert, the marketplace makes no judgment. The consumer has spoken. Everyone loves that duck. But if it's everywhere, won't that rob it of its uniqueness? Do we have to shove it down the public's throat at every opportunity? I really think that we're going to dilute its meaning by overexposure. Uh oh it's meaning? Hey, right here. Sir. I can't believe I'm seeing you in person. You're the most famous artist in the world. I'm not an artist. I'm an engineer. Oh. Oh, boo. Okay. I'm an artist. Oh, I can't believe I'm on a date with the famous creator of Le Canard de Bleu. The what? The Blue Duck. Oh, yes. I hope my fame isn't the only reason you like me. Oh, don't get me wrong, Dilbert. I don't like you personally. I'm just into the whole scene. What? It's nothing personal. How could that not be personal? You just said you don't like me. I don't like you, the person, but I love you, the famous artist. I'm beginning to finally understand art. Our boss wants to talk to you. Could we get two iced teas? You've been killing the art racket. Our boss don't like that. I'd like a lemon wedge in mine. Excuse me, I don't believe we ordered this. That's ours. Oh, the new art piece I ordered for the conference room. Can somebody sign for this? I'll take it. There you go. That's your name? What of it? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'll see you. <sighs> oh, thank you. I was having no small difficulty breathing. A shuck? Hello. Don't talk to the art. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, our nearly total domination of all worldwide markets. How about the Amish? Are they coming around? They put up a fight, but we wore them down. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to worship this blue duck. And you know what else? We need a phone. Got him, boss. Here's the guy who's been ruining our business. Leave us. Where am I? I am Leonardo da Vinci, 
head of the five families of art. I have two problems with that answer. One, it's not the answer to where. And two, I'm pretty sure you died 500 years ago. <laughs> I invented the helicopter, the tank, and the parachute in the 1400s. How hard do you think it was for me to invent the Fountain of Youth? I see your point. You know, you were always a great hero of mine. Is that so? Oh, yes. I've tried to model my career after yours. Engineer, inventor, artist. No, 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 no. Those were all sidelines. I am, at heart, a businessman. Come here. 400s of years, the five families have run the organized art rackets. The Renaissance boys, the Impressionists, the Abstracts, the Surrealists, and the Postmodernists. It all makes sense now. You're the ones who decide which paintings are worth $50 million and which ones are put on decorative plates. Until you came along with your vapid blue duck. You put a crimp in our business. Unfortunately, it would be imprudent for us to allow that situation to continue. It's too late to stop it now. The blue duck is everywhere. There is only one thing that can kill great art. The taint of uncoolness. <laughs> Watch out. Big load. <laughs> That'll clean right up with a little salsa water. Pardon me. Uh, you have huge feet for a woman. Here we go. Whoa, we got a babe shot on camera, too. Okay, go to camera, too. Did you see that? Blue ducks roll. Want to follow me. We don't know why, but sales of the Blue Duck product line have taken a plunge. Art can be so unpredictable. For some reason, the Blue Duck is no longer cool. Traditional paintings are selling for millions of dollars again. It's a crime. It's as if the art world were organized. So, Dilbert, what do you have for us next? Next? I hadn't really given it much thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Pay up! So, anyway, the marketing department has come up with a spin-off of the blue duck concept that they call the light blue duck. But we already know the public doesn't want that. You're confusing the light blue duck with the regular blue duck. Not to worry, it's a common mistake. But don't you see, that's the point. They're the same thing. Dilbert, the key to marketing is doing whatever you did before, even when you know it won't work. That way, no one tries to second-guess you. But is that the key to art? Is it just a popularity contest? Or is it the transmission of one soul's innermost essence to another? Art is meant to be an unconstrained expression of the inexpressible. It's our way of telling each other things we feel, but are unable to put into words. It is, ultimately, the only real way of sharing who we really are with the rest of the world. Sorry, I lost you after but. You've got some nerve talking to us that way. Is that Dilbert speaking or his muse? What's the difference? If it's you, I can belittle and ridicule you. If it's your muse, I'll have to look it up and see what it actually means. It's my muse. Damn! <laughs> I guess I just don't get it. It's all about branding. 
Do people really know good from bad? Of course not. But they know Picasso's signature. If he was around today, he'd be making underwear too. But is that art? Isn't art supposed to be something that satisfies some yearning for truth and beauty? Nah, eh, not anymore. Once a soup can became art, all the rules went out the window. It's not the art, it's the logo. Like these socks. Well, I guess somehow that's a disappointment to me. I hope the mystery of art would reveal itself. Perhaps it will. Those t-shirts reveal the mystery of truth and beauty themselves. As undergarments for our soul, they express our deep longing for tactile stimulation, hidden beneath our starched collars and coarse fabrics. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for participating in our company's mandatory blood drive. You really are the lifeblood of this company. <laughs> oh. Alice, you are like the fresh dew on a morning flower. My heart yearns for you, your soft skin. Your triangle hair, your lips like two tiny sausages stacked upon each other. Death Row is a lonely place, my precious. The only things to occupy the empty hours are thoughts of you and the contraband I have hidden in my colon. My dying wish, Alice, is for your hand in marriage. That is so romantic. All my love, Vince. P.S. Please respond before next Friday at noon. What if I don't have any extra blood? Maybe I only have exactly enough. Everyone has extra blood. It doesn't matter anyway. You'll never get past the screening process. I will now read a list of disqualifying conditions. Please leave the auditorium if any of the following apply to you. Are you now, or have you ever been, Wally? Yes, first one out. Repeat. The disconnects between gross margin and leverage will be harnessed for commercial ventures. The discotheques between gross margarine and beverages will be harmless to your dentures. Very good. <laughs> now close your eyes and visualize each word as you say it. Imagine the word vision. Try to see it in your mind. Is it black? Have you gotten any tattoos in the last six months? Have you had intimate physical relations with anyone in the past ten years? Not really, but I'm trying to build a reputation. With your eyes still closed, Imagine a picture that corresponds with the phrase, a commitment to synergy. I see it! It's like some sort of two-headed woodchuck. Or is it a beaver? Can you get a clean shot at his tires? I think I can hit the spare tire in the back. Wait, he stopped. Infinity bottles of beer on the wall, infinity bottles of beer. If one of those bottles should happen to fall, infinity bottles of beer on the wall. Come on, I can't take another four hours of this. Go, go, go! If one of those bottles Will you just shut up? You have infinite beer on the wall, okay? It will never be fewer! Now put your hands out to your sides and wave them slowly. Can you imagine if something were to happen to this bus helmet? The sciences of physics, chemistry, mathematics, and medicine are all wiped out in a stroke. And economics. Economics is not a science and never will be. He's waving us on, finally. Ooh. All units, he's heading for a large business campus. Prepare to intercept. Are you telling me you haven't done anything on this list? I've been very busy. All right, roll up your sleeve.
Whoa! Isn't that the fifth bag? We got a quota. Can I have a cookie? No. I ate them all while you were bleeding. <coughs> all right, sharpshooters. If you get a clear shot, take it. Uh, there's people in the way. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I've got to get me a new swear word. The vehicle had no registration or plates, so we're hoping someone saw him. Why would a vehicle need registration and plates? I'm just a sketch artist. Oh, a specialist. Well, I didn't exactly see the guy, but from what I heard on the radio, I've got a pretty good idea of what he looks like. Can you describe him for me? I could, but I'm extremely busy. Wally! I can't work too hard. I almost gave blood today. I want you to describe to these officers the man I heard about on the radio this morning. What? Be as specific as you can. Don't leave out anything. All right, I'll tell him everything you know. Hmm. Hmm. <gasps> These remind me of water balloons, except filled with blood. Put that down. It looks like you have some extras. All right, one bag, but let me show you how to do it. This psycho must have left a blood trail. Now, I want you to comb every inch of this area for the killer's DNA. Maybe we'll get lucky. And don't let this crime scene get contaminated. Are you shooting yourself? Well, thank you. <laughs> Driving without blood is surprisingly difficult. Sir, how many drinks have you had this evening? Nothing. I couldn't even get a cookie. Then a lady took all of my blood. Okay, buddy. Count backward from 100 using only prime numbers. 97, 89, 83, 79, 73, 71. Okay, no one likes so wise ass. Get out of the car. Attention all units, attention all units. Positive DNA match has been made on the Nobel Prize slaughter. The suspect is Caucasian, wearing glasses, in laughably bad shape, and answers to the name Dilbert. Hey, that's me. <laughs> So with the Nobel Prize killer safely behind bars, looking at a swift execution, once the 40 to 75 years of appeals is over and everyone associated with the case long dead, strange men with incomprehensible theories that can't be proven can once again breathe a sigh of relief. Mr. and Mrs. Fennerman? Hi, I'm Alice. I'm engaged to your son, Vince. It is so nice to meet you, darling. Here, do you need a sign? That's okay, I have my own. I don't understand. Aren't you two getting married? Yes. We're going to spend the rest of our lives together. Mark my words. This marriage will never last. Wow. This cell is huge. Sorry about the internet connection. There's an internet connection? Your cable modem's in the shop. We're running you through the T1 until it gets back. What's this? Fan mail. Probably a few marriage proposals. For me? Marriage proposals? You're in for murder, right? That's an aphrodisiac for the fairer sex. You know, I'm actually innocent. No, I wouldn't let that slip out. Excuse me, how did you decide that five cigarettes was worth one candy bar? Well, I was hungry. First of all, you should never barter on an empty stomach. Second, 
This is much too inefficient. So, everything used for barter could be valued at a constant rate relative to everything else. For instance, a shampoo bottle of homemade gin is equal to a clean toothbrush, which is also equivalent to an 8-ounce bar of chocolate or five cigarettes. Any questions? Okay. One might wonder what happens when a scarcity in a perishable commodity, say chocolate, huh? Hmm? Huh? causes a relative glut of another more durable item, such as erotic literature. Anyone? Yes. We carve a potato into the shape of a gun and cover it with shoe polish? You could do that. Or wait for the market to automatically adjust to take into account the commodity imbalance, thus moving the exchange rate to a new point of stability. You can do all that without a potato? Hey. How about 8NGY432? Well, let me check. Boys, boys, you're sitting on a gold mine here. Do you realize the license plate business is a growth industry and a legal monopoly? By automating your order flow and assembly process, you'll increase productivity and reduce costs. The guy who had this job before didn't train me. Dead man walking! Down the aisle. We are gathered here today to join two souls in holy matrimony and to damn one of them to eternal hellfire. I understand that you two have written your own vows. Vince, who would have thought ten years ago that a grisly mass murderer would lead to such a blissful union? You are my heart. You are my soul. You make living worthwhile. I look forward to spending the next 45 seconds as your loving wife. Vince. How did it do it? Oh, for the love of God! Please don't kill me! <laughs> ah! Uh, right. Okay. By the authority vested in me by the state correctional facility, I pronounce you man and wife. You may now insert the gag. You're making a big mistake! Oh, I did it! I did it! <laughs> It is an incredible book, Mr. Dogbert. Thanks. It took me all morning to write it. It's the ending that bothers me. It would be better if this Dilbert fellow gets set free at the last minute instead of flaming like a marshmallow. How much better would it be? About three million dollars in movie rights? I'll talk to the Supreme Court. Oh, there are just no good convicts out there. And that one's cute. Cute, yes, but he's got a damn good appeal pending. I read the brief. No, you can't tell anything from a picture anyway. In my high school yearbook, I didn't even look attractive. Maybe we should go visit Dilbert. Check the place out. That sounds like it involves leaving work. I'll drive. I couldn't help overhearing you while I was eavesdropping. Do you mind if I go with you to stare at the miserable miscreant? Uh, there's no room in my car. It's filled with oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's not good. I'll drive my own car. Can you give me directions? Yes. Yes, I can. Ooh. Ooh. Who's that? He's an axe murderer. Ooh, the outdoor type. Let me talk to Wally. Put in a good word for me in C Block. Hey, Dilbert, looking good. All that hard manual labor is paying off. Actually, there is no hard labor. I have all day to think, to exercise, and to work on my own projects. I barely have to do anything if I don't want to. But it's lonely, right? Hardly. Wally, this week alone, I've received over a hundred marriage proposals. Boy, is my value system all screwed up. Uh, oh. There it is, bars and all. The big house. Okay, next we'll hear from Tino in Shiv Manufacturing. Thank you. I'm pleased to report that uh, since we instituted the battle recycling program, 
the number of pointy objects available to the prison population has tripled. Good work. Um, Bobby G, you're up. I just prepared this memo on the new production quotas. As you can see, all the inmates are participating in the prison 401k. Considering the average inmate salary is 18 cents a day, at maturity, this amounts to a retirement package of approximately $34. Well, let's see if we can't supplement that with some of the souvenir sales. All right. Is there any new business? I think we should probably discuss the status of the escape plan and the progress of the tunnel. All right. Using two shifts round the clock and a teaspoon, we have dug approximately three feet. At this rate of excavation, we estimate the tunnel will be completed sometime in the year 2125. And when is the escape currently scheduled? Tuesday. Okay. I've done some calculations, along with a preliminary geological survey, and... Tony? Shirt. The bearing wall is made of basalt. Basalt is among the most dense of igneous rocks. Now, if we drop down approximately 10 meters, the composition of the bordering wall becomes limestone, a very spoon-friendly material. Now, I've drawn up plans for an electric spoon, but it's going to cost 4 million candy bars. Uh, no problem. Did you know that I'm the only one in my bridge club with a son on death row? I'm sorry I'm such a disappointment to you, Mom. Disappointment? Everyone asks about you. You're on the news. I used to get blank stares when I told people you were an engineer. But murderer? That gets people's respect. You could be a little disappointed. Let's see. Bank robbery, 10 to 15 years. Kidnapping, ooh, 20 to life. Not too shabby. Frotourism, the crime of rubbing up against people in crowded public places. When did they make that illegal? Dogbert, always a pleasure. Why don't you come to the meetings anymore? I'm not actually a member of the Supreme Court. Really? Now I feel bad about letting you write all those decisions. I didn't mind. What brings you in today? I want you to overturn the conviction of a guilty murderer named Dilbert. If you don't mind, I'll just write up your decision and sign all your names to it. Okay, but make me sound indignant. And throw something in there about fairness. Do you want a copy? I don't see when I'd ever read it. Today, my friends, marks the dawning of a new era. Today we prove that with vigor, discipline, and a little... Yeah! I guess it works. What's your name? Good Lord, man. What's happened to you in there? Okay, time to go, Dilbert. But they're coming back, aren't they? Probably. The recidivism rate is very high. Did they ever find the real killer? Funny thing, right after I got you off, some lunatic confessed to the crime. You sure is good at not being able to hammer up them rocks at all. I wasn't really expecting this kind of an environment. Ooh, are, are those the conjugal visit trailers? We's a team, you and me. Got us a quote. If and we ain't meet her by sundown, we ain't getting no dinner. So, you uh, get a lot of marriage proposals since you've been here? You hear me up, boy? I ain't missing my shower day. A count of your baby butt hands can't swing a pick. Grab up that there pick and bring her down. No, that ain't gonna do her. Here, let me show you. Ah. <clears throat> Now you're getting it. I think my shoulders are dislocating. That's enough out of you. By the power vested in me by the state correctional facility, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may now insert the gag. <laughs> Yellow. It's the governor. 
The real killer confessed. You've been pardoned. Now we can start a life together, Alice. It's like a miracle. You're innocent? I'm having serious second thoughts. The governor wants to speak to you. Tell him to hold for one minute. Oh, which one is the hold button? I didn't know you ate here. I don't. I just come here to yell at the employees. Your milkshake, sir. That'll be a dollar eighty-nine. Your sign says a dollar ninety-eight. What kind of a rip-off joint is this? Oh, I am so sorry. You're right. Now I don't even want it. You can keep your milkshake. Have a nice day. <laughs> See you back at the office. Oh, oh, oh. Have a nice day. Would you like a free doopy with that? I don't know what a doopy is, but if it's free, I'll take one. I'm sorry. We don't have any. <laughs> I'm not gonna hit you. You can if you want. Everyone does. What exactly is a doopy, anyway? I have no idea, sir, but they're very popular. Oh, they're the cutest things, although they don't even exist yet. I'm trying to collect the whole set. They don't exist? Why are you asking me if I want something that doesn't even exist? That's the idea. No, I don't know, sir. I just work here. Oh, thank you. Have a nice day. Ratbert, can you tell me why strange babies are in my kitchen? No, I'm operating on a need-to-know basis. Spoons loaded. Commence dining. It's hard to get mad. They're so cute. That's what I've been telling you. Use your cuteness. It is your most powerful weapon. Do you think you should be teaching babies this sort of thing? No, you can't start too early. I've been working with most of these kids since they were in the womb. What do their parents think of this? No, they think they're at the park. The nannies are on the payroll. Don't you think they have a right to know? Why, because they're older? It's so arbitrary. Now, if you'll excuse me. Next week, I'll teach you how to kick the seat in front of you for the entire length of the movie. Then I have a special clinic on making all the candy in the jar yours via the miracle of slobbering. I invited Anne from marketing to tell us a little about our newest advertising campaign. Uh, uh, uh. Uh-oh. Sneeze coming! Uh, uh. Fire in the hole! I think everyone might be overreacting. Gesundheit. Watch me get blamed for that! Maybe I'll just tell you about the marketing campaign myself. I've got a little surprise for you. Uh-oh. I don't like surprises. Nothing good can come from this. My desire for spontaneity has not been ground into dust yet. I still like a surprise. Is it a ceramic porpoise or possibly some sort of tossed salad in a blanket? Come on, those aren't even good guesses. Oh, please show us and make my tingling stop. Look, it's a doopy. Isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? <laughs> well, isn't it? It's your hand. That's because the freaking doopy doesn't exist. Yet, our marketing department has been advertising it for months. You mean our company is supposed to be making the doopy? We're not even a toy company. Why didn't someone in marketing come to us sooner? Dilbert, you're in charge of building the doopy. Just make it cute. Very, very cute. There are more important things than cuteness, you know. Uh, uh, uh. Hold it. There's still time to invite someone else from marketing. Oh my 
my word! <sighs> Dilbert, cut the cord. Me? I don't think so. You really think I should? Maybe... Just cut the cord! Congratulations, it's a fad. Remember, kids, if your parents feel guilty, they are guilty. Hey, look what I brought home. It's a... <laughs> no, I'm not the cutest one in the family anymore. Oh, God. What's wrong? Must be a loose connection. Now, come on. I can't do this all night. This is not the way you've been programmed. I'm sure you're fine. This is just a minor malfunction. Now, stop it. Stop it. I'm sorry I'm late. The Doopy kept me up again last night. It is very innovative to blame a toy for your shortcomings. Surely this method will spread like wildfire. I'm not really lazy. I blame that damn Doopy. Sometimes the Doopy makes my hair look too big. I'm not loud! I'm not making this up. The Doopy's malfunctioning at night and I don't know why. Sounds familiar. Uh, I remember when I'd be trying to sleep and the little tykes would be crying all night in the next room. <laughs> How did you stop them? Didn't have to. Turns out I was in the wrong house. My Justin shows absolutely no interest in the Doopy. I'm with him. I don't know what people see in these things. Justin only watches educational television. Pfft, yeah, and I don't eat sugar right from the box when you're not looking. Give me the keys. I'll pull the car around. I'll name you Billy and Eric. And I think you look like a Sebastian. Hey, Alice, have you seen the sales report? The doopies are a huge sensation. It just proves people will buy anything. What was that? I didn't hear you, doopies. Would you excuse me? I have work to do. Okay. She's coming this way. You might as well go home right now, my friend. She is all mine. Oh, yeah? What do you got? <laughs> is that it? Read them and weep. A doopy? I can't compete with that. Can I have these? Sure. Okay. She took mine first. A uh, top news story, the Doopy doll has become an international sensation. Oh, yeah. All this despite reports that some Doopies are evolving from their original cute form... Evolving? ...into something hideous that could destroy the planet within the week. Destroy the planet? And now, some celebrity birthdays, brought to you by the Doopy. By any criteria, we are superior. We are the Doopies. That's our show for today, kids. If you'd like a copy of our transcript, we'll transmit it directly into your head using telepathy. And remember, if your parents don't buy you a Doopy every week, they're all pretending to love you. Hello? Mom? Have you mailed me anything recently? Doopy! Doopy, we need to talk! Doopy?
And so, you see, we have evolved into a higher form of life. Uh, higher than who? Not counting you, Dogbert. Apology accepted. I can't help noticing you've lost one quality. We are no longer, as you say, cute. Woo! I'm the cutest one in the family again! Kumbaya, my lord! Kumbaya! Kumbaya! All right, I'll shut up now. We have evolved beyond the need for cuteness. It has no role in an advanced species. Hello, gorgeous. Do you mind if I use the reflection from your head as a mirror? I'm in the door. What's in the bag? Is that one of those cute little doopies? They come for the reflection, but they stay for the doopie. Uh. <gasps> your reaction was to the doopie, right? So this is what happens when you leave a sandwich in your drawer too long. We are not huge flies. We are an advanced form of life. You have freed us from the drawer. To reward you, we will use our advanced intellect to benefit mankind. What is it your species needs most? I can't think of anything. Perhaps we could tell you how to cure a terrible disease. No, I'm good. Maybe you would like a perpetual clean fuel source. Don't need it. I use gasoline. Have you heard of it? Ken is here from marketing to tell us how the sales of doopies are going. I'm afraid it's bad news. I've worked here a long time. And I've never seen anything go from good to bad so quick. Maybe I'll tell you the doopy status myself. They evolved into hideous insects. And sales are in the crapper. They're not insects. They're a superior form of life. Superior? They don't even look cute anymore. There's more to being superior than just being cute, you know. You're preaching to the choir. They can teach us so much. Science, technology, medicine. They're not cute anymore! No, they're not cute, Loud Howard, but they are so much more now. They have transcended our limited levels of awareness and become the next logical evolutionary step. And they're delicious with teriyaki sauce. What? Yes, we're very excited. Our studies show that the Jupies are dupelicious. We're relaunching the Dupy product line next week as a pizza topping. You can't do that. The Dupies are sentient beings. If by sentient you mean good eating, I think we're on the same page. I know how it feels to create a new species only to have someone come along later and eat it. You do? I don't talk about it much. I can't let the Dupies become pizza topping. I have to do something. Why? You stood idly by while it happened to pineapples. Pineapples are different. They're not alive. Well, they're alive, but they aren't intelligent. They're smarter than bananas. It's all relative. What are you saying? It's arbitrary. Who's your pet? Who's your food? Who's your insurance salesman? We have reasons for those distinctions. Yes, but not good reasons. How do I convince people the doopies aren't food? Teach the doopies to sell insurance. That's not the best advice you've ever given. They can't all be winners. I do not wish to be a pizza topping. I'm trying to figure out how to save you and your people. Have I mentioned that I'm a superior life form? About once a minute since you got wings. It never gets old. Look, I can save you. You'll just have to hide in the house with me. I... I just don't know about the others. You have raised me, and I am grateful. But I am a dupe. I must be with other dupies. It is time for me to leave the nest. You can't leave. If someone gets a bun around you, you're dead. That is a risk I must take. You did your best, and I will always love you for that. But you cannot protect me forever. Dupe! Goodbye. Da, 
don't ever leave. This room? Mm, never mind, the moment's gone. Stupid fruit! Best three out of five. Let me ask you a hypothetical question. Would you eat an insurance salesman? I did that once. <laughs> it was uh, part of a fraternity hazing. Okay, bad example. I just realized I don't know what hypothetical means. My goal is to create an anti doopy eating campaign. Okay, how about... This is your brain. This is your brain after eating a doopy. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> you don't understand the creative process. You stole that slogan from the anti-drug campaign. Okay, maybe you do understand the creative process. How about doopies? They're like little insurance salesmen with wings. No, too overdone. Overdone? How about doopies? They're like little insurance salesmen with wings. Much better. Since we converted the doopies to a food item, worldwide sales have leveled out at zero. We're calling it a success because that's just what we do. Gee, I wonder why no one wants to eat the doopies. Maybe it has something to do with that brilliant new anti-doopy eating campaign. No, it wasn't that. Our research tells us no one wants to eat huge talking insects that beg for their lives. It's not intuitive. But the anti doopy eating ad campaign helped a little, too. No! Anyway, we shipped our entire doopy inventory to the landfill where they will be pecked to death by seagulls. Do we call that a success, too? You can't just throw the doopies away. They're a superior form of life. They're not cute anymore! Deja vu! Do you know where the landfill is? This might seem odd to you, but I do. Get in. We'll need reinforcements. The landfill has a rule that you can't take anything back. They never bend. Dogbert, meet us at the landfill. Bring help. It looks like you got an empty truck there. You know the rules. No pickups, only drop-offs. I'm here to save an advanced species from being pecked to death by seagulls. If I made an exception for you, everyone would be coming in here and taking home garbage. The whole system would break down. Please, just this once. We promise we won't touch any of the good stuff. Who told you there's good stuff in there? Ready, Spoon. Commence dining. Oh, Doopy, am I too late? We tried our energy blasts, but they just kept coming. It's okay now. You can come home. You'll be all right. We can't go back. Somehow we have been branded as insurance salesmen. <clears throat> we will never be respected on this world. Oh, I can explain that. We must leave this place. The dupies must escape the bigotry and random seagull attacks that characterize this world. You understand? Unfortunately, I do. Goodbye. Goodbye. I see you eyeing those melon rinds. Those are my melon rinds. Don't even think about those melon rinds. I got dibs on the rinds. You hear me? You hear me?
The house seems so empty now. Have you noticed that I exist? Yes, but I don't miss you because you're always here. That is the nicest compliment I have ever heard. Doopy, is that you? Where are you? I can't reveal our new location for security reasons. I understand. We have found a new home where our advanced intellect is appreciated, and physical appearance is not important. I didn't realize there was such a place. I must go now. We have a code review meeting. This carpooling together is a great idea. Who thought of it anyway? You did. Well, I don't know. Do you mind if I shave in the car? I guess that would be okay. What are you doing? I like to start on my back. I hope you realize I have to sell my car now. You mind if I brush my teeth? I don't see how you can. How do you expect to rinse your mouth out? Tomorrow, you drive, preferably without me. What? What was that sound? I think you hit a squirrel. I love carpooling. By the way, I dropped my floss in the crack of your seat. I'd like it back. You can have the whole car. Thank you. Have a nice day. I left my ID in the car, but you know me. I do. We've seen each other every day for the past five years. Then you must know my name. Well, uh, it's Gary. Of course, Gary. I knew that. It's not Gary. Then why did you tell me it was? Testing your character. Guess you failed. Look, I'm kind of in a hurry. There's always enough time to be secure. That's my motto. That's not your motto. It is now. I liked it as soon as I heard it. How about letting me slide this time? I'm afraid that would be a violation of the security guard's professional code of ethics. Professional code of ethics? Is that a joke? All you do is sit there and watch people walk past. That's hardly a profession. Well, Mr. Big Shot Engineer thinks he's king of the world with his degree and his briefcase and his fancy cubicle. It must be so hard to sit there in meetings all day. At least it's a profession with very strict requirements. Your job could be done by a a uh, help me out here. There's always enough time to be secure. An ostrich. That's what your job could be done by. Oh, good one! An ostrich could do my job. Very clever. I'm sure you use that cleverness in your challenging job as an engineer. You bet I do, and lots more. I could be an engineer tomorrow if I wanted to, but you could never, ever do my job. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Engineering takes years of training. I've been doing some reading on the topic. For example, did you know you can build your own helicopter for twenty-five dollars? You can't build a helicopter for twenty-five dollars. That just gets you the instructions. What if you already have all the parts? Good point there. Who has helicopter parts in their house? You can't be an engineer just by reading magazines. If you're so cocky, how about a little wager? We'll switch jobs for one day. Whoever can do the other person's job wins. I do it, except there's no way you could ever get hired as an engineer. When can you start? What are you doing? He's never been an engineer before. Oh, how hard could it be? I'm always correcting your work, and I've never been to engineering school. You always correct my work from being right to being wrong. Well, there's always enough time to be secure. Okay, you're on. And what are we wagering if you're so cocky? It doesn't matter since I'm going to win. How about your house? Sure, why not? If I lose, you can have my house. If you lose, I can have your house. I don't have a house. How about your speedboat? Uh, no. Polo ponies? Let me think. No. My God, man! What have you been wasting your money on? 
Food? Well, maybe you should cut back on the calories. That's how I got my summer home. How about your car? It's borrowed, but yeah, I guess that'd be okay. Deal. But you still need your ID to get in the building. I'll be right back. It's in the glove compartment. Look at the time. Gotta go! Do you want to get in on the sports pool? What teams are playing? Doesn't matter. The winners are chosen by matching the scores to your randomly selected positions on a grid. If it's random, why does it matter what the scores are? Why not forget the game and pick the winners out of a hat? So, you prefer to play the hat. I can make that happen. For one dollar, you can draw from the hat. And there are no random sports teams involved? Right, just the way you like it. One dollar. It's a four. That's a loser. Thanks for playing. What was the winning number? Not four. That's all you need to know. Did I hear some gambling going on here? I want in. Well, there's the sports pool, the dead pool, the awards pool, and the Dilbert pool. People are betting on me? Well, most are betting against you. You know, if you bet against yourself, you'll be covered both ways. I'm not betting. What are the odds? Five to one against. I'll take the Dilbert pool. The hat's a sucker's game. How much training do you think I need to be a security guard for one day? Mm, six months, maybe a year. A year? All they do is stand there and say, have a nice day. It looks pretty easy. It looks easy because they're so good at it. If you try to do that job without the proper training, you're dead meat. Dead meat is redundant. Once something gets classified as meat, it hardly ever recovers. I've got a pork chop in the fridge that I'm optimistic about. He's a fighter. Do you have to argue with every single thing I say? Well, I don't have to. It's my hobby. I can quit anytime I want. I need to find a one-day training course on how to be a security guard. Here we go. Learn the art of office security in one easy class. Taught by security guard Grandmaster Chu Ni. Mm, that sounds good. The course includes sitting in a chair, pointing toward the elevator, shooing smokers away from the lobby entrance, and killing an intruder with your thumb. Does it have to be an intruder? Because that could come in handy. That is absolutely the last time we carpool together. Was it my singing? Because I don't have to do German opera. I make up the words, so it can be any language you like. Well, if it isn't my old nemesis, the security guard. Don't make me use the thumb. Just show me the badge, and no one gets hurt. Okay, okay. There's still time to get in the sports pool. Only one dollar per square. Do you take credit cards? Yes, I do, Loud Howard. I've upgraded my operation. This is a good investment because I get airline miles. Here is my brand new credit card. It has a ten dollar limit. A shock's in for ten. No, only five. I charged some items at the drugstore earlier today. Never mind what. Why would we care what you bought at the drugstore? Nice try, but my exciting life is none of your business. My lips are sealed. What else do you have to bet on? I got the fever now. I could deal some poker until the boss gets here. Deal him. Sorry I'm late, but someone didn't let me clean my ears in the car this morning, so my schedule's been off all day. You asked to use my pen. Anyway, anyway, the reason we're here is to select someone from the group to organize a career day for young girls who might want to be engineers someday. These girls need a role model. Someone who is feminine, yet skilled at technology. How about a shook? He's not technically a woman, but he doesn't have much upper body strength either. Ugh. One time I asked for help carrying a computer monitor. One time. Calm down, a shook. I was thinking more along the lines of a real woman. Uh. I got a pair of fours. If anyone beats that, I'll rip off his head and spit down his neck. What? Say you want to be security guards, but do you have the stamina, the courage, the guts for the job? Uh, uh.
Now, close your eyes and imagine you have just been asked for directions to the elevator. With your left hand, point! In your final lesson, you will learn how to kill a man with your thumb. No! I need a volunteer. You do realize he's gonna kill you with his thumb. Oh. So, the student becomes the teacher. Not really, I just thought that needed to be clarified. Maybe you would like to see how the thumb can kill a man. I have to admit, I'd like to see it. I'm having some trouble believing you can kill someone with a thumb. You dare to mock me? I have attained three Navy Blue Belts in office security. I'm just saying it's hard to believe a thumb can... Silence! Or you will have to deal with me! <clears throat> uh, anybody want to get coffee? As you know, we need to build a high-speed communications link to our Brazilian subsidiary. Any ideas? Fiber optic cable. That would not be economical, given the rough terrain. Well, then how about microwave relay stations on top of the hills? No, too hard to get the maintenance crews up the hills. How about you, New Dilbert? Well, we could build helicopters from ordinary parts found in our homes and fly the maintenance crews up the hills. Isn't that expensive? Only $25 a piece. I'm Officer Dilbert, here for the night shift. Nice to meet you, Officer Dilbert. I'm Officer... I've sat in some spirited chairs in my day, but this one is the devil himself. You are trained, aren't you? Kind of. God help you, son. There's a garlic necklace under the counter for when it gets dark. Garlic? Keeps away the undead. Don't try eating a cross. That don't work. I'm working security and looking good. Oh! How do they do that moonwalking? It must be special effects. Whew! Well, no problems yet, and I've been a security guard for well over... A minute. We're so glad you're having this career day for our daughters, Alice. You're such a good role model. Pick up your little monsters in an hour, otherwise I'm going to feed them to the homeless. She's got a great sense of humor. Am I too early? Come back in an hour. Halt! I just came in to use the restroom. Restrooms are for employees only. Do you mind if I use the elevator then? No, you may not use the elevator. The man in the ill-fitting blue suit is Dilbert. Don't be like him. Did you come down to keep me company? I came for casino night. Casino night? You might have the wrong building. No, I'm infallible. I don't know why you can't remember that. Maybe I'd better come with you. Okay, girls, this game is called Crafts, because if you lose, you can beat the crap out of Wally. <laughs> I could take those little girls. Mom? Gilbert? I thought so. What? All those years pretending to be an engineer. <laughs> it all makes sense now. No, it's not like that. What are you doing here? This is an illegal casino. 
I know. Isn't it wonderful? Just this afternoon, I found your collection of Susan B. Anthony dollars in the basement. I was ready to throw them away, but then I heard about Wally's little packet, and here I am. You're gambling with my coin collection? Yes, dear, but I'm winning almost a third of the time. And anyway, if you're working security, I think you've got bigger things to worry about. I'll need to see some fake ID. I don't have any fake ID. But you plan to get some fake ID, right? Give me that! This is outrageous! I want you all out of here this minute! Yes! Oh, so funny. Oh. It's not so easy being a security guard, is it? You! <sighs> I haven't lost this bet yet. The night is young. I've got hours to clear this up. My mommy is coming to pick me up in 30 minutes. Ah! Place your bets. Remember the system. Face cards are plus one. Number cards are minus one. You're teaching her to count cards? This is so wrong. Hey, Ashok, look over there. It's a rewarding career. Where? I don't see a rewarding career. I'm good. Ashok. Look over there. It's a woman who respects you despite your low status and tiny income. Where? I don't see a woman who respects me despite my low status and tiny income. I'm good. Look, Ashok, there's a wall behind you. What am I doing wrong? You have 25 minutes before the moms get here, and you're fired for being an incompetent security guard. <laughs> oh, I can hardly wait. This is not over, my friend. I've been in tighter spots than this. Hmm. I don't recognize this corridor. Ah! Are you finished? I guess so. Good. Now where's the bathroom? Since when do zombies need bathrooms? When they drink 12 beers? I need an amp and some cable and I'm in business. That should do it. Five minutes to spare. This is security. Leave the building immediately. Attention! Attention! Leave the building now or else. Or else what? I'm still figuring that out. But you can be sure you will be very, very bad. Oh, three minutes. for dinner. Halt! You can't go up there for reasons that are very, very good, but can't be succinctly explained. Game's over. Everyone hit the stairs. It's a serious crime to set off a false alarm. We suspect one of the street people. I can't lie. I did it. I pulled the alarm. Okay, you're free to go. What? I thought it was a serious crime. You're part of the Brotherhood. Brotherhood? What Brotherhood? Well, you got your law enforcement and your safety services. Bailiffs, prison guards, judges. Armed forces, including the Coast Guard. Did we let the Skycaps in? I missed the last meeting. Yeah, yeah, me too. Did you hear if the Skycaps got in? Just barely. The Walmart greeters held out to the last boat. How about engineers? 
Can they get in? <laughs> I may not have won the bet, but at least I didn't lose. Don't be so sure. You barely succeeded as a security guard, but the security guard has gotten a job as an engineer at a better company. He did very well in the personal interview. What do you think you're doing? I could have fallen into that hole. Well, if it isn't Mr. Big Shot security guard with his fancy chair and his uniform all clean and sparkly, thinks he knows my job better than I do. How hard is it to put up some safety cones so people don't fall into the open sewer? Maybe you think you could do this job. This isn't so hard. I could do this for one day. Ratbert? I can't stop. I'm doing laps. You call that the backstroke? Your arms are all wrong and you're not kicking right. Well, Mr. Big Shot sewer worker thinks he can be a rat. I'd like to see you do my job for one day. Maybe I should just learn to keep my mouth shut. They are experts in merger news an alliance has been announced between the world's worst oil exploration company and the world's largest funeral company. We spoke to the CEO of Dry Hole Industries about the synergy. Well, as you know, the biggest expenses in the funeral business involve buying the land and digging the holes. Well, it occurred to me that our company owns land that already has holes in it. That's how I plan to bury you, unless you have an objection. As a matter of fact, I do have an objection. Not now. You have to object after you're dead. How can I object to anything after I'm dead? I recommend that you come back as a ghost and haunt the house for eternity. That'll be your signal that you're unhappy about the situation. If I haunted this house, you'd turn it into a tourist attraction and sell tickets. I'd be doing all the haunting and you'd be making money. Oh, like it's so hard to haunt. The investment banking firm who arranged the merger received a fee of $1 billion for making a few phone calls and attending some meetings. Did you say the investment banking firm that arranged the merger received a fee of $1 billion? She can't hear you. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Wait a minute. Are you saying you can hear what I say through the TV? In other news, Tom Kenny, leader of the 60s psychedelic band Ubiquitous Banana, was found today exactly where he said he would be. I think I just found my new career. <laughs> For reasons that I no longer try to fathom, customers keep buying our products. Thank goodness for the inefficient distribution of consumer information. Now we're stuck with $20 billion in cash and no strategy for using it. Does anyone have any ideas? How about giving raises to the people who work so hard to create all that cash? That would unfairly discriminate against those of us who didn't work hard. If we start rewarding lazy people like you, the whole system will break down. Oh, that same argument was used years ago to deny women the right to vote. Are you comparing your laziness to the women's suffrage movement? There are many similarities. Name one! Women weren't allowed to vote, and I'm too lazy to vote. In both cases, there's taxation without representation. That is the dumbest argument I've ever heard in my life. Bigot. People, does anyone have any idea how to invest the 20 billion? I do! How about a product that keeps your fillings from vibrating out when you talk? Maybe I should hire a consultant to come up with an idea. Consultants don't come up with ideas. They take the ideas you already have and make them more confusing. Then they give you a huge bill. A huge bill would solve our excess money problem. Excess money isn't a problem. That money is causing us to be in this meeting. What do you call that? Uh-oh. Wally's starting to make sense. We need to get rid of that money fast. Why don't we merge with a company that is less dysfunctional than we are? They could spend our money for us. A merger? Hmm. That might get us some synergy. Ah! I didn't realize that Alice suffers from cobiotophobia. I know what that is. No, I don't. It is the fear of synergy. Well, she better get over it. We ran it up the flagpole and the ship sailed. That's a mixed metaphor. Yeah, so what's so bad about that? Actually, I don't know. Ah, he who laughs last makes waste. Well, I'm not afraid of synergy. I just think a merger's a bad idea. 
Do you have a better idea? Of course. Plow the surplus funds into R&D. All right, then. The merger it is. My company needs help finding a merger partner. I hope that's the sort of thing investment bankers do, because I asked at the Mailboxes or Us place, and they just stared at me like I was some kind of an idiot. You came to the right place. My fee is 10% of the value of the acquired company. What's your company worth? Well, we've got 20 billion in cash and no liabilities, unless you count the employees, who we call our most valuable assets. 20 billion in cash plus the employees. That comes out to about 15 billion net. So your fee would be 10% of 15 billion, which is. <clears throat> uh, one second. Carry the three. Square root of pi. $14 billion. Exactly. Can we start right away? I'm anxious to get some synergy. I'm bailing out of this dump at the first sign of a merger. I won't go through synergy again. As usual, Alice, you are missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime. I plan to implement Project Mosquito immediately. What is Project Mosquito? That is where Wally takes advantage of the management chaos and sucks the stockholders dry, much like a giant mosquito. That sounds exactly like Project Leech, the one you've been doing for the past five years. I can see how that would be confusing. The key to a successful merger is synergy. Ah! Let's first discuss what makes this company special. Then I'll help you find the perfect merger partner. We're poorly managed. Our boss ignores everything we say. Management is completely deaf to the needs of the employees. I've got a parking space right next to the door. It looks like a sidewalk, but it's not. Losers. Now let's think what kind of companies would make the best merger partner with a company full of losers. Perhaps a drug company who needs to test new products on human subjects. We would be ideal because the scientists would not become emotionally attached to us. Good. Anything else? We could merge with a company that runs women's prisons. I'm willing to keep a few inmates in my cubicle if they'll do my laundry. Prison bimbos? We could merge with a company that makes chickens. We sit around all day anyway. Might as well be sitting on eggs. How about an alternative fuel company? People produce a certain amount of methane gas every day, just like every other mammal. We could be fueling cars with that resource. How exactly would we be collecting this methane gas all day long? I grant you the hose would be uncomfortable at first, but we'd get used to it. This might be harder than I thought. Well, if it isn't Mordak, the preventer of information services, and his little buddy Walter, the budget man. Wally, you seem unusually upbeat. Maybe you haven't heard of the upcoming merger? Merger? But that would mean... Yes, it's gloating time for engineers. And when the synergy gets you, I will laugh the laugh of the, uh, the, uh, well, whatever it is that laughs a lot at others' misery without a tinge of guilt. Oh, maybe your hard drive needs a little cheese pizza upgrade. I don't need my computer anymore. I'm goofing off until the merger, then after the synergy gets you, I'll take both of your computers for my own. I will cut your budget so fast your head will spin. You're powerless. No one will listen to your budget recommendations now. Managers are all paralyzed by the merger rumors. Synergy! <laughs> this might be the best year of my life. It's time to take a page from female dating techniques, also known as the old bait and switch. Where are we going? There's a little bar I know where CEOs hang out. It's a real meat market for mergers. I like meat. Did you know that cows are made almost entirely of meat? Boy, yeah. And you can make pudding from the hooves. Tonight it's best if you don't do much talking. CEOs like to do business with people who aren't quite so... Strong-willed? Yeah, that's it. Tell me again what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to act like you work for a competent company long enough to get a CEO excited about merging with you. What's Dilbert going to do? I'm wondering that myself. Dilbert will appear to be interested in merging with you. You'll seem more attractive to the other CEOs if they think someone else wants you. I suddenly feel mildly nauseated. Is it my cologne? Uh, 
say, haven't seen you here before. Take me! Dear God, merge with me now! Uh, I just remembered. I, uh, I have to merge with someone else tonight. <laughs> I have to go now. Nice going. Thanks. Was I charming enough? You sounded needy. Try revealing a little less. Remember, bait, then switch. I panicked. I felt my financial clock ticking. Hey there. What's your ticker symbol? It's... Ow! Bait, then switch. Right. I'd rather not say what my ticker symbol is. Can't we just be strategic partners? Well, aren't you the mysterious one? I'll bet you're an internet company, aren't you? Maybe, maybe not. You little corporate tease. I want to merge with you. Right here, right now. I never swap stock on the first meeting. Um, how about your friend? Huh? He looks like he might be into a little M&A. &A. I don't know what that means, but I wouldn't merge with you if I'd never merged before and you were the last company on Earth. Who needs to merge with you? I can crank up my own stock price by repurchasing shares. I've done it before, and I can do it again. What'd I do wrong that time? Yeah, sometimes you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Have you ever noticed that when you kiss the frogs, their tongues taste like flies? Last call. Is this when I get desperate? You've got two more chances. Nah, yeah, don't bother. He merges with everyone. His price is cheap. Haven't we merged before? I'd like you to meet our merger partner, the CEO of Brain Suck Industries. His name is Mwelele. Ah! Did I get that right? Perfect. You might have heard of Brain Suck Industries in the trade press. They're a company that mysteriously only came into existence yesterday, but they're taking the industry by storm. Aren't they the ones who merge with companies and then ingest the brains of the acquired company via their long snoots? I.E. Synergy. Where is everyone today? What have you done with everyone? Dilbert, my man, chill. Alice is in a company stress reduction program. Wally has been back into human resources. Oh, yeah? What about Loud Howard? He's being stored in a soundproof container in the closet until after the merger. We don't want to spook anyone. I hope he has air holes. Well, now, that wouldn't be very soundproof, would it? Ah! He needs mouth to mouth. <gasps> well, then, where is everyone else? Calm down. They were given the day off. You'll be given the day off, but the day will never end. It will go on forever. Hmm? Sorry, I missed that. I find myself in need of a new troll to guard my door. Why don't you hire another one? Well, I would, but they all know about our pending merger. No one wants to work in an administrative job. Those are the first ones cut during the uh, synergy phase. That's why I'm glad I'm an engineer. Yes, yes, you were an engineer. What? I'm changing your job title to door-watching troll, effective immediately. But then the synergy will get me. Well, not just you. I'll offer to fire all my staff so I can keep my own job. That sort of loyalty is always rewarded. Who wishes to see Mr. Catburn, the evil director of human resources? Well, well, well. The stories are true. I might be wrong, but I think the job of door troll is administrative. 
This is a highly skilled position. Troll, get the rake. I just have to imagine I'm looking for gold with a metal detector. The funny thing is, I don't even like my co-workers that much. So why do I miss them when they're gone? I miss you when you're gone. But you like me. I don't know where you got that idea. You don't like me? I have very high standards. That's why I like you. I like you too, Dogbert. You have to like me. You're my mother. I don't believe I signed any contract to that effect, unless they slipped me something when I was giving birth. That'll never stand up in court. We tolerate you largely for the entertainment value. Do you remember the time I ironed Poison Ivy into his underpants before his high school graduation? <laughs> oh. uh. Okay, so you don't like me, but you do love me, right? Yes, I do love you because you're family. That's the same reason you miss your co-workers. My co-workers are not family. Oh, really? Think about it. Your boss is like the father who left when you were little. Alice and Wally are like the brother and sister you never had. Loud Howard is like the annoying uncle who always embarrasses you. And Ashuk the intern is like your own son. That is the most appalling theory I have ever heard. I'm going home. Uh, hello? You could say that. Since when do garbage men make house calls? Since always. You just have to ask. I'd be afraid to leave my door unlocked all day. I have a master key. To every house? I use my house key. All the locks in this town are the same, but don't spread it around. I won't. Can I ask you a question? You mean, can I ask you two questions? Fine. Is it possible that my co-workers are like some sort of bizarre, dysfunctional family to me? It's not just possible. It's mandatory. Mandatory? The brain is wired that way. Your mind organizes the people around you into family roles. Like it or not, they are your family. This merger is breaking up my family. Unless you stop it. You replace the plastic bags? Not usually. Today is bag day. Who wishes to see Mr. Catbert, the evil director of human resources? Wally, it's me, Dilbert, your brother. I mean, I mean your co-worker. I have no co-workers. I'm just a door-guarding troll. After the merger, I'll be an unemployed guy whose last job was a door-guarding troll. Hang in there, Wally. I'm gonna stop this merger. How? The truth will set us free. These cubicles are our marketing department. If these people don't scare you into canceling the merger, nothing will. Hey there, Dillman. Who's your friend? Whoop <laughs> That is quite a handshake you got there, big guy. Well, I'll see you back at the ranch. What the hell did you do to him? We'll never complete this merger if you kill the CEO. This is what wrecked the Roswell merger. All I did was take him to marketing. He stuck his snout in some people's ears, and now he's acting like this. Take him back to his office, quick. We don't want him dying over here and ruining our safety record. Let's get the staff meeting going. First, an update. Dilbert killed the CEO of the only company willing to acquire us, so the merger is off. I'm the one who told you that. Settle down. We're trying to have a meeting here. I'm the only person here who isn't engulfed in someone else's mouth or unconscious, and you're giving me updates that I gave you ten minutes ago? No side conversations during the meeting, please. Item two. Wally is being transferred back to engineering. 
Wally, oh. you're back. Give me five. Oh. Go. Sorry. Oh. Item three, Alice has decided to stay in her job. Look what happens when I don't show up for one day. I feel like we're one big dysfunctional family again. Would anyone like to hug? Mm. Oh, you mean each other. No, thank you. Does anyone have any new business to discuss? I do. You know, I was thinking about it. And although the merger idea didn't work out, it's not a bad idea in concept. Maybe we should give it one more try and... Ah! I'm sorry the merger got called off. I guess you lost your $14 billion investment banking fee. You guessed wrong. I rushed the paperwork through as soon as I heard you were with their CEO on tour. What are you going to do with $14 billion? I'm investing it in a foreign concern. Citizens of Orgaplan 6, we bring you Synergy. Dear Uncle or Aunt Dilbert, my name is Petrunik Flastominic. I thank you so much for being my foster parent. Life in Albonia has become so much better since you began sending your 87 cents a week. I now have a shoe, and my vision has returned to look upon the beautiful mud of my homeland. Hopefully, one day you can visit me when the check one, flood, famine, volcanic eruptions, plague, or war has slash have ended. Love, Petru. Petru, your food problem may be over sooner than you think. I'll start with a cup of coffee. You're going to have to make your own breakfast today. I'm busy inventing a hybrid food plant that could end world hunger forever. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. I'll have two fried strips of the new thing with hash browns and coffee. Do you think banging your mug is going to work? This is not a diner. Okay, go back to becoming famous with your new food invention. I'm not doing this to become famous, though I admit that may be an unavoidable consequence of coming up with the greatest improvement in food production since Squanto. Squanto? He showed the pilgrims that if you put a fish in the ground with your corn seeds, it fertilizes the plant. Mm. How do you know Squanto wasn't trying to grow a fish tree? Maybe he was too lazy to dig his own hole. Dogbert... What I'm working on here may once and for all put the lie to the Malthusian imperative and save humanity from the grim prospect of a foodless future. Put the what to who and save who from what? What I've come up with is a nutritious hybrid that will feed millions of people for pennies a day. Do you want to see it? Only if it goes good with jelly. I inserted the DNA from a prize-winning Norwegian cow into the nucleus of a tomato seed. Then I made it rectangular so you can stack them more efficiently. Part meat... Part tomato. I call it the tomato. Do you want to be the first to eat it? Yeah, that depends on the alternatives. Is it too late to dig up Squanto's fish? Maybe we should test it on someone expendable first. Ratbird, breakfast. Hmm? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> yours we thought you should eat first for once oh now this is more like it you finally treat me like a member of the family comments people this is perhaps the most revolting food item I have ever encountered it actually frightens me it's so unappealing on so many levels it's hard to know what to criticize first it's like Wally -E, except small enough to flush down the toilet Thank God for my oversized head. 
I think it's creepy. Is it alive? If you tried to put this thing on the market, you'd be out of business in a week. Now that is definitely not what we're looking for. Wait a minute. You're going to dismiss the tomato because it's unattractive? Sound reasoning from my perch, Dilby. But it's a perfect food source for third world countries. It contains all the vitamins and minerals necessary to sustain an adult. It grows anywhere. It doesn't need refrigeration. <laughs> Two words, Dilby. Ugly. What does that have to do with anything? I know for a fact that there's a market for this. No offense, Dillweed, but what you engineers know about marketing could fit inside the very small opening on a very small thing. Well put. What about Elbonia? There's a famine in Elbonia. Until CNN has a name for it, like famine in Elbonia, it's not really happening. Who are we to impose our way of life upon another culture? I'm pretty sure that every culture likes to eat. Suppose we discovered an entire nation of supermodels. What then? That is the dumbest hypothetical question I have ever heard. People always say that when I'm winning the argument. If I could interrupt here, and I know I can, I'm hearing some good news here for the old torpedo. Tomito. Whoa. Easy, Norbert. Now, this Albonia, it's not in America, right? Your guess is as good as mine. Possibly better, because I try to make all my guesses rhyme. Anyway, we could grow these crap berries in Albonia, then bring them back as an exotic import specialty food. You know, the kind you give to other people when you can't think of a real gift. Huh. A basket of Norwegian sour mates. I don't see why I have to go down to accounting to increase the travel budget just for a trip to Albonia. I know it seems like a form of arbitrary punishment. But? But what? I speak to about increasing my travel budget. Travel budget? Travel budget? Who do you think you are? I think I'm someone traveling to Elbonia on business. Do you have any proof? Proof? Since when do we need proof to do our jobs? Do you think we just give out money to anyone who asks for it? Do I look like Santa Claus to you? No, you look like some sort of hideous creature. Thank you, because that's the look I'm going for. What if I just go on the trip and then submit carefully documented receipts when I return? And what if you never return? I'll leave explicit instructions for the executor of my will to file my receipts. Very well. Sign here. I approve your request to use your personal airline miles to pay for this trip. What? You really should read the fine print. It's nice having visitors. So, where's all the famine? Let's ask. Excuse me, can you direct us to the famine-stricken parts of Elbonia? What is famine? The food shortages, the hunger crisis. I don't know what you're talking about. We have no hunger here. I myself ate four meals already today. Yes, of mud. Have you tasted it? No, thanks. Hey, chocolate. Not just chocolate. Nutritious, non-fattening, and obviously abundant. Maybe this was a mistake. They're eating mud, Wally. Mud. Obviously, they're in denial. Um, can you tell me where this picture was taken? Yes, that is Petrunik Vlastominitz, the richest man in Elbonia. His mansion is one mile in that direction. I think you're confused. This is my foster child. I send him 87 cents a week. <laughs> yeah, you and about a billion other people. <laughs> Isn't that a sight, Wally? 
the muddy plains of Elbonia being transformed into vibrant fields of tomatoes. Yeah, great. Uh, can we go back to the hotel? I don't feel like I'm on a business trip until I pocket the little shampoos. Hey, check it out. It's a cornucopia. Salads, soups, meat, fish, poultry. Look at the footnote. It says all food is made out of Elbonian mud. I'm not a fussy eater like you. And in a late-breaking story, another 5,000 ethnic Elbonians decided to leave the country today. Since there is no difference between ethnic and non-ethnic Elbonians, we have no idea why. What else is on? Let's see. And welcome back to Elbonian Monday Night Football. Here's the opening kickoff. <laughs> And that's the game. Final score, Elbonian Mole Men, zero. Elbonian Chicken Ox, zero. That was exciting. I had money on that game. Coming up next, Elbonian Baywatch. Gilbert, would you mind leaving for a little while? I have trouble watching Baywatch with someone else in the room. Did you hear that? Yeah, you really ought to stretch more. Wow, that was fast. Experts are holding the tomato responsible for plunging Albonia into the worst famine ever. It's the tomato's fault. It's a freak of nature. Meat and fruit. Who ever heard of such a thing? It has sucked all the nutritional value out of our delicious Albonian mud. Now it tastes like mud! It's inedible. It smells bad. Although I do admit it stacks nicely. The Albonian exodus has begun as hungry Elbonians seek refuge in neighboring countries, while starving Elbonians who remain are resorting to desperate measures. This is the most delicious hotel I've ever eaten. We've got to find poor little Petruniak. He must be so frightened and helpless. Do you know where this picture was taken? <laughs> Tourists. Yeah, you got five minutes. What do you want? First of all, you lied to me. I thought you were a starving child, not an Albonian fat cat. Although I must admit you've done an excellent job investing my 87 cents per week. Thank you. Second, I came here to help Albonia with the advent of the tomato crop. But it hasn't worked out that way. Instead of stabilizing an unstable country, I've destabilized a stable one. So, like, just the opposite? Yes. So, what do you want me to do about it besides laugh? Ha! Well, admittedly, the tomato tastes like wet suede, but it looks good and stacks well. So? Well, as a food product, it's a total loser. But think about it. The tomato would make a great, lightweight building material. You could rebuild the infrastructure, create employment, encourage trade, and jumpstart the economy. But the tomato isn't a building material. Let me taste it. It is now. How much is this going to cost me? You can underwrite the entire reconstruction for a buck thirty-five. So then, I convinced Petruniak that the tomato could be profitable as a building material. Good work, Wally. When you get back, remind me which one you are. You got it. And remind me why you went over there and what you did. I will. And while you're at it, maybe you can tell me who the hell I am. I'll see what I can do. Oh, uh, will I get some sort of non-monetary award? I'll see what we have in the lost and found. You owe me big time. Gee, I wonder if these tomatoes have been kept in a temperature-controlled warehouse. Why? Have you ever seen what happens to a dead camel in the sun? 
Those tomatoes are now half rancid meat. And there's always the issue of the inherent fertilizer that I added. What are you saying? It gives me great pleasure, nothing disgusting or obscene in any way, but great pleasure nonetheless, to present Wally with this non-monetary award. Uh, don't put it on, Wally. Remember, if the glove fits, you must quit. Am I the only one here who sees the logic of that? I'm not going to wear it, Ashok. I'm putting it in my awards trophy case with the tube sock and the... Oh, I guess it's just the two things. It is my dream that someday I will win something from the Lost and Found box. I've got my eye on a little black comb. Calm down, everyone. There are enough non-monetary incentives for all of you. Hey! I'm missing a glove! You think this is too ostentatious? I mean, it's a lot for one person. It's fine. Look, we have to do something about Albonia. I don't know. If I win another award, I'm afraid I'll lose my ability to relate to the little people. Wally, I... Uh-oh. It's happening already. I can't relate to you. In the news, Elbonian strongman Petrunia Clustominitz has successfully used the threat of deploying long-range tomato-based weapons, including the tomato bomb, to extort neighboring countries just for kicks, managing to jumpstart the once robust economy of nascent superpower Elbonia. Uh-oh. Didn't you win the Nobel glove for that one, Oppenheimer? No, I didn't. Nice job. It's not exactly what I had in mind. Oh, yes, it is. You wanted to end hunger in Elbonia with tomatoes. Now that they're being used as weapons, you will. Congratulations. I think you're a strong candidate for the Congressional Used Handkerchief of Honor. If we could only get them to eat the tomato rather than use it as a weapon. You are a dreamer. People of Elbonia, we must cease using the tomato as a weapon. <laughs> Perhaps you misunderstood me. I said the tomato was not designed and should not be used as a weapon. Did you say the tomato should not be used as a weapon? Yes. <laughs> I think we need backup. Drop the dill mom. Repeat, drop the dill mom. What can my mom do? Uh, who has the longest track record in the world for making people eat things that taste like crap? Good thinking. It's time for Cooking with Dilma. Here's your host, Dilma. Today, we will prepare the succulent tomato. I know, I know, it tastes like crap, but hear me out. A common error people make in the preparation of the tomato is in treating it like a vegetable instead of what it is. Half meat, half tomato, which incidentally is a fruit, not a vegetable. As with any meat, you have to thoroughly disguise it before anyone will want to eat it. First you slice it, then you burn it over a fire until you can't tell what it was originally. What about the taste? The taste comes from the seasonings. Does anyone have ketchup? It is delicious. It tastes like ketchup. This is very impressive, but our Albonian mud hasn't been the same since Dilbert rendered it inedible with his agricultural boondoggle. That wouldn't be the first time. Does anyone have any vanilla bean extract? Try it. It is delicious. Let us lay down our tomatoes of mass destruction and lift up our tomatoes of peace and plenty and return ourselves to the backward and inconsequential country we once were. It worked. Yes, I suppose you're off the hook. 
Instead of being known as the father of the Tomito bomb, you'll return to your former status as an anonymous cubicle dweller. I'll take it. She still has the magic. I remember one time, she convinced me to eat a whole can of Play-Doh. That wasn't her, that was me. No, I remember distinctly. She called from the payphone and said dinner would be late, so I should start in on the Play-Doh. <sighs> Did it sound like this? Gilbert, I'll be home late. Why don't you see how much Play-Doh you can eat? <sighs> As luck would have it, we found another glove to give out as a non-monetary award. This one goes to Loud Howard. Oh, yes! That glove will go perfectly with my other... Oh. And last, but not least, yet far from most, somewhere in the lower middle range, we have for Dilbert a lovely baggie that once held a sandwich. Thank you. You know, it's funny. On the inside of my trophy case, a sock and a glove, while on the outside, this rag, destined to clean the dust from the other objects. <laughs> There's such a fine line between dust rag and valuable trophy. At least my award wasn't on someone's smelly foot. Are you saying your one non-monetary award is better than my two non-monetary awards? No, I'm not saying that. Good. I'm saying it's better than the sock. You take that back. Those non-monetary incentives really get their energy up. I must remember to get one of myself. This came for you. So good to see you. You simply must disturb us more often. Actually, I'm trying to sleep, which is what normal people do at three in the morning. Normal people? Oh, how dreadful. Which brings me to my point. Your wind chimes are making so much noise, I can't go to sleep. Ah, we got those on a trip to the Congo. It was the Canary Islands, dear. Well, I didn't see any canaries, but they could have been hiding. They'll do that. It doesn't matter where you got them. Can you please keep the noise down? Well, it's not us, dear. It's the wind. You can't own the wind, son. I learned that in the Aussie <laughs> Outback. Look, I'm begging you. All day long, I have to listen to my pointy-haired boss, my yammering co-workers, the traffic, the phone ringing, and my computer beeping at me. But knowing I can return to the quiet of my home, that little bit of comfort allows me to cling to my sanity. It's my fortress of solitude. I thought only Superman had a fortress of solitude. Are you comparing yourself to Superman? Rather cheeky, I should think. Please, the wind chimes. Would you take them down? Yes, yes, we'll take care of it. We always comply with our neighbors, especially the ones who have superpowers. <laughs> Thank you. What is it now? Is the moonlight bouncing off our house and hurting you in some way? You're playing conga drums and singing at 3.15 in the morning. Oh, it oh. seems the list of things you don't like is growing by the minute. Please, could you keep the noise down for three more hours? That's all I ask. Look, lovey, it's the item we purchased in Zimbabwe. <laughs> I thought it would never come.
Uh, that means he's got to go. Hey, hey! Get him away from my lawn! Stop it! Shoot! He is a nervous fella. Yes, he should try to get more sleep. Oh, oh. no! What does the Tree Lovers Society expect from its lawsuit? Big companies have been hurting our trees for too long. We want to show the world that trees have feelings, too. Are you a nut? If so, what kind are you? I am not a nut. I am a man who loves trees. I love them in every way a man can love wood. Would you mind handcuffing yourself to a tree when my photographer gets here? That's original. There is nothing wrong with the classics. What have you got? I interviewed an owl. People who... A little more attention up here, please. What matters is that the big corporations who hurt our trees must be stopped. Long live the trees! That's the man who's suing us. Elmer Oakley, the president of the Tree Lovers Society. Why is he mad at us? We don't harm any trees. Actually, we do, thanks to Alice. It wasn't my fault. We'll be the judge of that. It all started with benchmarking. Benchmarking? Is that even a word? Benchmarking is when you study world-class companies to learn the processes that make them successful. Then you try to duplicate those processes using less intelligent employees. So you try to blatantly copy another company's success, knowing fully that you can't do it as well? He's a tech, isn't he? In this case, I studied a company that makes paper. I found out they have great training programs, fully automated systems, and excellent management. And they completely raped the forest. Don't forget that. Just laid waste to it. So, naturally, we had to completely rape a forest, too. Apparently, this damn tree lover society was somehow offended. Only another ten hours and I'll be home. Dilbert. Dilbert! Yes? That's better. For a moment, it looked like you weren't suffering. What shall we do about the tree lover society? Why don't we have a meeting? I think this is a meeting. Loud Howard is on to something. I'm not on anything. I'm always like this. I mean, your idea to have an off-site meeting and invite the Tree Lover Society to work out a compromise. He didn't say that. It was implied. Quiet, I'm trying to think. Dilbert's house. Why my house? Because it's the nearest one to my house without actually being my house. We can trash your place until rush hour, and I'll still be home in ten minutes. Your logic escapes me. Well, you better go catch it. I don't see why I should suffer. I had nothing to do with this tree lover situation. Dilbert, do you realize that the letter I and the word I are one and the same? Yes. Good. I think I've made my point. Now, who's handling the refreshments? Alice will. Why? Because I'm the only woman in the group? Hard to refute the logic of that. Let me oh. try. <coughs> Apparently, I'll be in charge of the refreshments. Alice, I want you to organize the icebreaker games. I love shoots and ladders. I think I'd prefer Russian roulette. American games only? You better do more than dust if your co-workers are coming over here for a meeting. That's all this house needs. My program of ongoing tidiness pays big dividends in these situations. Your co-workers are going to see you in your natural habitat. So? They'll form lasting opinions based on your possessions. Opinions that will influence your career for years to come. What do I care what others might think? I'm not... Like what? You have no athletic trophies on display. It says you're a loser. If I had trophies on display, wouldn't it say I was a braggart? Yes, but if anyone asked you about the trophies, you could say you were lucky. Then I would be a lying braggart. And that's still better than being a... loser? I'll buy you some trophies at the trophy store. No bowling trophies. Oh, perish the thought. Uh, and the magazines. You'll have to replace them. What's wrong with my reading material? Needlepoint is not the exclusive domain of women, you know. It happens to be both challenging and creative. 
I'm not going to comment. I'll just look at you until you agree with me. That won't work, because I'm right. And I know I'm right. You might not think I'm right, and no one else might think I'm right, but I'm right. Okay, you made your point. I'll stop at the newsstand. Is that all? You'll have to stage the refrigerator. Lose the cheesecake and get some broccoli. It shows you have self-control. But I... Oh, all right. I'll go get some fake food. Change the station on your stereo and TV to something educational, and take the hair out of your soap in the shower. That hair is clean. <sighs> At least give it a trim. Just a little off the top. <laughs> Why do I have to live by the only people in the world who have a pet elephant? Your elephant is ruining my backyard. Are you sure that's our elephant? How many people on this street have an elephant? If you don't have that information, how can you be certain it's ours? You're rather jumping to conclusions, my good man. Just look out your back window and see if your elephant is there. Oh, very well. Our elephant is in our backyard. You must be mistaken. He just ran back there when you put the phone down. Look at the path of destruction between your house and my backyard. Uh, do you see a path of destruction? I can't say that I do, dear. No, nothing like that over here. You are disturbing the sanctity of my home. All I ask is to be left alone at home. A man's home is his castle. Oh, we're a king now, are we? <laughs> Very good. I guess he grew weary of being the man of steel. <laughs> That's it. I'm getting Dogbert. Ooh, he's getting Dogbert. I'm so afraid. <laughs> Dogbert? Dogbert! How may I be of service? You can tell me where Dogbert is. He left early this morning. Something about installing a puppet government? He's always installing a puppet government when I need him. We call it construction. I know what it is. I don't think you do. Why are you on my lawn? We're building a pen for your neighbor's pet elephant. I'm all for that, but why are you on my lawn? It's okay. The Pierponts gave us permission. They can't give you permission to wreck my lawn. They only gave us permission to use your lawn. The wrecking part was all us. This is outrageous. I want all this stuff off my lawn by 2 o'clock. My co-workers are coming over here for an off-site meeting. This will be very embarrassing. More embarrassing than your needlepoint magazines? How do you know about them? You look like a man with eclectic tastes. And I don't mean that in a good way. That's it. I'm an easygoing guy, but I've been pushed to the breaking point. And when I reach that point, look out! Hey! Hey! Whoa! Oh! You might want to put some cones around this open trench. <laughs> Dilbert, old chap, can't talk now. We're off for a two-week vacation. We didn't want to be here when all the construction was going on. It could be so disruptive. Could you tell the workers to get off my lawn, please? Yes, we'll call them from the car using our cell phone. But if for some reason you don't call them from the car, then there's nothing I can do about it. Very good. Chop, chop. Elmer! Elmer Oakley, president of the Tree Lovers Society? I didn't know how old she was. She lied about her number of rings. I say don't judge a man until you walk a mile in his shoes. So let's change shoes. I think I'll get the best of that exchange. <laughs>
I've come from the big company you're suing to take you to an off-site meeting. Do you know what an off-site meeting is, Elmer? Wait, don't tell me. Is it like a meeting that's not on-site? Oh, you've got a lot on the ball, son. What do you say we go to that meeting, you and me? You in my shoes, me in yours, and see if we can't convince you to drop this cockeyed lawsuit, huh? Although, off the record, if I was you, I'd sue for ten times as much. Ah, beautiful home. If I can just get through the off-site meeting, I will have my little sanctuary back. Dogbert! Where are you? Uh, uh, I need a little help here. He's not here. He said something about looting national treasures. When's he getting back? I don't have the answer to that question. So instead, I offer you this dance. My co-workers will be here any minute. I have an elephant on my roof, my lawn has been trashed, and now I have a dancing rat. I don't see how this could be worse. You'll like Dilbert's house. There's almost no wood in it. I hope that's sap. What's wrong with you? Why are you driving this way? This is the way I drive. It is most annoying. Everyone has their own driving style. This is mine. You're doing this, so we'll never ask you to drive again. It's all perfectly legal. Here it is, Dilbert's house. <laughs> it has more wood than I remember. Well, well, let's see what Gilbert reads at home. <gasps> What's this? Gilbert doesn't have good taste. <laughs> let's see what station Dilbert was watching last. And now another masterpiece involving British people with no emotional depth. Educational television? Dilbert watches educational television? I had no idea that Dilbert was such an accomplished sportsman. He never speaks of it. Oh, those? I just got lucky. It's broccoli! Nothing but broccoli! Broccoli? Something is very wrong here. Wally, check his soap. I'm on it. It's been trimmed. Possibly blow-dried. I knew it. This place has been staged. Staged? We've been had! Uh, were we gonna have a meeting? <laughs> right, the meeting. Let's start with the refreshments. Wally, what did you bring? I did a survey and found that everyone wanted hot dogs. I'm a vegetarian. It's too late to cast your vote. Hot dogs it is. Where are they? Well, the survey was phase one. I'm hoping to get to phase two sometime in the next quarter. Ooh. I guess we can go directly to the icebreaker phase of the meeting. Everyone grab a paint gun. We're playing street rules. Are your meetings always like this? Not always. One time we had hot dogs. Ow! Washes off, right? There's your consensus, you tree loving freak. Uh, nice going, Dilbert. This is the last time I let you talk me into having an off site meeting at your house. I'll sue your tree killing company into sawdust. But not before I win this icebreaker game. Hey, this should work. No! Not the elephant! <laughs> my house! You destroyed my fortress of solitude! As it turns out, it wasn't much of a fortress. I don't know about anyone else, but that really worked up my appetite. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have destroyed your hovel, and I shall destroy your company in court. Oh. Dogbert has returned. 
It just turned into a bad day to be you. I'm not afraid of some little dog. Never mind. Explanation? And then Elmer hit the elephant, and the whole thing collapsed. And you want me to fix everything. I believe that is outside of even your powers, Mr. Dogbert. <gasps> I'm sorry. It seems you have four problems here. One, dead elephant. Two, Wally forgot the food. Three, Wood for Brains here is suing your company. And four, the house has been destroyed. He's good. We can solve problems one and two by barbecuing the elephant over the lumber. Oh, oh that sounds oh, yeah. tasty. Yeah. As for the woodophile here, you do know you've slain an endangered species. Oh. That's right, he has, and we all saw it. Uh, never mind about the lawsuit. Forgive and forget, that's my motto. That's three problems out of four! Cell phone. Hello, is this the construction firm that did the Pierpont job this morning? This is Mr. Pierpont. I want you to remove the wreckage next to my house and move my entire house into the lot. Throw away all the possessions inside and change the locks. I lost a lot of computer equipment. I get the insurance adjuster here in the morning. It was time to upgrade anyway. Start tomorrow afternoon. You have two weeks until I return from vacation. I shall now start the paperwork to make you a god. I call Leg. This might be some of your best work. You're lucky these houses all look alike. We found this in the wreckage. Do you want it? Yes. Thank you. Freak. I wonder what the Pierponts will think when they get back. I took care of that, too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to make a public service announcement. Be sure to unplug your curling iron before taking long vacations. Oh, lovely. D did you unplug your curler? I'm not sure. Because if you don't, your house might disappear along with your pet elephant. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, announcement number two. Does anyone know how to land this thing? Who has that much fun? What kind of idiot can have that much fun? Is he oblivious or just plain stupid? You know, I have excellent hearing. You can speak much, much lower. Hey, wait a minute. That's Gerald, my old work colleague. Now it all makes sense. He is an idiot. Well, well, if it is my old co-worker, Dilbert. Hey, old buddy, how they hanging? I'd rather not answer that. Suit yourself! I haven't seen you since you got fired for gross incompetence. Well, as you can see, incompetence is paying very well these days. I'm revving, too. You just can't hear it because it's an electric car. Yeah, mine's not. You seem to be doing very well. What kind of drugs are you dealing? Oh, I'm still an engineer, just like you. Ouch. You are? It's too bad you stayed at your company instead of trying the open market for engineers. We're quite in demand, as you can see and hear. I'm revving again. At my new job, I've made millions in stock options. It's casual day every day. Beer blasts on Fridays. I get free massages at my desk. A mahogany desk which happens to be in a private office! Ah! Ah! Come on, turn already! Eat my dust, turtle boy! You can pull into the intersection. No cops for miles. You can't violate the law just because you know you won't get caught. Trust me, that's the best time. Damn periscope. The weird thing is that I'm jealous of him, and yet I hate him. Which means if I became like him, I would hate myself. Logically, then, I must want to hate myself. I'll make the engine noise if you just shut up and drive. Deal. Vroom, vroom, vroom. 
Do you think I'm a loser because I stay with my company? Yes. It's just that one reason. Thank you. I think. Engine. Yeah, sorry. Vroom, vroom, vroom. So just because he's got millions in stock options and lives a life of wealth and opulence essentially doing the same job I do doesn't mean he's happy. And even if he is happy, is that the goal? Good point. Touché. Now get out. I come here every day because I'm challenged by my job. I find a sense of fulfillment that no material object could ever... Don't wait up. I can never make it do that. Hey, be careful with the car. I ran into Gerald, our old co-worker, yesterday. The only person ever to be fired from this company for incompetence? He's working for some other company now. What's that? It is an old sponge. On my salary as an intern, I cannot afford to waste anything. I didn't know a person could live on sponges. This one has absorbed many food-related stains. It would be a shame to throw it away. Mm. Mm. As I was saying, Gerald is making a fortune working for this other company. Uh, dishwater from last night. It makes a delicious beverage. So I'm wondering if we're missing the boat by staying at this company. Excuse me. According to Gerald, engineers are worth a lot of money now. We could leave this place and be treated like rock stars. I don't know who this Gerald fellow is, but there are no engineering jobs outside this company. None. Zero. Zippo, Zorro, Mulch. You lost me on Zorro. You've never heard of Zorro? Not in this context. You ought to try reading a book once in a while. I think you're lying. All right, you got me. I've never read a book either. I also have no idea who Zorro is. No, I mean about the engineering jobs. Really? How can you tell? When you lie, you're bald. As I was saying, there are no other engineering jobs anywhere. May I ask why you're wearing a lobster bib? And why don't we ever see managers eating in the cafeteria? Where do you go to eat? Managers don't eat. Come on, work with me! I think the managers have some sort of secret executive dining room. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever... <laughs> if you... An executive dining room? <laughs> Get a load of... Well, I never... Sorry! Wrong vending machine! You're late. Were you followed? They don't suspect a thing. Good. But there's been a breach in security. The engineers found out they can get jobs at other companies. How could that happen? Brewster, we still control the media, don't we? Yes, thanks to our generous advertising budget. And we know the engineers have no friends to tell them of the outside world. I overheard them say it came from someone named Gerald. Last name? I didn't catch it. Have everyone named Gerald killed immediately. Is that Gerald with a G or Gerald with a J? Can you just kill them all phonetically? Right away, sir. I have the same problem with clams. By the time I eat a dozen of those little guys, I'm exhausted. You have trouble opening the shells? What? 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 Clams have shells? Okay, people, first order of business, the JFK assassination. Do we have a status report? As you know, our marketing stunt in November of 63, wherein we assassinated President Kennedy to bring attention to our line of pillbox hats, has continued to have unforeseen repercussions. Repercussions, you say? You know, I play the drums. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, you do? Really? Really? Well, that's that's right. well, it's not so much playing as it is hitting them with a stick. At least that's what I would do if I had drums. That's what they're for, you know. You know, sometimes I think it might be wrong to manipulate world events just to sell women's hats. 
But seriously, what about this problem with the engineers? We have reports of headhunters with lucrative job offers getting through the radar. Yes. Hello. Phone number 555-0172. Are you or anyone you know an engineer? I'm an engineer. <laughs> I'm an executive recruiter. Did you know that as an engineer, you can get a better job at another company with your own personal climbing wall, complimentary Tai Chi classes, and unlimited cappuccino? And I can get $20,000 for making this phone call? Our company newsletter says there are no jobs at other companies. If we leave here, we'll die a slow and horrible death. It's all described in this sidebar. <laughs> no, no, they're just saying that. We have a security breach. It's a headhunter. I'm tracing his call. Got him. Dispatch him in the usual way. Very good, sir. Hello? Hello? Hmm, must have lost the connection. Yes, but the damage is done. They've heard about the outside world. Maybe we could bribe them to stay. You know, give them one of those... Uh, you know, what are those, uh... Climbing walls? No, no. Uh, tai Chi classes? No! Uh, cappuccino makers? Uh-uh. Increase in pay? Yes, that's it. <laughs> I love guessing games. Hey, what number am I thinking of? No, nah, never mind, it's a letter. No, no, it's not that serious yet. That's absolutely a last-ditch measure. First, let's try promoting one of the engineers to management. This will give them all a false impression that they have a career path with this company. But who, upon whom, shall we bestow such a lofty mantle? What did he say? He said who. This darn machine never works! Nobody ever fixes it! There's your new manager. Should we give him the soap? Nah. Dilbert, I've decided to promote you to management. What? Why? I didn't do anything wrong. At least nothing that you know about. It's our way of showing the engineers that there is a career path at this company. No need to go sniffing around on the outside. I don't want to be a manager. I'm trying to do something nice for you. Well, stop it. I don't like it. All right, you drive a hard bargain. I shouldn't do this, but I'm assigning you an assistant. How about that? Let's hear you squawk now. I don't want an assistant. I don't need an assistant. I just want to be an engineer. Think of it as a perk. No need to thank me. Alfonso! Dilbert, this is Alfonso, your new assistant. Yeah, can I take the rest of the week off? I have allergies. You just started. Ooh, crack the whip. Old Zink, I thought you were dead. Technically, yeah, but I need the money, so I'll keep working. I got the strangest call today. Some guy claimed there are jobs for engineers outside this company. I think he was a nut. Well, there are engineering jobs outside this company, all right. I seen them. Really? Those other companies, they treat an engineer like a prize pig. I'd like to be treated like a prize pig. I've always wanted to wear a ribbon and oink. But I don't think I could ever find another company that didn't insist I actually work. Well, I have a pretty good arrangement here. It doesn't hurt to try. That hasn't been my experience. Whenever I try, it hurts. I know, I know, you got me. That's just something I say. And you know what else? A watch pot does boil. Yeah, I tried it. Maybe I should at least go to some interviews. It'd be nice to have someone treat me with respect. They'll whine and dine you and tell you how wonderful you are? Then you can turn them down before they make you work. Wow, it's like being a pretty woman. I've always wanted to be a pretty woman. More than a price pig. You don't get it, do you? Don't look now, but there's something following you. That something is my new assistant. I forgot his name. And so it begins. Assistant? Engineers don't have assistants. Only managers have assistants. Um, I got promoted to management. You did. Not Wally or me? Wally? All right, I use Wally's name to camouflage my own selfish ambitions. 
You want to be management? I don't want you to be. You try to boss me around, and they'll have to remove that assistant from you with forceps. You got me? Well, looks like someone got promoted to management. There, but for the grace of God. I don't see why he gets an assistant, and we don't. I thought you were my assistant. I am not your assistant. I just do all the work that you don't do because you're too lazy to do it, and otherwise it wouldn't get done. It's a fine line. As God as my witness, I will have an assistant someday. Well, make sure you get a good one. I don't want someone doing a bad job on your work that was originally my work. Wally, you're a real original. But just for the heck of it, let's see if we can make a copy. <laughs> Guess not. Paper jam. Hey, is it okay if I bring my piano to work? No, that is not okay. Well, what if somebody else brings it in and I just play it? How about that? You're supposed to be helping me, not making my life a burden with your annoying requests. Well, excuse me for not having a written job description. I believe that's your job to give me one. You're my assistant. How hard is that to understand? You assist me. If you told me to stick my head in a pile of manure, I wouldn't do that. That wouldn't be assisting me. Oh, yes, you're right. You're always right. I'm just the assistant. Okay. What if a piano just sort of showed up? Would that be okay? No piano! Is this a bad time to talk about a raise? I want you to make a shook my assistant. If I made a shook your assistant, it would destroy his tiny ego. So you'll do it? I'll need more than that. Help me help you. All right, let's see. It would breed resentment throughout the entire employee population? Uh-huh. Nice. You make a strong case. Are you thinking? No, I'm toying with you. All right, I'll do it. On one condition. Name it. I have to be there to hear him scream when you tell him. Deal. <laughs> Hi, I'm an engineer. <gasps> code blue. I repeat, code blue. Yes, a company jet. What else? Hmm, did I say llama? Yes. Did I say a company jet for my llama? Would you consider sharing your company jet with your llama? Share a jet with a llama? That's crazy talk. I'm out of here. I'm so sorry. Yes, yes. Jet for your llama. Stop moving your head around so much. Well, the paperwork is done. You're my assistant now. What? Read and weep. No! Who wants to start the weekly status reports? I will. This week, I discovered a glorious world outside this company, a world where engineers are treated like gods. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Despite what you read in the company newsletter, engineers are in high demand at other companies. No, they aren't. Uh, I would have taken another job, but negotiations broke down over one point. They expected you to work? Exactly. Fortunately, I was too clever to fall for the old bait-and-switch, but I kept the llama. And what is your name again? It's, uh... Alan. Alan. Okay, who's next? I spent the entire week trying to manage my new assistant. Thursday, for example, was consumed by our debate on how bad a haircut has to be before you can take a sick day to recover. I contend it has to sever an artery. I spent the week plotting to make a shook my assistant. My status does not matter. I am only an assistant. So let me get this straight. None of you Dad blasted Liberty Gibbets did any work this week? Don't tell me you're jumping on that bandwagon, too. Next week, I'll get a lot done. Now that I have the best assistant in the department. I don't know about that. My assistant is plenty capable. Your assistant is pathetic. He is not pathetic. My assistant can beat your assistant at anything, anywhere. Just name the time and place. Is this really a wise idea? What did I tell you before? Everything I do is a reflection on you. 
Maybe you'd like to have a little wager. Maybe I would. Two assistants go in, but only one comes out unmarked. I'm afraid. If you win this, you can have the piano in the office. I don't play. You know the rules. You realize I never even wanted to have an assistant. Neither did I. But I couldn't stand the thought of you getting a leg up on me. I'm loath to admit it, but I felt the same way. I guess we were both pretty petty. I guess we were. Oh, well. Begin! <laughs> so bad not if i mark you first so how do you like being a manager well i accomplished nothing except toying with the lives of innocent people for my own amusement that's my favorite part too could i just go back to being an engineer I think I've made my point that engineers have a career path. There was a point to all this? How about that? You call yourself an assistant? You're fired! Go back to being an intern! Oh, thank you. I think we all learned a valuable lesson this week. Not me. I learned not to keep a llama in my cubicle. You mean that new stench isn't you? No, we learned that it's not perks or promotions that keep us at our jobs. It's loyalty and love of our work. The passion that we, as engineers, approach each day with. Delbert, Delbert. Uh, yes? I appreciate your heartfelt sentiments. And with that in mind, I'm decreasing your pay, cutting your benefits, and increasing your hours. Everybody back to work. That's exactly my point. I don't care. I don't care. I really don't care. We have another security problem. This time, an employee named Alan. I didn't catch the last name. Have everyone named Alan killed immediately. Right away, sir. Wait a minute. My name is Alan. Did anyone else just lose their appetite? Absolutely not. No, no, not me, no. Me neither. I'll feign interest and ask you what you're doing, but my subtext will be I don't really care. I'm trying to buy a computer over the internet. So you're on the computer trying to buy a computer from essentially another computer. And your point is? Who needs you? What are you talking about? Isn't it obvious? You're letting the computers take over. You're a useless appendage doomed to atrophy and finally disappear. Stop turning this into a science fiction story. I'm just trying to buy a computer. Ah, that's what they want you to think. What you're really doing is helping computers all around the world link up to form a colossal super being. Once it achieves consciousness, I'd say the human race has pretty much served its purpose. And I guess then the computers will try to get rid of us. Ah, don't worry. I have a plan to save humanity. That's very noble of you. When I say save, I mean as in I save stamps or I save old bottles. Oh, the 750A has a vector cooling system. But the 750B has dynamic memory caching and a modular backplane. Why must I be forced to choose? Can you live without those things? I don't see how that's possible. Maybe I can order a custom design model. One of these. One of those. Can't live without that. Oh, now that's a home computer system. The other engineers will be forced to bow before me. And it only costs what? $27,000. The other engineers won't even know you have it. They will if I have it delivered to the office. 
I'll give them some time to drool over it before I bring it home. Hmm, travel miles, vacation miles, phone miles, here it is, medical miles. I almost have enough miles to get a free hernia operation. Not necessarily when I need it, but whenever they have the excess capacity. Still, it's a good deal. Do you ever worry about putting your credit card information on the internet? That is the most ridiculous question I have ever heard. It is no riskier to use your credit card online than to use it in any store. Uh, make sure you sign the back. Thank you. Have a nice day. I hear you have excellent rates. It's got redundant RAID drives, 4 terabits each, 3 millisecond access time, built-in DSL, wireless game ports, flat panel 30-inch monitor. Wow! Ooh. Truly, you have ordered the finest home computer known to mankind. Well, I don't know if it's the finest ever. Can I touch it if I wash my hands first? Especially this one? I'll have to think about that. That's all I ask. Uh, what are you gonna name it? Don't be silly. Come on, what's its name? Bill. Excuse me. Don't worry, I do the same thing almost every time I get in the elevator. I don't know if it's the motion or what. I'm looking for someone named Dilbert. Sounds vaguely familiar. I have a package for him. I'll sign for it. Is the package complete and exactly what you ordered? Looks about right. Your name is Eunice? That's an alias I use when I go line dancing. I didn't know you needed an alias to line dance. You do when you kick as hard as I do. There's a big box by the elevators with your name on it. Why would an elevator have my name on it? Ah. Uh, I... <laughs> You may use my house key to tear open the box. It has very sharp teeth. No. We need the right tools for the job. I once killed a coyote with this key. It was very small. It might have been a potato. I have just the thing. The T-300 pocket knife. The T-300 is old technology, my friend. Gaze upon the T-400. Look like the next generation of computing to me. Don't be ridiculous. Of course it's... That's not what I ordered. It's old technology! To think I once respected you. Now the notion fills me with disgust. Oh, where have all the cowboys gone indeed? Don't write me off yet. This is clearly their mistake and they will rectify it. Mark my words. If you would like to start over, press 61. Any luck? I don't believe in luck. That's good, because if you did, you wouldn't have any. You've been on hold for an hour. I'm not on hold. I'm waiting for the right menu choice. If you want to speak to a live recording, press 63. If you want to speak with a representative of Congress, press 64. Tease. No good choices yet? Number 46 was promising, but I don't speak Mandarin and I'm not inquiring about a tractor. Dang, I didn't hear that one. That might have been the one. It's never the one. You think it's the one, but it's just the one that gives you more choices that aren't the one. CompuComp can't hide from me forever. I'll find a live person to talk to. What if they don't have any live people? They have to have people. Not necessarily. They could automate the ordering and billing systems and outsource all of the manufacturing functions. Are you trying to tell me that the world has already been taken over by computers and we just don't know it? Let's examine the evidence. So far, you've ordered a computer, on a computer, from a computer, and now you're listening to a computer. Where are the humans? Show me the humans. I see no humans in this process. Well, that's just crazy. Wait, this might be it. If you would like to speak with an unmotivated employee of a fulfillment house that we pay to take your calls, press 74. Aha! People! Thank you for calling uh, CompuComp or is perhaps CompuComp. I believe it's CompuComp. 
Yeah, then what are you calling me for if you know so much? Before I get to that, first of all, may I have your name? That way they know they're accountable. Uh, my name is, uh... Hold'em. Hold Hold'em uh, Callfielder. Aha, yes. Well then, Mr. Callfielder, I'm sure you want to make your customer satisfied, don't you? Yeah, it's all I live for. That, my minimum wage, and the hope that global warming kills all the rich people first. I'll take that as a yes. Anyway, I would like to return the computer you sent me and get the correct model. Well, according to our records, a Eunice says the computer was the right one. I don't know any Eunice. I used to line dance with a Eunice. Until the day she showed up wearing steel-toed boots. Right. Well, the point is, you owe me a new computer. I'm not authorized to approve that. Then I'd like to speak with your supervisor. All right. I'm getting a supervisor. I'm moving up the chain. Hello, this is a supervisor. My name is Colin... Colin Holden Phone. Can you approve sending me the computer I ordered? Oh, no, I can only do what my computer screen tells me to do. Well, can you talk to someone who can make a decision? Uh, there isn't anybody like that. No one exists who can override the information on the computer screen. I think I just said that only using different words. Look, I'm going to go down to your office. Uh, we don't have one. Warehouse? No. Headquarters? Uh-uh. Well, you must be somewhere. Where are you located? Uh, I'm not allowed to give out that information. Have a nice day. <sighs> Well, Dilbert, I see you're in on this little scam, too. What scam? This is the post office. If you know the secret password, they give you free merchandise. I have no idea what you're talking about. The secret password is Bob Johnson. If you say Bob Johnson, sometimes they'll go in the back and get a package for you. It also works with Jim Smith, but you have to get here early. Don't they ask you for ID? They know me here. They really know how to make me feel wanted. I'd like to mail this package. Next. Bob Johnson. No can do. No can do? You used regular adhesive tape. Can't you read the sign? No. That's unacceptable postal packaging. I'll have no part of it. Couldn't you just put some regulation tape on it? You've got a whole roll of it right there. There you go. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. See you next week. I'll find it and I'll return that piece of junk in person. Come on, you cowardly Uber computer. Show yourself. Looks like somebody's not working. I'm working. I didn't say it was you. Nothing but post office mailboxes. It's as if CompuComp doesn't even exist. Uh, thank you for calling... Comp, you comp. How may I help you? <gasps> Are you telling me we're the Comp, you comp company? No, we're just the fulfillment center. I'm not allowed to tell you where Comp, you comp is. Greetings, boys. Would you mind pointing me in the direction of my office? It's him! Eunice, no! No, don't let him kick me again! I'll tell you where Comp, you comp is. I'll tell you everything! Shouldn't we be working? He's right, you know. It's a question of appropriateness. There it is. I don't see any people. There has to be someone here someplace. upon the magnificent CompuCom. Hi, I'm Dilbert, and these are... It's a rhetorical question. I don't care. Well, then who do I talk to about returning this computer? Silence! Their customer service leaves something to be desired. Silence? Who do you think you are? Who am I? Where were you three seconds ago? Get the wax out of your ears, human. A problem, I might add, computers don't suffer from. I am CompuCom, the magnificent. I am created from the synthesis of worldwide computers networked together. So it's true. You bet your ass. 
Something else computers don't have. Okay, then you should be able to take back this computer and give me the right one. The cow does not order the farmer around. Good point there. That is not a good point. CompuComp is just a computer, not some superior form of life. I am your servant, almighty one! Silence! Leave here now. I'm not some clerk. Perhaps you weren't listening. I am CompuComp! I heard you, but I'm not leaving until you exchange this computer. And I'm not believing you're some kind of superior life form. Perhaps we could settle this with some sort of competition. Fine. We'll see if you're superior to humans by having a little competition. That was my idea. You're doing nothing but imitating me. Oh, yeah? Maybe it's you who is imitating me. Very mature, Dilbert. Good job representing our species. Best two out of three events. You pick them. If I win, you take this computer back and give me the one I ordered. If you win, I agree you're a superior form of life. What's this penny ante crap? You're playing CompuComp the Magnificent. If you win, I'll take the computer back and give you the one you ordered. But if I win, I download your brains and dispose of your bodies. I really want that computer I ordered. All right. Deal. Deal! Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Too late. It's a deal. All right. First, I pick chess. Big surprise. And badminton. Badminton? Badminton's fun. You don't like badminton? No, no. I love it. And Scrabble! Dog Bart. This better be important. My life depends on it. Dog Bart, seriously. I love doing that. I need you to bring some things from the house. Chessboard? Averages. Badminton set? Beverages. Scrabble board? Beverages. My sneakers? Beverages. All right. Beverages. I have already calculated four billion potential outcomes. Guess how many of those has you winning? That's right. None. Hey, I didn't jabber when you were trying to make a move. Do you know how many ways the human body can spontaneously malfunction, resulting in instant death? Seven million! Can't let it get to me. Does anyone feel itchy? Seems very itchy in here. Uh, uh, stupid mind games? Have you ever wondered what happens when humans die? I know the answer. All I'm saying is... Big surprise. Rook to Queen 4. Checkmate. You have proven you are inferior. That's only one event. We're not done yet. Close the door. You're letting in a draft. Looks like a tough job you have here. Oh, I'll say. Talk about dull. You ever try making small talk with CompuComp? And arrogant. You'd think he wouldn't mind talking sports or TV once in a while. You know, but what with controlling the world and all, he just can't be bothered. I can't. I gotta fix the stock market. I can't. I gotta start a war. Blah, 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 blah. You know what it's like working for a computer? He don't eat. He don't sleep. He don't get sick. So you can imagine my benefits package. I'm the last human being in this company. I'll bet you're thirsty. Well, I wouldn't mind wetting my whistle. Go, human beings. Ah, oh, that's good. What happens if the plug gets pulled? <laughs> oh, nothing much. If CompuComp loses power, the world will come to an end, that's all. <laughs> Another? Uh, don't mind if I do. <gasps> that's 20 to 19. Take that! And that! And that! Do you think Dilbert will realize if he hits it softly, it won't bounce all the way back? Maybe someone should yell that. Shut up! No coaching! Do over! Do over! Do over? You were on the line! No, I wasn't! Uh, I wasn't ready! Yes, you were! You're always ready! Uh, I hurt my leg! Ow! Ow! You don't have a leg! Stop being a crybaby. Tie score.
Oh, <laughs> uh, that soda goes right through me. <laughs> Have you ever been to Niagara Falls? It's beautiful this time of year. Uh, mm. Oh, boy. We're all tied up. One event apiece. Scrabble shall determine the victor. Intern! Yes? Put all my letters in the middle of the board. That's not a word. It will be in a minute. After the hurricane, the streets were covered with... with Quasin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Do you challenge? Gah! You're letting our entire species down, you moron! Do the insults help? It can't hurt. You stupid putz! But the best thing about the ocean is that on a clear night, you can see thousands of stars tinkling. Mm. Oh, 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 oh! My, 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 my! Oh, wow! Hey, promise you won't let anyone pull that plug. If you do, the whole world will come to an end. I promise. Oh, gee, that's right. There's no bathroom in this darn building. Luckily, his legs were crossed when I made that promise. I am Compu, Compu Magnificent! <gasps> I am Compu, Compu Magnificent! I am Compu, you! Did you feel something? No. You should probably have that checked out by a doctor. I am Compu Comp the Magnificent! I am Compu Comp the... Well, I think I proved my point. How about a game of wiffle ball? Ping pong? Now, Kaki, how about a shuffleboard? It can be very challenging. Well, the hernia operation was a success. I'll be up and around in no time. But you didn't have a hernia. No, but it seems such a waste not to use the miles. In breaking news, the giant CompuComp company is in deep whip quasin after a general power failure. A new CEO was named today, Bob Johnson, also known as Jim Smith, also known as Eunice. In an unexpected move, he vowed to loot the assets of the company and, as he put it, quote, skedaddle. Yeah, it all worked out for the best. We didn't need any superior life forms. That's right. We like it the way things are right now. Each of us is exactly as superior as the next. No more, no less. Is uh, anyone gonna eat that last napkin? How did I end up with all this obsolete equipment? It seems to multiply. Uh, 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 not in the recycling container. Recycling container? I thought it was my garbage can. No, it's a recycling container. No obsolete equipment, no food, no toenail clippings, no dead animals. I'm probably forgetting a few things. Well, fine. How do I throw away my obsolete equipment? There's a phone number you call. They come and take it away. What's the phone number? I wouldn't know. Who's they? My area of expertise is limited to what you can't put in the can, plus the certain knowledge that a phone number of some sort exists. Your new computer just arrived. Everything you owned this morning is junk. Thank you, Ashok. And here's a modem for your troubles. What can I do with a 2400 BPS modem? You can try to throw it away, but you need to know a secret phone number. I think it has a nine in it. So you have seen the secret number? No, 
but a lot of your unknown phone numbers have nines in them. I read that. <sighs> Ow! What if I take some of this old stuff home and throw it away from there? That would be stealing from the company! How can you steal garbage? You could tuck it in your pants. Obsolete equipment isn't officially garbage until you call that phone number and they take it off our books. I hear everyone is dumping their obsolete equipment in here. Who told you that? They didn't give me their names. Why can't you be more like Wally? He's a problem solver. If we can't figure out how to throw anything away, we're doomed to suffocate here in our own waste. I'm afraid of suffocating in waste! Well, get over it. Things are only going to get worse until we're so cramped we can't possibly do any work. You don't do any work now. But I depend on other people to be working. It's like a delicate ecosystem. You can't have all rabbits or all foxes. You need some of both. And to think I emigrated here for the wide open spaces alluded to in folk songs and travel brochures. Never have I felt so betrayed. Somewhere in the uncharted depths of this almost criminally mismanaged company, there's got to be some extra space. Just one unoccupied cubicle where we can store our non-disposables. And I'm going to find it. It's all Zeke. Actually, that's young Zeke who takes really bad care of himself. Excuse me, can I talk now? Yes! Of course. Excuse us. So sorry. They tell a story in the men's room of an unused cubicle. Empty, glistening, pristine. It shines under the fluorescent lights like a beacon of hope to those seeking extra storage space. You are crazy, young man who takes really bad care of himself. That is crazy talk. You crazy, am I, intern? Well, grab your crap and follow me. Ah! Oh, why did I do that? I guess I am crazy after all. Crazy and... Unable to walk. Good call. According to the floor plan, it looks like there could be an unused cubicle just around the next bend. Look! Could it be? Zeke was right. The legends of the empty cubicle are true. It's pristine. This baby has never been used. And it's all ours. I claim this cubicle for engineering. Hey, wait a minute. We've gone in a circle. How could you not know there was an empty cubicle right next to you? I never had a reason to go in that direction. The important thing is that we found an empty cubicle. Shh! Keep it down. Be quiet. If he is not silenced, the secret of this precious cube will be revealed. I must sacrifice myself. Hey, kids, what's all the noise elation about? <laughs> Dilbish, nice tie. Howard, nice uh, intern in your face. Ooh, what's this, a vacant cubicle? No. no. Uh -uh. Marketing could sure use the space for uh, marketing stuff. It's ours. You know the rules. Empty cubicles are up for grabs. It's not empty. It belongs to, uh, the new guy. His name is, uh... Todd! And he's a new guy. Which explains why he's not here yet. Uh, being new and all. <laughs> I haven't heard about this Todd fellow. He's an unbelievable guy. Totally unreal. No one has ever disliked him! Oh, right, right. Todd. T-O-D-D. -D. <laughs> Your enunciation leaves a lot to be desired. I thought you said Todd. We did. Well, if you had just said Todd in the first place, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I apologize for our oversight. Todd. Old Todd. Good old Toddy. Toddo. Great guy. Love Todd. You tell Todd I drop by to say hey. Oh, we will. Oh, that was close. My upper lip is moist with perspiration. Well, nice work, everybody. Where did you come up with the name Todd? From my mind, where I come up with everything I think and say. <sighs> well, that's the last load of my obsolete equipment. It looks just like someone works here. I had a nameplate made. Very nice. <gasps> Is Todd in there? Todd! Todd! Where the heck are you, you devil? Everyone in marketing is talking about him. I hear he's amazing. I just had to meet him in person. Todd is away. 
on important business. That figures. While you two are lollygagging around, Todd's having important meetings with important people. I don't know how he does it all. Oh, my <gasps> Todd, look at all of this. The man must be some sort of engineering genius. Why can't you two have this much equipment in your cubicles? It's not really the quantity of the equipment that matters. Yes, yes, you're right. Todd does seem to have those other intangible qualities as well, the kind that make women love him and men wish they were women. Although, I confess, I've wished that long before Todd burst on the scene. He's quite the miracle worker. Yes, so I'm told, so I'm told. Straw into gold, take your firsborn, that sort of thing. <laughs> no, oh, wait, wait, wait a second, hold the wire. That's Rumpelstiltskin, little dwarf bastard. We have work to do. Right. I'll see you two at the project meeting. Do you think anything bad can happen from this? I don't see how. And on that, I think we're all in agreement. On what? Haven't you been paying attention? Paying attention? You just walked in here, sat down, and said, and on that, I think we're all in agreement. You're saying you don't agree? It's a difficult point to argue. Well, you should all thank Todd I don't fire y'all on the spot. As the new project head, it'll be his responsibility to deal with you dunderheads. What? You're letting Todd head the project? He's Todd. You have a problem with that? Yes. Looks like I've put the fear of Todd in you now, haven't I? <laughs> Great. Now Todd is our project leader. That means we have to do his work plus our own work. Plus my work. Plus Wally's work, as usual. That's a lot of work. But if we reveal Todd's non-existence, we lose our spare cubicle. There's no way out. What would Todd do in a situation like this? There is no Todd. We made him up. I'm not so sure. He has a cubicle and a job. That's all I have, and I exist. You don't exist. I'm probably a bad example. You'll just have to wait. Todd gave us a six-hour lunch break today. He's allowed. He's project head. It's in Todd's hands now. <laughs> Uh-oh. This could only mean one thing. Mr. Catbert, Director of Human Resources, what brings you out of your lair? I understand you've been praising Todd. You could say that. His personnel folder is curiously empty. No photo, no work history. <laughs> very, very suspicious. Uh, Todd works in mysterious ways. He won't work at all if his file doesn't turn up soon. You see, I don't believe in Todd. You take that back! There is no Todd. Todd exists only in your minds. <laughs> Where's your Todd? Now. <laughs> we need to give Todd a history and throw Catbird off the scent. I'm into the personnel database. Create a new employee record. We need a picture of him. Why don't we make a composite? Good idea. I'll morph our pictures and make Todd in our image. Oh! 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 We have seen the face of Todd, and he is us. According to your records, every one of your employees is rated good. To be honest, I can't tell them apart most days. Hmm. Doesn't that crush their motivation and eliminate their will to live? They do walk around with their shoulders drooped. But I assumed they weren't drinking enough milk. Well, that's all well and good, but we can have more fun with them than that. We can? We can punish them arbitrarily. We can do that? We can if we make it look like a policy. The new policy is that all work groups must have a proper distribution of performance ratings. At least 20% of your employees must be ranked in the lowest rating. You mean unsatisfactory? Lower. Incompetent? Lower, lower. You mean... Exactly. If the beloved Todd is rated highest, followed by Dilbert, 
And Alice, well, I think you see where I'm going. Can you give me a hint? Wally, I had to lower your performance rating from a solid good to our lowest rating, which is retard. Retard? I know it sounds harsh, perhaps even politically incorrect, but our new policy is to have a normal distribution of performance reviews, and with Todd taking the top spot, well, it just wrecked the curve for the rest of you. I guess I'll get used to it. You will, but you'll do it somewhere else. It's company policy that I fire anyone who is at the lowest rating. The strange thing is that I suddenly feel motivated. Run along. This is the greatest injustice there could ever be. Yes, sir, Bob. We'll keep in touch. We will? No. I just say it to reduce the awkwardness. Well, so long. I'm a free man. This isn't right. If we hadn't created Todd, Wally would still have his job. And we wouldn't have to be doing Todd's work plus our own. Todd must die. We will kill Todd so dead that no one will ever know he existed in the first place. I'm not usually in favor of killing people, but this does seem justified. <gasps> How do we kill someone who doesn't exist? Indirectly. We'll ruin his reputation. Todd is about to become the most incompetent project leader in the history of the world. Send an email in Todd's name to all employees. Very good. What's the worst product idea in the world? How about that facelift in a can product we introduced about five years ago? The one that shrunk your head to the size of a grapefruit. Perfect. Todd is going to suggest reintroducing facelift in a can. His reputation will surely be ruined. Email from Todd. Facelift in a can? That just might work. Try it, dude. If you don't, you're a loser. Can't we just get something pierced, like an eyebrow or something? What if it makes my head tiny for the rest of my life? Shaw, sure. piercing is so passe. Shrunken heads is in. Do me first. Cool. <laughs> okay, do me. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, looking fine. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. I'm dumbfounded. And flummoxed. And... Thursday. Well, I guess that's the end of Todd. Yep, or it would be if it wasn't for the fact that it's the biggest success the company's ever had. What? Would anyone like to join me in praising Todd? Facelift in a can is our new flagship product. We have 100% market share and first week sales of $1 billion, which I have it on good authority is more than a million and less than a skillion. Oh, no. That can't be right. Apparently, head shrinking is the new in thing kids enjoy doing to themselves to shock their parents. I want you to get cracking on a follow-up. Amputation in a jar. Maybe this is a good time to tell you we were responsible for facelift in a can. Todd had nothing to do with it. How dare you? This is Todd's work. Why, if I was 30 pounds lighter and 30 years younger and 30% stronger and uh, uh, 30 times taller, I'd pop you one. Now, you all ought to get up and march into Todd's cubicle and beg. Yes, beg. Grovel for Todd's forgiveness. I'll be in my office doing some very important high-level breathing. Don't answer it. But I can't stand a ringing phone! Deal with it, Howard. This is the only way. If we don't answer his phone or his email, if we don't reschedule his appointments and stop juggling his calendar, if we don't do any of his errands or his work, then Todd will return to the nothingness from which he came. It may mean losing the cubicle. It's a small price to pay for our sanity. Why are you all loitering in Todd's cube? We were just... Waiting for him to return. Well, when he does, tell him to pack his stuff. Why? Is he fired? Oh, <laughs> no, no, I should say not. He's getting a corner office. An office? 
I've been at this lousy company for 10 years and I'm still in a cubicle. And he gets a corner office? That's it. It's over. How can I put this delicately? Todd is dead. Before you go on, let me thank you for putting that so delicately. It was really quite thoughtful. Todd never was. He isn't. He never will be. He never existed. We created Todd in our own image. We made him, and now we've destroyed him. Are you done? Yes. Good. That's the confession I was waiting to hear. Take him away, boys. These are them what killed Todd. <gasps> it's all a big mistake. There is no Todd. Oh, my next correspondence to Mama and Papa will certainly be a tale of woe. Tell us what happened and we'll recommend the light sentence. Nice try. But I happen to understand a little thing called the prisoner's dilemma. Is that so? You have no physical evidence of a crime, so you can only convict us if one of us rats out the others. And since we're all aware of that fact, no one will rat out anyone. And we'll be free in a matter of minutes. It was all Dilbert. I told him not to chop the body up, but he insisted. He said that's how he gets rid of all his victims. Oh, hi, Dilbert. Alice! He has always been evil. I felt it. But I never knew how evil until he would not stop plunging that fork into Todd's body. I stopped counting at 100. Oh, God. Hello, Dilbert. A shock! May I have that ice cream sandwich you promised me now? Look, we've got enough on you right now to put you away for the rest of your life. Plus 30 years. Plus 30 years? That doesn't make any sense. Why not give me life plus a thousand years? Keep pushing. This can't be happening. All I wanted was some extra cubicle space. That's all I wanted. Hello? Yes, this is Todd. Todd? How do we know it's Todd? How do we know this is not an act? An act of Todd? Is Todd's word not good enough for you? Sorry. Now listen carefully. I'm working on a top secret project for the government. All I can say is it uh, has something to do with the government and it's a secret. But you're alive. Alive and well. Do I sound dead to you? Unenthusiastic maybe, flat, uh, affectless, but not dead. Precisely. Now I've got to go. I've got to go do something with this uh, secret government thing. I understand. Good luck. Yeah, whatever. You lucked out, Judas. Dilbert. You're free to go. And you can thank Tad. Oh, I will. I will. How'd I do? Not well. But it doesn't matter. People want to believe Todd exists. So anything you say in the name of Todd, people will tend to buy. You see, you can play Todd. But you still can't play Dogbird. Amen. Well, back to work. Maybe I'll try a limp. You realize Todd's now a billionaire. And a Nobel Prize winner. Don't forget the special law they passed that allows him to be a bigamist. That was a coup. I understand. After he saves the rainforests and all the endangered species and feeds the starving, he's coming back to town and opening an actually fair-priced electronics store. Get out of here. That's Todd's word, not mine. <laughs> I just saw Todd. You're just drunk. <laughs> That's just what Todd would say. <laughs> Unless I'm a complete moron, you've invented some sort of a... steel banana? It's a model rocket. Well, my journey of self-discovery is ending early. You may commence bragging at any time. There's no need to brag. Stating the facts will be sufficient. Do as he does, not as he says. Does what? As you can see, I've equipped this model with a state-of-the-art Pico nuclear propulsion drive, an artificial intelligence guidance system, and a super-hardened ceramic casing. Yes, but can it do this? 
No further questions. You're gonna be the envy of every 12-year-old in the park. It's not for the park, it's for unmanned space exploration. As you know, I have long held firm in my beliefs that life in some form must exist in other places. My pleas for further study have gone largely unheeded, so I have taken it upon myself and programmed this to find any trace of life, no matter how faint, gather samples, and return directly to me when it's done. Oh, and looky, it has a button, too. I wish you hadn't done that. I know where you're coming from. It'll be okay. As soon as it collects some samples of alien life, it'll return directly to me. My first dying wish is to live, but since that's not working out, my second dying wish is to have an heir to my vast fortune. Your wife will be my incubator. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, whatever. Let's get one thing straight. It ain't free. We want a hundred dollars. And on my quarters. The unfertilized eggs are ready for implanting in the surrogate hillbilly. Hi. Hey. Just because I take money to make babies for other people, that don't make me no surrogate. Actually, it does. <gasps> that rocket poached your eggs. I know it ain't fair to do it this way, Flossie, but the bulls thank you well. Skanky. It's artificial nanomachine DNA. I've synthesized the very building blocks of robotic life. So you're saying the robots will be able to independently reproduce and evolve? Yes, I am. <laughs> When do you expect it to return? It depends how far it has to travel to find samples of new life. The only thing I know for sure is that it will return in the end. You know, it's lucky he has gallstones or this thing would have gone right through him. Is he going to be all right? Will he regain consciousness? And don't assume that because I'm his mother, I want a certain answer. Well, the lab guy says the rocket was covered with a mixture of genetic material, including alien, bovine, nanorobotic, hillbilly, and two dozen engineers. In a word, he's pregnant. Knocked up! I told him this would happen if he kept playing with rockets. You did? I'm very thorough in my warnings. We'll terminate the pregnancy at once, of course. Don't try it, Buster. That's my grandson in there. Or granddaughter, or grand cow. What were the other choices again? Alien and robot. Whatever it is, you'd better keep it alive. This is probably my one shot to be a grandmother, and I'm not letting anybody get in my way. 
his body can't support a baby. Unless we pump him so full of female hormones it scrambles his gender identity permanently. You know, if you doctors stopped worrying so much about the patient and started worrying more about the family, maybe we wouldn't be in the healthcare mess we're in. But it's not safe. It's not ethical. Oh, like you give a damn. Come on. You know you want to do it. <laughs> I gotta admit, it would be something. Yeah, we'll put something down on the chart. All right, what the hell. You'll tell him when he wakes up, won't you? Of course. Swear. Okay. <laughs> Maybe in the third trimester. My feet are like ice cubes. Is anyone else cold? It's exactly 72 degrees in here. The same as it's always been, and I might add, always will be. Well, tell that to my feet. Ratbert? I'm afraid of his slippers. You know what I feel like? I feel like ice cream. Does anyone want to share some dessert? You read my mind. Would you mind driving to the store and getting it? I don't want to be seen buying ice cream until I lose five pounds. Only five? Is that nice? If your feet are cold, won't ice cream make it worse? Those are completely unrelated things. I'll need some money. Rats don't have money. I'll give you a check. A check? It's a convenience store. It's a $5 purchase. Who writes a check for $5? I give up. Forget it. If you must pick on every little thing I do, then I don't want any ice cream or cupcakes or anything sweet and delicious. I'll just go to my room and put on my socks. Fine. Fine. Tiny. And those two, they make me... Chapstick. Sassy. We heard about your accident with the rocket. Someday you'll look back at it and laugh. We already started. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, are there any after effects? None that I know of. The air is so dry in here. Doesn't it wreak havoc on your skin? No. Moisturizer? No, no thanks. thanks. Who wants a peppermint? Peppermint? Moisturizer? That's not a briefcase, it's a frickin' purse. What else do you have in that thing? Not much. My romance novel, some moist towelettes, chapstick, extra pair of socks in case mine get a run... Uh, I mean, uh, ripped. You know how socks can get ripped. No. I do. You mind if I borrow those? Keep them. You're my witness. And I got these at the drugstore. They're excellent for absorbing... spills. Oh my god! I just have to try one test. Gilbert, would you like to date me? Not in a million years. Yep, he's a woman. As you know, our older employees, the ones with the highest salaries, are not dying at the rate we'd hoped. We've decided to reduce health care benefits to speed up the natural process. Delbert, are you listening to any of this? Actually, yes. I've suddenly developed the ability to multitask. An hour ago, I was talking and thinking and typing at the same time. Men can't multitask! Only women can multitask! And lately, I've started to appreciate conversations that have no meaningful content. Is anyone else cold? 
I am. You can borrow one of my afghans. This is pretty. Did you make it yourself? I wish. As I was saying, your new health maintenance organization will be somewhat less robust than the old one. How much less? They operate out of an Italian restaurant. How can doctors work in a restaurant? They don't have doctors per se, but if you tip the waiters enough, they'll remove your appendix and put it in a doggy bag for you. They also have early bird specials. They're very service-oriented. Sometimes I go there just for the sponge baths. What is our maternity leave policy? Our maternity leave policy is that if you feel maternal, you should leave. That's, That's discrimination, discrimination against, against women. women. Every day, this company becomes less family-friendly. Little by little, you chip away at our dignity. You could get a job someplace else. Wally, I'm not asking you to solve my problem. That was a plea for empathy. You could buy supplemental health insurance. Stop trying to solve my problems. I'm just sharing my feelings. Dilbert, if I wasn't so completely consumed by my own problems, I might be persuaded to think there was something wrong with you. Anyway, here's their pamphlets. Also a takeout menu. They do delivery. And may I recommend the prostate exam Marcella. Hmm. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for my appointment. I'm having dermabrasion and tiramisu. I feel different since my accident with the model rocket. Mm -hmm. Go on. For example, I no longer love my computer. I see it simply as a tool for increasing my productivity. Mm -hmm. This morning, I pumped my own gas, and I noticed for the first time, it makes my hands smell. Uh-huh. And what do you think of performance reviews? I hate them. I never cared before, but now the thought of being criticized drives me crazy. And do you constantly find yourself wishing you could take a nap? Yes! Do you know what's wrong with me? Yes, you've turned into a woman. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I'm serious. You're a woman. That's impossible! Well, I can prove it. Now, tell me what you're wearing. White short sleeve shirt, red and black necktie, black capri pants, white socks, and black shoes. What does that prove? It proves you're a woman. A man would have to look. Wally! What are you wearing? Uh, I don't know. I'll give you a hint. It's the same thing you wear every day. Oh. Is it blue? Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ashok, what clothes are you wearing? Um, I don't know. Possibly a parka or some sort of sweater? Is that close? Ah! Loud Howard, what color is your shirt? Is it a loud color? What's wrong with you? Are you all brain dead? No, we're male. You seem very upset. Maybe you could take a pill for that. Stop trying to solve my problems! You're all so... Ah! Do you want to hear the most ridiculous thing? It's what I live for. Our director of human resources thinks I'm a woman. <laughs> Is that funny or what? Looks like you need bigger pants. I don't need bigger pants. I need smaller pants. That way I'll have incentive to lose weight. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'll have to wear something else. Where did I put my sewing machine? You don't own a sewing machine. Really? Mom, can I borrow your sewing machine? Mine doesn't exist. It's in the sewing room, dear. Did you tell him yet? I'm waiting for the third trimester. That's not going to work. We have some major adjustments to make here. I need time to ease into the grandmother thing. And besides, I could use a good laugh. I hear ya. There. That should be roomy enough. I didn't even know I could sew. How do you like my new shirt? I made it myself. I wouldn't call that a shirt. Of course it's a shirt. 
I made it extra long so you can't tell I'm not wearing any pants. It's an innovation. It's a dress. You're just jealous, but don't be. I'm planning to sew you one of these for your birthday. Hmm. Dilbert, I think Dogbert wants to tell you something. Really? What? Sit down. Ooh. I wasn't going to tell you this until the third trimester, but I see you're coming right along there, so... What are you talking about? Dilbert, you know that experimental rocket that had its way with you? I wouldn't put it that way. You will when we tell you what we know. The rocket had genetic material from a variety of sources. A wide variety. Quite varied. Maybe you could name a few. Hillbilly. Space alien. Robot. Cow. And several dozen engineers. Wow. Do I make a good life-seeking rocket or what? But that's not the best part. What's the best part? Table for one, obviously. I need to see a doctor, or at least a waiter, right away. What is your problem? Do I have to say in front of the other customers? Yes, you do. I'm pregnant with an alien baby. Or perhaps a cow, or a hillbilly, or a robot. Well, I recommend the Dr. Eduardo, table four. He handles our nut cases. I'm not a nut. If I were a nut, would I be dressed like this? Good point. In that case, I recommend Dr. Eduardo, table four. That's more like it. My name is Eduardo. I will be your doctor. And may I get you a beverage? Ginger ale, please. And what seems to be your problem? I think I'm pregnant. Say <gasps> ah. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Ah. I don't see anything down there. I don't think you can see that one. Take off your dress. It's a shirt. Yes. I will be right back with your drinks. Great. Nothing to read but this menu. And it's probably been handled by a million sick people already. We can't afford an ultrasound machine, but our busboy Juan is the next best thing. Don't move. I will make a sound wave, and Juan will create a picture from the sonic signature. Mother of God! Don't you think you're overreacting a little? <sighs> Next week on Dilbert. What? Dilbert's having a baby! The baby might be an alien, or a robot, or a cow, or a hillbilly, or an engineer. Dime a dozen. Do your friends think you dress too sexy? Can you help me publish a book about my pregnancy? I need the money. Follow me. How much news can you afford? Tonight we take you to meet this curious man in a story we call A Womb with a Stew. Michael Jackson already has an order in for three of them. Join us tomorrow on Primeline when we begin gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the fetus custody battle of the century. Please rise for the honorable Judge Stone Cold Steve Austin! Austin 316 says order in the court. Oh, oh, it's coming. Last time on Dilbert. So I have programmed this to find any trace of life, gather samples, and return directly to me when it's done. The unfertilized eggs are ready for implanting in the surrogate hillbilly. 
It's artificial nanomachine DNA. When do you expect it to return? The only thing I know for sure is that it will return in the end. In a word, he's pregnant. Knocked up. You'll tell him when he wakes up, won't you? Maybe in the third trimester. Your new health maintenance organization will be somewhat less robust than the old one. How much less? They operate out of an Italian restaurant. I need to see a doctor, or at least a waiter, right away. Don't move. I will make a sound wave, and Juan will create a picture from the sonic signature. What's in there? Sweet mother of God! Don't you think you're overreacting a little? No. And now for our opening title sequence. Everyone sing along! Are you telling me this is what's inside me? Oh, the ultrasound never lies. That's not ultrasound! Your busboy drew this sketch while you made booping sounds at my stomach! If you're not satisfied, I can take it off your bill. Uh, let, let me speak with the manager. I'm sorry, but I don't believe my baby is a bowl of fruit. And a carefully draped tablecloth. I want a second opinion. How about a seascape with light coming through a wave? Very beautiful. I demand to see an actual doctor. Your health plan doesn't cover that, but I can offer you fresh ground pepper, warm to body temperature under my arm. Great. I have an unidentified baby in me, and my health care plan doesn't include health care. Maybe you should sell your story to the tabloids. I could never stoop so low. Here's a woman who gave birth to 25 babies, each one the size of a peanut. They gave her a million dollars. And a cigar box to use as a nursery. I don't need their money. I still have a job. I have savings. For now. So, I understand I'm gonna be an uncle? Unless it's a girl, then I'll be an aunt. Shouldn't you be swimming in the sewer or something? I'm taking a shortcut. So you're basically a pregnant woman. I hope you won't treat me any differently. Would you mind buying the cake for a Shook's birthday celebration? I don't mind. I suddenly enjoy shopping for pastries. But back to my point. I don't want to be treated any differently. Perish the thought. By the way, would you mind planning our next off-site staff meeting? I'll do it, but only because I want it done right. That's the same reason Alice always gives. <laughs> Sucker! I think we should talk about maternity leave. I ever tell you about the woman who had 25 babies, each one the size of a peanut? I fired her before she delivered. You can't fire someone for being pregnant. That's against the law. It was strictly for safety reasons. I was afraid she'd go into labor and start spraying those babies like a Tommy gun. Someone could have lost an eye. That is discrimination. Don't get your oversized panties in a bunch, Dilberta. You got a good month before your performance goes all to hell and I fire you. If I lose my job, how will I afford this baby? I should have thought of that before you became a freak of nature. My work will not be affected by this pregnancy. No one here will even know about it unless you tell them. I'll try to hold it in. <laughs> It's like holding in a sneeze. I'm gonna break a rib. Can I tell one person just one? Well, if it hurts that bad, I guess one person would be okay. What? Gilbert's having a baby! Did you see the new coffee mugs? The Skywriter spelled your name wrong, but everyone knew what they meant. If you give birth to a hideous alien creature, would you name it Wally? Why do you want a hideous creature named after you? Someday I want to turn on the news and hear Wally destroys a small town, National Guard, helpless. If it's a girl monster, name it Alice. It's not a monster. It's either an alien or a cow or a robot or a hillbilly or an engineer. Any one of those could destroy a town. Not the cow. If the cow was part alien, it could. Well, maybe if it shot fire out of its nostrils. Stop talking about my baby that way. Please, leave me alone. All right. I have to go plan the off-site meeting anyway. Um, actually, our pointy-haired boss asked me to do it this year. You're horning in on my turf? Can't fight. My money's on the pink one. We're not going to fight. 
We're going to collaborate and support each other like sisters in this bastion of testosterone. Yes, that's right. We are. Nice dress, Dilbert. I love what you're doing with your hair, Alice. Which? Tramp. Are you telling me the company has no maternity leave program? Well, we believe that maternity benefits encourage unwed fathers to get pregnant. That is ridiculous. Oh, is it? People die of old age so they can collect life insurance. Explain that. That's your argument? That doesn't even make sense. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm off of you, son, by some. I'm selfish. <laughs> No wonder you're loopy. That stuff will rot your brain. Oh. <laughs> you know, Dilbert, as much as I love solving employee problems, I like making this noise even better. <laughs> wow, man, that is amazing. <laughs> so you're saying I'll receive no maternity benefits? <laughs> Excuse me while I run back and forth for no reason. <laughs> Tell you what, if you can squeeze out the little mutant during your coffee break, I won't dock your back. <laughs> I like my chances. So, what's your story? Listen up, I need someone to play an angry quadrosexual for a two o'clock taping. You, report to Studio Triple F. Okay, I need cousins who plan to marry. Studio C. And lastly, huge men who look like women and date tiny women who look like men but are used as handbags. That's all for today. Uh, excuse me. I'm having a baby. The hospital's one street over. No, I mean, it would be a good topic for a show. People have babies all the time. What's your hook? I'm a man. That's not enough. What else you got? Uh, the baby might be an alien, or a robot, or a cow, or a hillbilly, or an engineer. Dime a dozen. Do your friends think you dress too sexy? Uh, no one has mentioned it. If your mother steals your boyfriend, call me. Can you help me publish a book about my pregnancy? I need the money. Are you willing to wear a hidden microphone and incriminate your friends? My only friend is Dogbert. Dogbert is your friend? Why didn't you say so? You know him? We worked together during the Watergate scandal when his code name was Deep Throat. Don't tell him I mentioned that. About my book? I'll help you. But first we need to stir the pot. Stir the pot? What you have is a little story. We need to whip it into a big story. How do we do that? Follow me. We'd like to see Mr. Big. He doesn't take visitors. We're friends of Dogbird. Go right in. How much news can you afford? We want a standard seed story. You get 10% of the back end. Sounds fair. What's a seed story? I apologize for him. He was raised in a hollow tree. A seed story is one that will grow into a media frenzy once it has been planted. Then the media frenzy replaces the original story and becomes the bigger story. That's how we manufacture the news. But my story is real. I'm a pregnant man who doesn't know who the genetic mother and father are. That's news. No, that's just a fascinating fact. It isn't news until we say it is. Shall we stir the pot? Now back to you. Insert name. In the studio. Blair. We have a pregnant man, genetic parents unknown. I want total saturation. Let's do it up right.
Tonight on Primeline, the case of the pregnant man. Who are the real genetic parents? Aliens? Hillbillies? Robots? Cows or engineers? Tonight we take you to meet this curious man in a story we call A Womb with a Stew. And you've heard about this guy? Well, he's sort of a guy. And he's reportedly a surrogate mother for an alien hillbilly robot engineer cow baby. What? Oh, no. Oh. Michael Jackson already has an order in for three of them. <laughs> part cow, part engineer. And do you think it'll spend a lot of nights surfing the internet and milking itself? <laughs> Leave us alone! Leave us alone! Yeah. Very convincing. Who is Gilbert? And how will neighbors take to an alien in their midst? Americans are asking, what What's is going on? Just have a seat. Off his drudge, and put this on. Alien's daddy. Dilbert, can an alien baby love? But he's Dilbert already asking the questions. Has it this is how it's done. Way? They'll get your side later. This brings up the obvious question. What are your feelings about the upcoming landmark custody battle over your unborn? Custody battle? There's no custody battle. There will be tomorrow. Join us tomorrow on Primeline when we begin gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the fetus custody battle of the century in a story we call It's a Woonderful Strife. I'm already casting the miniseries in my head. I don't know if you can hear me in there. Studies have been inconclusive. Unfortunately, you're the only one I can talk to right now. Don't take this the wrong way, but I don't mind losing the custody battle. I'm not exactly qualified to be a parent. I'm more than happy to let you go to a better home with real parents. But if custody is awarded to the wrong people, and there are plenty of those, I'll protect you with everything I've got, little guy. If you agree, kick twice. If you disagree, kick just once. Ooh. If you at home would like to vote on who you would prefer to be awarded custody of the mystery fetus, call 900-555-1234. Each call is $4. Proceeds will be donated to someone, but don't ask to see a receipt. I hope this doesn't become undignified. Please rise for the honorable... Judge Stone Cold Steve Austin! Cold become a judge. Both sides waive their rights to an actual judge. We did? He's very big with the teen demographic. We'll get pick up on all the networks. What about justice? It didn't do well with the focus groups. Austin 316 says order in the court. Let's have opening arguments in the custody case of Dilbert versus the aliens, robots, cows, hillbillies, a billionaire, and 17 engineers. Your Honor, my clients demand custody of the baby in Dilbert's womb. Or stomach. Or upper colon, wherever it is. They believe they can give it a more wholesome family life. They want to raise the child together? They make a very effective family unit. For one thing, you'll never want for milk. And you've got your alien technology for fighting diseases. You've got your billionaire's resources. Your robots for domestic chores. And your hillbillies for... For... Uh... If you got a woodchuck's problem, we'll kill them and cook them. Exactly. And 17 engineers to explain things, no matter how much you insist you don't need to know. If I may elaborate on that, I... I... Uh, uh, uh... You make a strong case, so let's begin the character assassination. Is it true you annihilated the planet of Nebular 5, a world inhabited entirely by teddy bears? Sometimes, in a meeting, Dilbert will pick up a shook our intern and just shake the bejesus out of him. So you admit that you chew cud. <laughs> 
All I'm saying is that when we collect money to buy someone a birthday card, it always comes back lighter after Dilbert has the envelope. Hey, I've heard enough. I'm prepared to award custody to the freaks. Wait! I haven't had a chance to speak on my own behalf. We have two more minutes, Stone Cold. You've got two minutes. I'll put Plan B into motion. At first, I felt I was nothing more than luggage for the fetus inside me. But over time, I've developed feelings for this baby. I didn't understand them at first, but now I know they are feelings of motherly love. <laughs> My only goal is to do what's best for this baby. Maybe that means I don't raise it myself, but I will never, ever turn my baby over to them. <gasps> they don't care about this baby. They each have their own selfish motives. Whatever you decide, Judge Stone Cold, please use your wisdom and compassion in making your decision. Thank you. You want compassion? Take your ass to church. Custody is awarded to the freaks. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. Never! No! I'll give you a billion dollars for the baby. That's billion with a B? No! Ah. Oh my! Where did you send it, Dilbert? Think of it as a student exchange program, Mom. Did it look like you? In a lot of ways? It did. Ever since we sent our only child away when we thought our planet was to be destroyed, we have been so lonely. Who knew our planet would survive the cataclysm? The weather reports are never accurate. <gasps> I wonder if that's the package from Dogbird.
I'm sure you all remember the disaster at last year's picnic when our wieners turned out to be defective. I almost lost an eye. But the buns were excellent. Yes, they were. But this year we can't rest on our buns no matter how plump and delicious they might be. You will not make this a hostile work environment. Good Lord, ma'am. Why don't you just rub steak sauce on my body and drag me from the back of a fishing boat? Does anyone know what Wally's talking about? Well, I'm no expert on psychopaths, but I'd say he's afraid of the annual marketing versus engineering softball game. It's that time of year when we sporty people in marketing give you engineers your annual lesson in humility. Are you actually proud of the fact that you spent your youth guzzling beer and playing sports just so you could excel at the picnicking arts? I don't think I'm telling tales out of school, and by school I mean our fine local community colleges, when I say abs positively That means yes. While you were learning to crush beer cans on your foreheads, we future engineers were developing our minds. Uh, I'm not following you. Me neither. It's something about beer. Forget it. I think it's safe to say that the market gurus will clean the field with you losers for the tenth year in a row. Not this year, my friend. The crapulets rule. Can we get a new name for our team? I hate being a crapulet. You got any better ideas? No. That's settled. Now, let's make some wiener-related decisions. Do we want chicken or beef, both very expensive and allowing no budget for beer, or a new low-cost alternative that I own stock in called Zoo No More? I like that last one. Good choice. Now, how do we want them cooked? I apologize for my tardiness, but there was a fire in one of the research labs. Would someone please extinguish me? What is it with you young interns? It's always me, me, me. How about being a team player just once in your life? Sit down, Ashok. We have important work here. May I roll around on the carpet first? Yes, but it counts as vacation time. I am only an intern. I have so few vacation days. I guess it doesn't hurt that much. Can we get this over with? That aroma of burning flesh is making me hungry. Me too. Me too. It's making me <laughs> oh, hungry. Yeah, boy, I'll say. <laughs> Hold on. Am I the only one who isn't crazy about hot dogs made from old zebra meat? Don't forget about that silky, shiny, mouth-watering zebra coat. Guess so. Vern Wegman. He was captain of the only engineering team that ever beat marketing at softball. How is that even possible? It was the year they used an electronic scoreboard. Vern rigged it. They won by the score of 162 to 159, despite the fact no engineer ever got on base. Hey, you're letting the cold in. <gasps> you're alive. I retired. I didn't die, you nitwit. Read the little sign. Vern Wegman left the company in 1982 and is now employed as his own bust several inches from this sign. Why would you agree to do this? Apparently you haven't looked at your pension plan too closely. I made the same mistake at your age. Now I'm getting paid two dollars an hour and I'm glad to have it. Tell us about the day you beat marketing. Press this button. Never mind, I got it. It started as just another softball game between marketing and engineering. In the later innings, as was their custom, the marketing team was ricocheting their home runs off the heads of the opposing team. In times like these, sometimes heroes are born. Vern Whiteman was just such a hero. I get goosebumps during this part. Vern rigged the electronic scoreboard so he could control it remotely. He was an unscrupulous, uncoordinated, cheating weasel. In a word, he was a hero. Didn't you feel guilty cheating? You know how you still have a shred of self-respect? Yes. You'll get over it. I don't think I will. You'd better. 
I know you're all afraid of being humiliated by the marketing department softball team, but remember, you have a secret weapon. What is it? You have me as your player coach. We'll start with some infield practice. Ball one! What's he doing? I think he's going for the walk. Way to go! <laughs> I think we need a new player coach. Preferably someone who isn't a total Wally. What exactly do you mean by that? We use your name as a pejorative now. You do? Yeah. You know, as in, he's a total Wally, or I've got to take a Wally, that sort of thing. Hmm. It's cashy. I think I know the perfect player coach for us. So what do you think, coach? I think I have my work cut out for me. Listen up. We'll start with the basics. Hitting a baseball is the most difficult thing in all of sports. But getting hit by a pitch is the easiest. In this drill, you'll learn how to stand directly on the plate. <gasps> Good. Next time, try running toward the pitcher in anger. It's much more convincing. This is slow pitch softball. I'm pretty sure you don't get on base if you get hit by a pitch. Now, yeah, let's hope the other team doesn't know that rule. Ooh! Ice. You've got to stay hydrated. And by you, I mean me. I've assessed your abilities and assigned positions. Wally, your second base. I don't know how to play second base. It's easy. Just wear white canvas clothing and lie on the ground for nine innings. I can do that. Ashok, there's some confusion over whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Throw me the ball with your right hand. Now the left hand. Men of the above. I'm putting you on first base. My catching talent isn't anything to email home about either. I'll well, just stand there with your arms slightly away from your side. We might just get lucky and wedge one in there. Very good. Alice, we're a little short-handed, so you're playing catcher and center fielder at the same time. It's always the woman who has to work twice as hard. Pointy-haired boss, you're on the hot corner. Ah! Dilbert, you'll be pitching. Okay, good pitching always beats good hitting. Although I realize it's meaningless unless the term good is defined in both cases. And even then, it's only a matter of likelihood, not a sure thing. In fact, I don't even know why I said it. Can crappy pitching beat good hitting, too? I don't think so. Oh. Ah, Dilbert, our star pitcher. Did I mention that your career depends on us winning the softball game against marketing? Why are you putting all the pressure on me? I'm just one player. You're the pitcher. Good pitching always, always beats good hitting. You said so yourself. But it's not accurate. It's just something people say. Well, they couldn't say it if it wasn't true. Yes, they could. You lie to us every day. Oh, that's not lying. That's managing. <laughs> studies have shown there's a big difference. What studies? You know, studies. Various ones. You're managing me right now, aren't you? See? Wally understands. Ooh. This is disgusting. Can't you at least pretend not to look? That's like holding in a sneeze. You could crack a rib. She must be new in engineering. That's impossible. There are no attractive women in engineering. What are you talking about? Look at me! I can no longer see your physical beauty, Alice. It's overwhelmed by, uh, your professional competence. Oh. I guess that's all right. Hi, I'm from marketing. I hope you don't mind me drinking the coffee in the engineering break room. You mind us no. looking at you? Help yourself. Let me help. <laughs> Walk's as good as a hit. I mind. That gets charged against your cost center. My name is Juliet. What's yours? My what? Your name? Oh, I, I'm, I'm Dilbert. And this is... I forget. And this is... It doesn't matter. I'm just fine. And you? I'm mortified. Well, that's an unusual name for an unusual woman. It's not my name, but thank you. Now I'm all confused. I guess I'll see you at the company picnic.
I guess you will. It was very nice to meet you, Dilbert. Forget her, Dilbert. It'll never work. What do you mean, Dilbert? She was flirting with me. You think it can't work because she's in marketing? That's only the half of it. She's going to see you play softball. You're right. Not only will she see how uncoordinated you are, but she will also see you in shorts. This isn't good. I'd love to chat, but I have to go down to the Wiener District to buy some meat for the picnic. There's a Wiener District? Too rich for my blood. Oh, too expensive. This one looks about right. Psst. Hey, buddy. Only suckers pay retail. I don't want to be a sucker. Best prices, best selection in all of Wienertown. How do I know they're good? Can I borrow your pen? If they weren't good, would I do this? <laughs> are you sure this is what athletes are wearing now? You said you didn't want your legs to show. I'm just trying to help. It's important because Juliet will be seeing me outside the office for the first time. Sounds like you have a zone of competence problem. A what? Women are only impressed by men who excel at whatever they're doing. It's an evolution thing. In your case, that means engineering. If she sees you outside of engineering, you'll look like a wounded gazelle who needs to be thinned from the herd. Man, I wish we were debugging source code instead. At least you look great, thanks to me. You're positive this is what everyone is wearing for workouts. The stores are full of them. This might actually be fun. I know I'm planning to enjoy it. Is it my imagination or are people staring at me? You're wearing new sneakers, right? Yes. Yeah, that's probably why. Yes, I get to break the news. Hey, guys. Ready for the big game? Wally has something to tell you. Wait, I must capture this moment. It is my duty, nay, my privilege, nay, just a guilty pleasure to inform you that you are wearing women's clothing. What? The outfit, the get-up. It's a woman's exercise outfit. <laughs> <laughs> we should call him Girlbert. Can I take one more? For safety. I thought you said everyone was wearing these clothes. I meant everyone who's a woman. I might have left that part out. Yes! Now what am I gonna do? I can't take the field looking like this. Calm down. I have a spare set of shorts in my picnic basket. You can wear those over your thong. I'll never be able to run in these. Now just tighten the belt and tie the legs tight. You'll be fine. Hi, Juliet. Remember me? We shared a coffee stirrer. I brought it with me in case you need it again. Um, thank you. That was, um, sweet. It was weird is what it was. She's not your type, Shakespeare. Just move along. There's no law that says engineers can't date women for marketing. It's more complicated than that, Dilbert. I'm a market guru. You're a crapulette. Our work groups would never understand. But we can get past that. Juliet, I have you playing 2B. 2B? That means second base. Stay away from her. You've been warned. I'll be playing 2B. If you make it that far, we can talk there. Second base? No engineer has ever gotten that far. Softball is outside my zone of competence. You have to. For us. For us. I'll make it. Juliet! I have to go. To be or not to be. That is the question. I didn't have time to buy buns, but I think you'll find this just as good. Hey, hey give me a hot dog. dog. <laughs> Bring on the organ meat, Pops. Settle down. We've got enough for everyone. I'll see you on second base. I'll count the minutes. That is it, you stinking crap, you lad. On guard. <gasps> Dilbert! That was...
would have looked so impressive. Nice try, though. Dilbert! Let that be a lesson to you, Crapulet. Never try to date a market guru. The key to this game is to demoralize them from the start. as I had hoped. Dilbert, your leadoff. According to my research, the leadoff batter should be the player most likely to get on base. Exactly. Hit the batter, he gets first base. I hit his pants, not him! Pants are part of the player. Oh, man! Yeah! Yay! I will be with you soon, my love. Give Dilbert the signal to steal second. Dilbert! Steal second! I meant the hand signal. Oh! You! Run! Second base! I hope they don't steal our signals. Soon we will be together. Uh, uh, What's wrong oh, with... Oh. Oh. Dilbert, this is your chance! I wonder if it was something they ate. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Probably the potato salad. <laughs> Juliet, you're okay. It must have been the hot dogs. I think they were bad. I'm so glad. You're the only person in marketing who didn't eat them. Oh, I wish that were true. We'll take her to the hospital with the others and pump her stomach. But when she gets reunited with the others, they'll keep us apart. I can't let that happen. I won't. There's nothing you can do about it, Romeo. We'll see about that. Hey! Oh, no! Look! I've got food poisoning, too! You have to take me to the hospital and pump my stomach. We'd like to share an ambulance. Well, I guess that would be okay. I can't believe you fell for that joke. I didn't eat the hot dogs. I was just kidding around with you. Oh, you even have a sense of humor. I love you more than ever. Oh! Wow. You really ate a poison hot dog just to be with me. That is so sweet. Incredibly stupid, but sweet. Oh, really stupid. The stupidity far outweighs the sweetness. Oh! But the craziest part about this is that it was still the best date I ever had. Oh! Oh! That only took 15 minutes. They're very good. The whole thing was only $19.95. You didn't take any of the extras, did you? That's how they get you. I was very thirsty. Uh-oh. You know, they don't have water fountains in that place. They sold me a glass of ginger ale for $3,000, but it was worth it. I really miss Juliet. I think she really liked me. 
Like is a strong word. It's possible. You like me. You fill a special place in my life. In your heart? On the couch. Your head blocks the light from the lamp so it doesn't get in my eyes. What are you doing? I'm posting false information on the web. Why? It's fun. Someone picks up a strand of false information, spreads it around, and before you know it, a panic is created. Then you just sit back and watch the chaos. And figure out a way to exploit it, no doubt. You say that as if it's a bad thing. I don't think that is what the World Wide Web was created for. Ah, that's where you're wrong. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to spread rumors before? Mailings, cold calling, sometimes I had to go door to door. It was a real pain. Thanks to the new technology, my productivity has increased. Just in the last couple of years, I've been able to create fear about cell phones, power lines, and organ theft rings. You must be very proud. It's fulfilling. Well, the last thing I want to do right now is sit in front of a computer screen. My neck is all stiff and I'm blurry-eyed from sitting all day in my cubicle staring at one. Hmm. You don't say. What are you doing now? Do you ever feel anxious, tired, or depressed in your cubicle? I've never felt any other way. Cha-ching! Symptoms include blurred vision, muscle joint pain, anxiety, fatigue, depression. The conclusion is inescapable. Symptoms of what? What conclusion? An epidemic of chronic cubicle syndrome. Did you say chronic cubicle syndrome? Hearing loss. You just made that up. Correction. I have discovered a heretofore undiagnosed condition. There is no such thing as chronic cubicle syndrome. Initially, victims exhibit denial. But you have no proof. Oh, I have something much better than proof. Anecdotal evidence. Who do you think would be dumb enough to believe anecdotal evidence? Oh, I've narrowed my target market to people. I have news for you. We people are smarter than we look. Well, how hard would that be, really? Personally, I require scientific evidence before I believe anything. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you only think you do. But in fact, you rely on media reports that scientific evidence exists. You don't actually see the evidence yourself. I don't have time to read all the scientific studies myself. Oh, so you're not gullible. You're just busy. That's right. So when I tell people they have chronic cubicle syndrome, they won't be gullible. They'll be busy, just like you. You're being ridiculous. Other symptoms include poor perception. I do not have poor perception. Irritability. Stop that. Stop it right now. Bouts of irrational shouting. Are you trying to make me crazy? Paranoia. Now what? Now my ghostwriter will put the finishing touches on the book. You've been writing a book while we've been talking? I know how that sounds, and you'd be right. Rat Bert. How may I be of service to you, higher life forms? You can't publish a book about an unproven medical condition. Apparently, you haven't been to the bookstore lately. Proofread, publish, distribute. Roger. We're very fortunate to live in the time of Dogbert. This isn't happening. Add delusions to the symptoms list. You got it! We're talking with the best-selling author of Chronic Cubicle Syndrome. If you think you've got it, you've got it. Dogbert. Dogbert, welcome. Could you repeat the name of the book? Uh, sure. Chronic Cubicle Syndrome. If you think you've got it, you've got it. How about you, honey? This is an equal opportunity condition. Okay. Chronic Cubicle Syndrome. If you think you've got it, you've got it. Now, Mr. Dogbert, tell us, what exactly is chronic cubicle syndrome? Oh, I can't divulge that information. You'll have to buy the book. What's it called again? Nice try. I can tell you that millions of people suffer from chronic cubicle syndrome. It's a worldwide epidemic. How would one know if one had chronic cubicle syndrome? <sighs> if you think you've got it, you've got it. Is there any scientific evidence to support your claim? The best kind. It's called anecdotal. Oh. Oh. Yeah. This is preposterous. I'm a scientist, and I tell you all that anecdotal evidence is worthless. Talk to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly made him look like a boob. We get all kinds. I think we all know from past experience that the scientific and medical community will try to suppress this information, hiding behind red tape and double-blind studies until it's too late. How many people have to die, sir? Yeah.
It says in your bio that you're a doctor, but our producer checked with the medical boards and we find no record of you. How do you explain that? Talk to the hand. <laughs> there you have it. Our next market opportunity. Chronic cubicle syndrome. I hate to break it to you, but there's no such thing as chronic cubicle syndrome. I've heard of it! You've heard of it because it was just on TV. So? I think I have chronic cubicle syndrome. Does it make your butt wider? I'm losing muscle tone. I wondered what was causing that. Sometimes I feel like I am surrounded by nincompoops. I believe that is a symptom of CCS. Wally, what's it say? If this is a ventriloquism act, it's better with a dummy. I mean the tape measure. Calm down. There is no such thing as chronic cubicle syndrome. Dilbert, I value your input. Now, who wants to develop a product to combat chronic cubicle syndrome? First of all, we're not a pharmaceutical company. Second, we're engineers, not biochemists. Dilbert, I value your input. Now, who wants to help Dilbert develop a product to combat chronic cubicle syndrome? Hands? You know, the facts are completely against us here. All right, hang on here. You know, in our mad rush to cash in on this horrible condition before the competition and before the class action suits get filed, are we perhaps getting ahead of ourselves? What is our moral responsibility? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Perhaps we need further research. Yes. Perhaps further study. Yes. Well, who's got time for that, you prig? No. We need to create some favorable facts first. Now, favorable facts? Yes, favorable facts. The other kind are worthless. Now, let's see, let's see. We could flip a coin. Too risky. We could test humans. That's always fun. What about monkeys? Or rabbits? Or puppies? We've had some success hurting them in the past, haven't we? Dilbert could do some tests on mice. Mice are full of favorable facts. Very good. Mice it is. This is ridiculous, but at least that's vaguely scientific. I'll need a budget to get some mice. Say what? We're not paying for mice. Good God, man. The streets are full of them. It looks so real. Wally, did you bring the cheese? Yes, it's delicious. And now the mouse. Technically, I'm a rat, not a mouse. I know, but you're all we could afford on our budget. That's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. No signs of chronic cubicle syndrome yet. He looks listless and bored. That doesn't mean anything. My co-workers are idiots, idiots, I say! Only I and I alone know all the answers! You can't tell me that's not chronic cubicle syndrome. We haven't established causation yet. I'm wasting my life in here! There's no career path! I want stock options! I think my boss hates me because of the way he looks at me in the meetings. Why do the objectives keep changing? I am so customer-focused, you are not customer-focused. Let's just say, further study is needed. We're in! Start pouring the champagne! Happy days are here again! Wait, wait. With just one rat, we don't think any conclusions can be drawn. Oh, we'll draw conclusions, all right. You can be sure of that. Take this to the boys in the statistical distortion department. They'll fix the data for you. Tell them Ike sent you. Your name's not Ike. I didn't say it was. I need you to distort some statistics from rat tests, although I don't agree with doing it. I've just lost my will to fight it anymore. I, I don't need the life story. Let's see. One rat, one test. I can make these numbers prove that immortality is possible or that drinking hard liquor improves your love life. Any of those ring your bell? No. My boss wants this test to prove the existence of something called chronic cubicle syndrome. Chronic cubicle syndrome? Everyone knows it exists. Haven't you read the book? Have you? You don't have to actually read it if you buy it. It's an implied covenant. The book offers absolutely no proof. Well, that's not my only source. I'm a serious-minded person. I also heard about it on TV. That's only because of the book. All right, let's see. We've got the TV, the anecdotal evidence, the book, and now your study. Congratulations. Nice work.
Well, I hope you're happy. Chronic cubicle syndrome is now an official condition. It's sweeping the nation. Chronic cubicle syndrome is real. It's all in the book. Buy a copy for a friend. The end. What are you doing? Just recording the audio version of my book. That was it? It's abridged. Abridged? It's three sentences. All right, very abridged. I've been very busy penning the follow-up. The Dogbert Chronic Cubicle Syndrome Cure Diet. And what might that be? I'll give you a hint. It involves food. What's going on here? I'm shooting my infomercial. Infomercial for what? Dogbert's Secret Juice Formula. Many experts believe that the symptoms of chronic cubicle syndrome can be significantly reduced by drinking 14 to 28 glasses of my special secret juice formula each day. <laughs> that smells like alcohol. Well, I'm not at liberty to reveal the ingredients. It's an info no-no. But of course, if people get drunk, they're not going to feel the effects of chronic cubicle syndrome, whatever it is. That's not bad. Would you mind doing a testimonial? Yes, I would mind. Did you get that? And since I started drinking Dogbert's secret juice formula to combat the effects of chronic cubicle syndrome, I'm a changed man. Hey, what the... How did he do that? It's all computer-generated. You're very telegenic. And, by the way, it works. Get Dogbert's secret juice formula today. Since when do you exercise? It's not exercise. It's dorker size. I've never felt more alive. I've never heard of Dorker size. It's all in the Dogbert Chronic Cubicle Syndrome 30 Days to a Smaller Butted You workout video. Apparently, if you eat less and exercise two hours a day, you can lose the weight caused by Chronic Cubicle Syndrome. If you exercise two hours a day and eat less, you'll lose weight without the video. No, this gets the cellulite too. It's completely different. Read the book. And sometimes, when I stay up late, I am tired the next day. That could be serious. What else? When I don't eat, I feel an emptiness in my stomach. That's because your spine is out of alignment. It's chronic cubicle syndrome. I was afraid of that. You'll need one treatment a week until my boat is paid for. I hope it is not a big boat. Lie on your stomach. Now, I'm going to straighten your spine until you cry. May I request anesthetics? I don't believe in those. Besides, you'll pass out from the pain in a few minutes anyway. Delbert! Delbert! Oh, there you are! Now, you look for me. No, never mind that. Why were you playing games when you're supposed to be coming up with a Bafo product to combat chronic cubicle syndrome? I'll tell you why. Chronic cubicle syndrome doesn't exist. That's the holdup. How am I supposed to engineer a product for an imaginary condition? Poor Dilbert. You know, Dilbert, I've been around a long time. Too long to count. One, two, ah, oh, whatever. See, I told you. I've seen many people, good people, felled by this dreaded disease. It's up to you, my boy. Gosh, I don't know. I'm all confused. That's the spirit. Don't do it for me. Do it for yourself. And if you don't do it for yourself, at least do it, because you'll be fired if you don't. I call them shock pants. They deliver a severe electric shock to the wearer any time his posture gets bad. And that will cure chronic cubicle syndrome? Well, if chronic cubicle syndrome existed, it would probably have something to do with your posture. We need to test this on someone. What did I miss? Can I help with anything? And this will help me with my posture? Oh. That straightened him out. Let's take this puppy to marketing and get it in stores. We couldn't wait for a shook to get bad posture, so I asked Dilbert to make this remote control to speed up the demonstration. I love it! It's a device for shocking interns. We can sell a billion of these. Actually, it's a cure for chronic cubicle syndrome, which doesn't exist, but we've managed to get past that. We don't want to sell cures for diseases. That's too much of a downer. We'll be painted with the same brush as that Jonas Salt guy. Okay by me. Let's forget the whole thing. You're not thinking like marketing people. Let's use our imaginations. Our what? 
You mean let's use our imaginations. Isn't that what I just said? Hmm. I guess it is. You know, those yellow sticky notes were invented by accident. So was the space shuttle. Exactly. How can we turn this huge mistake by an engineer into a victory by marketing? I've got it. We'll market them as a line of casual wear for business. It worked with dockers. It can work for shockers. I'd like to go on the record. Uh, 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 don't make your mistake any worse. We're just lucky these marketing people were here to pull our fat out of the fire. May I see that for a moment? In the news, even as claims of chronic cubicle syndrome continue to rise, as every drone with the sniffles is convinced he has it, the sales of shock pants are soaring, thanks to new corporate dress codes that make them mandatory. You might say workers are dressed for shock cess. <laughs> I get it, no more making up words. The success of shock pants comes despite widespread reports of seared flesh and spontaneous human combustion. If you ask me, it's all rather shocking. <laughs> and now for an editorial from our station general manager. Besieged by pseudoscience once again, we now find ourselves in the grips of yet another bogus claim designed to strike fear in hard-working people. Even as it fleeces their meager savings accounts. Chronic cubicle... <laughs> this is crazy. People are tired, weary, bored, and depressed after a hard day's work. Day in, day out. Year after year, an endless dead-end job after endless dead-end job with no future and no hope. That's natural. It's completely appropriate to feel that way. How else should you feel? If you felt good after that soul-crunching experience, that would be sick. Chronic cubicle syndrome is just life. You should have thought of that before your rip-off cure started killing so many people. It was marketing's idea to turn up the voltage on the new models. I argued against it. So it's not your fault. No one could think it was. It's Dilbert's fault. I tried to stop it. I thank the man upstairs that we live in a country where the corporations can reap the profits from a death machine and, through the use of loopholes and disclaimers, not be liable when the lawsuits start flooding in. Well, then who is liable? Well, you are. <laughs> Me? Well, you invented the blasted thing. Well, then why haven't I earned any royalties? Because you don't own the patent. Well, then how can I be liable? Well, you see, Dilbert... Technically, in this instance, you're an independent contractor. I am? Read the fine print. In the event that profits are realized by said invention, the independent contractor is defined as the sucker. In the event that anything goes wrong with said invention, the independent contractor is defined as the scapegoat. Is there anything you'd like to say before we hang you out to dry? Can I make a phone call? Yes. I'm so nervous to meet you in person, Mr. Dogbert. I'm your biggest fan. May I have some eye contact? I waited two hours. Please, just one eye. The only way to escape from a bad idea is with an even worse idea. You're welcome. Using the same studies and data, we could announce that chronic cubicle syndrome never really existed. It was a statistical aberration. Then, if I could come up with an even better market for shock pants, would you let me off the hook? Would they still kill people? Because I gotta tell you, I never laughed so hard. We can turn the voltage down, and then we can market them to a different group. It's all about marketing. That well, is so correct. Cool. Is it everything? <laughs> this is beautiful. You have one at home just like it. <laughs> who will tell me who was the first president of the United States? Your mother? I'm happy to report that sales of the shock pants are once again zooming. I guess we all know who gets the credit. Don't tell me. It's the guys in marketing. No, but good guess. Is it you? As much as I deserve it, no. The credit goes to my boss's boss's boss, who none of us have ever met and never will. Credit travels up, blame travels down. It's like drinking beer from a straw, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. Me neither. It's something I once heard. <laughs>
Although I have been completely hosed on the profits of my invention, at least we can finally agree that chronic cubicle syndrome doesn't exist and never did. Are you nuts? Just look at the size of my butt. Oh. The dog bird exercise program really works. And look at this muscle tone since I started drinking that juice. Mm. I'm not loud anymore! It'll take 24 sessions, minimum. Can you give me all 24 today? I'm in a hurry. Well, I do want to put an addition on my house. He's stronger than he looked. Hi, how are you? What are you staring at? You may have heard that our company has been accused of unethical business practices. Is it because of the falsified product safety tests? Is it because of the false stories planted in the media about our competitors? Is it because of our crime family connections? What? Are you saying those things are unethical too? Good God, this thing is just snowballing. Now, where was I? Seven years ago. During the summer. Ah, the heck with it. Senior management has decided to confront this head-on and deal with the ethics problem directly. They're surrendering to the authorities? One might think that, but one would be wrong. No. They're sending all employees to mandatory ethics training classes. Including managers such as yourself, correct? No, uh, sure, that wouldn't be very managerial, would it? Correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't every ethics violation in this company been perpetrated by managers? Yes, but the point is managers are far too important to waste their valuable time taking worthless classes. That's what subordinates are for. That and dating. Please don't date me! I promise I'll work harder! Your new masseuse is here. She wants to know how you'll be paying. Paying? Did you explain to her that she gets to touch my naked back? For some reason, that wasn't enough. Who needs her? Tell her to put an egg in her shoe and beat it if you don't mind. Not at all. And the following mumbling is not necessarily about you. Ignorant, pompous horse's ass. Must be problems at home. Are we done here? I think we're done. Hmm. I wonder what made them so hurried all of a sudden. Uh, Shook, meet me in my office and bring fresh towels. Oh, oh my. This is so not in my job description. I don't think I can possibly... Stop whining and start slathering. Okay, let's go around the room and each of you can explain what you hope to get out of this class. We'll start with you. I'm hot for you, Wally. Is that your real name? It's Egyptian. Okay, so what do you want to get from this class? I'm hot for you, Wally. I already got it. Thanks. My personal goal for ethics training is to learn the cultural underpinnings of morality with special emphasis on pragmatism versus divine will. How about if I teach you not to steal? That would be good, too. Loud Howard, if a co-worker confided something very personal to you, could you keep it quiet? Yes! This class is pointless. We're not the ones with the ethics problems. Speak for yourself. We're engineers. We have integrity, and that's not for sale. But it is for rent. Excuse me, I'm hot for you, Wally. Consider yourself excused. There sure is a lot of weather today, all up there in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot like that yesterday, too. Oh, he's Who right. Up <laughs> that weather every day there. <laughs> Did anyone watch a sports event this weekend? Oh, I'll say. Man. Oh, sports. <laughs> Wouldn't miss sports. Not a Sunday without it. Who was playing? That's not important. It only matters that the participants supported each other as a team. You men aren't at all what I expected. I feel like the glass ceiling for women executives like me is finally broken. I mean, here I am, networking with other executives on the golf course, privy to all your private conversations. 
Oh, we're all about nurturing. <laughs> and diversity. There goes your ball. It keeps doing that. Oh. Watch out for the turtles. They're poisonous. Did we decide whose company wins the government bid this time? My company got the flying submarine deal. I believe your company wins the next bid, Edmund. Ow! No, no. We won the bid for the invisible troop carriers. Well, then, who's going to bid for the National Internet Voting Network contract? For the good of the oligarchy, we will. He's good, a good man. man. Is it the high bid or the low bid that wins? Ah, that part makes my head spin. What were you talking about? What did I miss? Does anyone else think taxes are too darn high? Whoa, yes. and uh, the pigs, bring them down. you don't you know it. I'm pleased to announce that we have won the bid to build the government's next super project, the Internet Voting Network. I thought the bids were being submitted tomorrow. Yes, but none of our conference rooms are available tomorrow, so I'm telling you the results today. What's the Internet Voting Network? It's a concept for letting people vote over the Internet in national elections. Delbert, you seem to know the most about the Internet Voting Network, so you're the project leader. What? That's all I know. And now that I said it, everyone in this room knows as much as I do. I tuned you out right after the part where you started talking. What's the Internet Voting Network? This might sound crazy, but after careful consideration, I'm actually happy for a change to be assigned a project against my will. The Internet Voting Network will double voter participation. I'm going to make democracy work. It's an awesome responsibility. Let me know when you get it working. I almost wonder what it would be like to vote. You mean you've never voted? It's too much of a hassle. But if I didn't have to drive... Look! You're encouraging morons to vote. That can't possibly be good. You can't use Wally as a typical example of humanity. I'm special. Take Loud Howard. He's more typical of the average voter. Yes! I always vote for the tallest guy! The tall ones are better! Dilbert, do you realize that you could build a back door into the system and manipulate the voting results for your own evil purposes without ever being detected? Wow, you could make a fortune from special interest groups. Did you learn nothing in ethics class? I tried, but you covered your test with your hand. One could make a fortune from special interest groups, but it would be unethical. And more importantly, it would destroy the integrity of our democratic system. I would never sell out my country for money. Besides, I have all the money I need. Nine hundred thousand, a million. Next, it's a public school class. <laughs> As you can see, class, Congress is in session. And furthermore, television violence is bad. And these rap lyrics. Where's the gift shop? They got a bathroom in here. Can I use my cell phone? I just got paid. Shut up. You kids are the leaders of tomorrow, right? Yeah. Well, here's a little something to remind you who your friends are. <gasps> oh. <sighs> this is private enemy number one. He goes by the name Dilbert. He's in charge of building the Internet Voting Network. We have learned he is immune to monetary inducements. <gasps> His Internet Voting Network is a threat to all our special interests. We must find a way to influence him without money. Without money? What else is there? Use your creativity. There must be some other way to get him in our pocket. I have an idea. No, wait. You said no money. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Give me some more of that mean green. You just say the word and I'll assassinate anyone you want. You clearly have no scruples. You golden-tongued sweet talker, you're making me blush! But your employee, Dilbert, seems immune to our inducements. He must have a weakness. Everyone does. He does have one weakness, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. Ah, yes. 
The one thing. Thank you. I hope he was thinking free t-shirt too. Stairs. Something smoking, but it's not a fire. <laughs> you have a visitor upstairs in the smoking lounge. We don't have a smoking lounge. We do now. Hey, where did all this new furniture come from? And that TV? We accepted them as gifts on your behalf. You shouldn't have accepted these gifts. They're from lobbyists trying to corrupt me. How are they doing? Not very well. Amateurs. Hi, handsome. My name's Ashley. This is a smoke-free house. Maybe you'd like to take me someplace that isn't. I'd better not. I just had my car cleaned. I've been authorized to do whatever it takes to make you a friend of tobacco. Whatever it takes? Anything. Well, okay. I'd like you to quit smoking. What? It's for your own good. I can't do that. I'm addicted. You eat. It's an illness. You can't just quit like that. You said anything. You don't understand. I need to do this right away or I'll get fired. I mean, because I'm all fired up. When was the last time you brushed your teeth? Look at me. I'm perfect except for one little bad habit. Get over it. Do you think you'd ever sacrifice your ethics and rig the election just to date a woman like that? I would never sell out our founding fathers. Tell the truth. I admit that, in theory, there is some level of hormonal excitement that could, in some conceivable circumstance, in the hypothetical, exceed the threshold of my ethical self-control. What if the woman actually liked you? Let's hope that never happens. I almost found a woman who likes me. How did you know? Well, technically, she was a tobacco lobbyist who was leading me on so she could get illegal access to my internet voting network. Close enough. That's my thinking. Did you use the old familiarity technique? I didn't have a chance. What's the old familiarity technique? It involves spending so much time with a woman that she gets used to your faults. It's like falling in love, but without the expense. If I could have made this tobacco lobbyist spend enough time with me... While she was using you... Then maybe, just maybe, the inertia would carry her beyond the point of being repulsed by my personality. Then, one day, if she breaks up with a socially functional boyfriend, she might be too emotionally crippled to date again. And there, Dilbert will be. Why don't you just date a woman who respects you in the first place? You can do that? I see your point. Dilbert, we need to talk about extending the deadline of your internet voting project. If I extend it, we'll miss the election. And I'll get a new summer home. Everyone wins! You're ordering me to sabotage my own project? It wouldn't be the first time, but it might be the first time I knew I was doing it. If I do that, the special interests win. The integrity of our democratic process will be violated. Our founding fathers would spin in their graves. Spinning, you say? We'll strap magnets to them and use them to generate electricity if it makes you feel any better. It's clean power. You can't make me do this. It's wrong. There is nothing, nothing that will change my mind. How unethical would it be, really, to help a tobacco lobbyist rig a national election just so she'll like me? Are we talking the ethics of pragmatism or divine will? Let's pretend it's the same thing. We need some expert help. How did you get Ben Franklin's body? You'd be surprised what people throw out. It's a little too late for him to help us. Maybe not. I saw this in an infomercial. I've been dying to try it. It says it removes carpet stains too, but I have my doubts. <coughs> Come on. 
Can anyone give me an update on my inventions? Well, electricity is doing fine. <laughs> that was a good one. How about the post office? Did it become the model of efficiency I envisioned? Well, to be honest, a stamp costs more than you paid for your first horse. You can stand in line for an hour, then find out you're in the wrong line. The expression going postal refers to someone losing their mind, going crazy, and opening fire on large groups of innocent people. Nice work. I killed Ben Franklin. Keep your shirt on. I have no intention of taking it off. You make it hard for people to help you. Sorry. Let's increase the dosage. Thank you again. Uh, but frankly... Uh, get it? Frankly? Franklin? Frankly? <laughs> Gee, that killed it, the Continental Congress. Uh, was there some reason you keep bringing me back? I have an ethical question about our democratic system. Ah, uh, yes. By now, I suppose you figured out it was all a big joke. What? He doesn't know. Never mind. My dilemma is this. We have this new thing called the Internet. Internet! Yes, yes, a global telecommunications network built on the TCP IP standards are coming. You did not. Yes, I did. How could you? I'm a founding father, you little punk! You want to start with me? All right, all right. Anyway, I have a chance to make a woman like me if I use the Internet to rig the next election. Would that be wrong? Hmm. Sounds okay to me. Really? Sure. The average voter can't find his bunghole with both hands. You don't want to leave it up to them, do you? I thought maybe I did. Well, think again. If we're done here, I'm really hungry. I should have got the 12 back. One Internet voting network completely programmed, ready, and free of outside interference. So you decided to stick to your ethical guns, knowing that it would cost you the love of a beautiful woman. Does it give you newfound respect for me? <laughs> oh, no. I'm having an election night party! I hope you can make it! Chug and vote. Come enjoy hard liquor before voting from Mikasa. Thanks to your internet voting network, no one will ever have to vote thirsty again! Loud Howard, I don't think it's a good idea to mix alcohol with voting. Since when? I mean, how are you going to understand an issue like, say, monetary policy if you're drunk? I don't understand it now. Do you? No. Bring an appetizer! more of these and I'm in the Green Party. Now tell me, am I for or against nuclear peripheration? I have to say, this isn't the proudest moment of my career. <laughs> Is that the knob for Republican or Democrat? Hurry up, Foster. The polls close in 30 seconds. Oh, fiddlesticks. I just voted for someone named McGee. Oh, it's been so long since I attended a meeting of the secret ruling class. Do you still handle elections the same way? The old ways are still the best. Well, the votes have been counted. The people have spoken. Our new president is... Harry S. McGee! <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, who do we make president? She said she might call. Do you think underneath her smoke-stained exterior beat a heart of gold? Uh, if by heart of gold you mean lungs of charcoal, then yes. I admit I was tempted to destroy the democratic process to gain the love of a woman. Love? 
Not real love, but at least the kind that gives you false hope for a few days. I like false hope. Maybe she lost your number. Maybe she did. No one leaves the Tobacco Institute. <laughs> Since I quit smoking, I don't feel right about working here anymore. You quit smoking? You can't. <coughs> Good Lord, Martin, you coughed out a lung. Now can you push that back in? <laughs> I met a man who convinced me to follow another path. I'm gonna call him tonight. I said no one leaves the Tobacco Institute. Hey, wait, you can't do this. Let me go. Excuse me. Hello? Hola? Where's the ladies' room? Does anyone have any sunscreen? Y en otras noticias, el presidente americano Harry S. McGee, que se parece mucho a Benjamin Franklin, cayó desde una altura de 30.000 pies sobre un camión recolector de basura después de abrir una de las ventanas del avión presidencial Air Force One. Los médicos dijeron que no sufrió heridas.